boom. And I think, hopefully, we are now live. And when I see chat tell me that we're live, yes, we have a video, cool. Right, hello, uh, chat, to anyone watching. Tonight, we're doing some democracy, and uh, I am joined for the moment by Tank and Jangles. Um, hope you guys, uh, well, I know you guys are doing good, but again, just tell chat so they don't think I'm an asshole. Amen. Oh, yeah, chat, we're okay. Yeah, I hello, know. chat. Yay. He's, he's holding us against our will, it's the freedom minds. Quiet. He's, he's, got, he's, got the, he's got the detonators for the colors, please. <laughs> yeah, I've had a chip in your brain, like, what, Anakin on Tatooine. Yeah. Right. Um, wait, wait, what? Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it, it's it's a throwaway line um, that Anakin can't run away in Phantom Menace because they have a chip in his brain and they blow him up. Holy yeah. shit! Wait, it's, I it's did a thing. not know this. No, seriously, yeah. Rewatch rewatch Phantom Menace. It's a it's a line in the movie that he cannot it, the slaves cannot get away because they have like chips in their brains that will blow them up. Um, I don't know if it's like an automatic oh. type deal or if it's like a battle royale kind of thing where it has to be switched on. I have no idea, but. That's, that's the thing. talking like ships, like no. you know, like they track you down and blow you up. Well, <laughs> I, it, yeah, I mean, it, it could be that that's the case, but the explanation that I've seen is that, yeah, they're literally kind of like microchipped when they're sold as slaves. Holy fuck, way to drop the ball on that one, Republic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so in terms of missions, because for now there's only three of us, we will be joined by a fourth um, at some point soon. I'm thinking... We do. We turn it down to level six instead of level seven. Um, do you want to go bots or do you want to go bugs? I don't really care. We can kind of mix it up tonight. Um, well, we have to kill four hundred bots. We. Oh, that's true. We yeah, do have a personal order. Kill, kill a bunch of bots. So, in that case, any preference in terms of planet? Um, not men can. Not men can. Not okay. men oh, can. Yeah, there's fire storms. Oh, fire tornadoes. Well, okay, we, we might do one of those later, but we won't open with that. Uh, oh, hey, ice planet. That's always a good ice. Idea. Ice planets are pretty. Yeah, yeah because all ice planets really do is uh, like slow down your like fire rate. I think. Oh, they they just help your um your laser weapons. They don't overheat as fast. Oh, yeah. okay, that's good. That's nice of the ice planet. Um. Okay, what's the name of the mission type that's the new one? Because I kind of want to do one of those, or do a liberation thing that includes one of those. Uh, I don't think they have them anymore, because we're no longer defending. Okay. We're, we're now attacking. Right, okay, fair enough. Um, well, we got Blitz, Search and Destroy, Geological Survey, and Emergency Evac. Do we want to go for those three? Yeah, that sounds good. All I right. think we should yeah. go for seven, personally. Um, well, I mean, there's, I find a, seven, I, there's only three of us, actually, is yeah, all I'm thinking. I was good. Yeah, I was actually thinking that because I've actually find sevens easier than level sixes. Okay. Shockingly enough, um, yeah, me and my friends were experimenting with this yesterday with the Terminids, and we were like, extreme was weird in terms of like, huh, like they're spawning a lot of crap on extreme. I, I think something's wonky there. I think it's also because it's, um, there's less uh, small we things and more big things. Completion. Okay. Interesting. Um, well, so I'm open to doing a level 7, but I think we probably don't want to do eradicate automaton forces because that's just going to be pain. Yeah. Um, I think that's the only one that they got. So yeah, we can just skip it and then uh, we can do the two big ones and go after bugs. Yeah, that works. Okay, so sabotage their air capabilities in the region. I don't think I've ever done that. Sabotage air base. And prepare yeah. and launch the ICBM. Yeah. All right, oh, let's, do it. let's go for that. Um, also, hey chat, um, various names in chat that I recognize and some that I do not, welcome. Um, and I hope you do enjoy the stream. Um, vegan superhero, if we can unlock, I haven't unlocked Helldive yet. I've unlocked level eight, I haven't unlocked, unlocked level nine. Um, I've never actually tried a level eight, I don't think. And uh, in a full group of four, I'm pretty comfortable on a level seven. Um, this is, however, a group of three, so we'll have to see. The thing is, I can trust both Tank and Jangles and more than I can trust myself in that we're not going to just be dum-dums and get stuck. Um, I think here, and then we could clear. Clear, go there, go there, secondary. Yeah. That works? Yeah, and the water will stop them from coming out right here. Okay, cool. Do you know if the, the bots can, uh, like, do a bot drop on, um, on water or not? They can't. Okay. As far that's, as I know. That's good, at least. That is nice right. of them. I'm gonna bring the spear for the first bit. 
have fun trying to get that thing to work. I, I've had pretty success with it. Um, oh, if you're actually gonna, actually, if you're gonna bring that, then I'm gonna bring the Quasar. Sounds good to me. Then I got room for one more barrage. So. Um, um, yeah, Jacob Avery, this, uh, this might be a wild loadout, but honestly, I just really like using turrets. Um, I play this game essentially how I want to play it. I have no idea what the meta is. Uh, to be honest, there's not really a meta. Yeah. Oh, chat, prepare for shenanigans with his turrets. Yeah, especially if we... Well, I guess we can't, but I was going to say if we can do the, um, the, the new defense mission, which doesn't exist anymore. I, I hope they bring that back, because that was a lot of fun, although it did need a little bit more polish. Oh god, yeah, the... Uh, I think it worked better with the bugs, in all honesty, because the bugs are melee-oriented. I think it I think it would, yeah. yes. Um, especially when you start having charges um, jumping on the, uh, on the gates. Doors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, or, again, like I think I suggested the other day, have a Baneling-type bug. Um, just... No! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is this uh-oh? How uh-oh is this? Uh, um, I'm on a turret. You're on a turret? <laughs> uh, okay, okay bot, drop. bot drop. Too. Okay, okay, okay. Well, random, it's, it's looking at you, random. What is? No, it's not. It's not looking at me. Calling down a sentry. It, uh, it's trying this to. Is interesting. Okay, well, stay up there, tank. Wait, can we destroy it without destroying tank? No. Shit. Okay, well, then you're going to have to come down. Yeah. Well, you got a jetpack guy trying to get you now. Ah! What the fuck was that shooting? Oh, there we go. Okay. Right, are we good? Well, no, because we got to Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay, okay. Ow. Okay, that was a... Uh, <laughs> that was a fun one. Um, Kaino says, apparently we can still do the defense missions, we just have to go to a planet that we're defending. Um, I don't... Uh, are uh, we currently defending any? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I, I'll be honest, I don't really know how, like, kind of the metagame world map aspect of this game works. I just kind of play missions as they pop up. All I know is Joel's an asshole. Uh, Joel is an asshole. Allegedly. Right, where are we going? Uh... No, he's, sweet. he's Swedish. He is an asshole. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wait, do you think we're talking about The Last of Us, Joel? No, no, no. I figured you're talking about the um, the, the 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 game master for this game, which oh, okay. may or may not be multiple people. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, that's a mine. Nope, bad. Yes, those are mine. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we got a stratagem, but um, jammer. Jammer. Yes, words aren't working. Okay, do I we can't speak English. Do we know where it is? Yeah, just look for the big old red pulsing bass. Oh, hello. Uh oh. Pain? Oh my god, how did you both die? <laughs> they're stupid, they're jetpacks when they yeah. blow up, right? Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay, we got incoming. Um, oh, that's just a few berserkers. Let's see if I can kite them over their own mines. I don't actually know if oh, that is no. a thing. Oh no, are we are we doing this glitch again? God damn it. Oh yeah, the um... Calling glitch. Yeah, hold on. Try, uh, try calling me in tank. Reinforcing. Oh, it could be because I threw the the thing in range of the jammer. Um. Also, yeah. Uh, chat says not trying to be no, elitist, but the missile turret is nearly worse than the machine gun turret. <laughs> um. You may be right, but I like it. Um. I'll absolutely try a different turret depending on the mission, but I don't know. I like the missile uh. turret. Yeah, it's it's the call in glitch, I think. So we, that's happening right now. What what's what's actually happening? We can't call you in, period, or Yeah, the game like it's weird. It like it thinks I'm still alive in a weird way. So oh, that's like, wonderful. That, so do we yeah, need to die for you to get back in or no, Yeah, but well, we're... technically, but I'll just rejoin. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Well, then we probably want to wait for him. Do you want to go for one of the Okay, shit. That's not an option. Okay, right. Uh, that's a lot of them. And that's a bot drop, okay. Oh, good lord. Yeah, you distract right. them. You distract them. Alright, alright. Show a bit of leg, show a bit of leg. 
Border cannon, help me! Don't worry, I took care of the bot. Oh, okay. Yeah, the uh, the jetpack exploded and it killed me. Oh well. Okay. Whoops. I have an interesting screen right now. Oh, what do you? What have you got? Um, it's just sky. I think. Are you Are you back on your um, ship or are you loading in? I'm loading in. I think. It says you've returned uh, to civilian life. Yeah. Well, uh, also, you're not <laughs> you're not able to come in. <laughs> oh God, I'm 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 just gonna restart the entire game. Okay. Uh, Let's see if Tank I is able to reinforce me because if he isn't, I, I just tried twice. Oh, good Lord. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fun, well, fun with the hell divers two glitches. Thank you, Joel. Um, I guess I have to quit because if I quit, it'll boot you out of the game, right? Uh, no, it makes me host. Oh, okay, so if I quit and try and join you, we can see what happens, because I can't be reinforced. Um, well, this is annoying, but oh well. We can try again. Okay. Uh, Jangles, it says, tells me you're in a private game. Tank, it tells me that you're not in a game. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, that's right, I forgot. I, I... Greetings, Helldiver. The Galactic War Okay, there. Is. Uh... No, I can't join. Oh wait, you can't. Joining? You can't join. I can't join. Try. You're gonna have to try inviting me. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right. Orbit synchronized. Jangles is back on my ship. Right. Okay. So I should be able to Allied destroyer coordinates join you. Hopefully, if not, then we'll just restart the mission. If you join my ship. Locked. Hey, there we go. Okay. Has Allied it brought you with with us? Um. Jangles or no? Wait, nope, it booted me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, once I'm in Tank's game, I should be able to invite you, right? That should be how it works. Okay, hold on. Yeah, no, you're still dead. Okay, in that case, Tank, you die, and it should hopefully reinforce me. I mean, hopefully we're able to... Yeah. Ho hopefully Long this bug doesn't tried. just stop us from playing. I it shouldn't even... stop us from playing entirely. It's just one of those, like, uh, for fuck's sake, he's gonna have to deal with it. I wanna see if this works. Okay. Uh... Well, Ooh. boys, um, Oh, I'm... I... I'm coming in. What, what's happening on your something. end? Yeah, you're coming in. Oh, shit. I'm here. I don't see that Jangles is in the, is in the game, though. Uh, yeah, try and well, invite him. Uh, okay, right, defend me, defend me, defend me. Oh, and I can, I can just join. Should be able, yep. So what did you do just then, Tank, that got me in the game? I just, in, I just, I invited you and then I, uh, I called you in. Mm, okay. What the fuck? Is this a- Yeah, Scissor Guy's game is private. It might be because me and, uh, Tank aren't on a friends list together yet. We're on Discord, but we're not on, uh, Steam. <laughs> oh dear! Oh god! Why? Why? Why are we having these bugs right now? We didn't have these bugs yesterday. Um, uh, tank, try. Uh, tank, when you get a sec, because it's it's reinforcing me. If you set the game to public, and then I should yeah. be able to. Um... Oh, uh, I'm dead. All right. <laughs> oh. No, I did have it as public. It is public. Okay, fuck it. In that case, yeah. let's just quit and restart, because this is not... Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, game. Uh, I I found a defense mission. You did? The, the, uh, the evacuate high-value assets. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'm happy so, to give that a go. Uh, no, we're not cross-playing. Um, and this did not happen the last couple of times we played. So, um... Destroyer has joined squadron. Oh, yeah, Wi-Fi jammers, indeed. Wi-Fi jammers, yes. Right, I'm joining um, Jangles' lobby, and then I should be able to okay. invite you, Tank. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully this works. Well, I'm... Hopefully. So, um, no, lobby is private. You, uh, <laughs> you, private. you join me. You join me, Jangles. Okay. Because there is a, uh, there is defense missions available on this planet. Okay, on what difficulty level, or all of them? Uh, I was on, uh, suicide. So, seven. 
Okay, the let's have a look. Uh, I don't know. I'm... Oh. I blame Jangles. <laughs> Unable to establish connection with game, goddammit. Oh, you're joking. Well, I can't find a, Hold um, on. I can't see a defense mission. Unless I'm looking for the wrong icon. Haven't the devs said they patched the death glitch, or am I imagining things? I'm not sure. Is that something that they've said? Well, evidently they're wrong. Evidently they are wrong. Right, it looks like you're in the game now, I think. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, go to a defending planet. Yeah. So which ones are we defending? I don't know. I never usually do this. The ice planet that we were just on evidently is a defense, because I found one of the uh, things on my list. Uh... What is the icon for, um... It's like it's a brick a wall. A brick wall. Yeah, a defensive shield, but in a brick wall style. Okay. Uh, I mean, I just checked all three and we got none, unless we are looking for a mission that is already in... progress. Yeah, it might just be a roll... Might be a roll the dice thing, because I didn't have any uh, sabotage air bases on so, my end. So Vegan says that there are no defense plants right now. Kano says that defending plants have a counter on them. In that case, yeah. I think... There are no defense plans. Well, oh, yeah. let's no. I'll, yeah, I'll liberate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so bot planets are currently defense missions. These want the sorry bug missions are currently defense missions. Um, bot um, missions are not. Are by the looks of it. Nope. Okay. Yep. Um, right. Well, let's try. We got ICBM and geological survey. I want to launch ICBM right. at these fucks. Yeah, let's do it. Um, and hopefully we won't get the same bug again. Oh no, I'm being banished to the far right. Are you? Yeah, I'm on the far right pod. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I just gave uh, Hello Future Me some. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, well, if we start here, go up there, and then deal with... Oh, that was dumb, that was a misclick. Wait, what? Yeah, that was me being dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's not drop right in the middle of a... Uh... Let's start here on the edge. Okay. Right, we oh, want now shield. I, now I have the arrow glitch. Arrow glitch? Remember that one that uh, was happening before where I couldn't select things with my mouse? I had the... Uh... No, not ready. I actually don't remember that. No, I'm not... I may have had that bug before, though. What movie is this? This is yeah. Starship Troopers 7, I guess, but with, uh, with some rather yeah. annoying glitches. Um, also, I've gone for the mortar turret this time um, instead of the uh, instead of the missile you have turret. The EMS. I I do. Yeah. You want me to take that instead? Oh, yeah, because the mortar will the mortar will kill you. <laughs> the, it, the mortar I has no it, fucks. Probably. Well, I figured because there's only three of us in the mission right now that it you know, it's less likely to do that. But you are absolutely you know you're absolutely right there. <laughs> Starship Troopers 3 was not a masterpiece. Starship Troopers 3 was an embarrassment. Shut your trap. <laughs> I, I've never seen it. I've only seen the first one. Uh, uh, the first one is great. Yeah, the first one's awesome. Uh, but... yeah. Well, you guys, uh, to kick that conversation off, you guys just had a movie night with that, right? What was the uh, general thoughts on that going through it? Um, there were a few people that had never seen it before, um, and the, yeah, the discussion was kind of what's the... I guess it was going in the direction of what's the difference between a movie that is, um, bad and a movie that exaggerates certain things so as to come off satirical in terms of the that kind of thing. Um, which I think is quite an interesting discussion, it's not something I've really thought about. Um, so, like, I, I guess the characters are, you know, do questionable things in all, which usually you would say, like, you know, that's like okay, bad I'll writing go. unless it's justified. Oh my god, it's right there. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go grab it. All right, go for it. But yeah, and in the case there's of a, um, there's we, an artillery. Then there's a uh, AAA um, emplacement just north of us. Okay. Found there's a, a, a bunker or a manufactory up here. Which I will see if I can yeah. get. That's um, attached to the. Um, that's attached to the uh, the uh, what you call it, the triple um, A. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. I pissed him off. I pissed him off. I yeah, killed. I I'm killed their spawning pool. I killed their spawning pool. God damn it! They're fast. Help me! <laughs> I didn't know they were this fast. <laughs> oh, that's. Uh, 
Missed. I will explain I the missed. PNG in a minute. No, you can't miss. I mean, why are they this far? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god, I've not come up against the um, the jetpack boys before. Um, yeah, the yeah, the assholes. Okay, well. Why have I chosen oh, Kronk as my mascot, hold. other than Imprisoned Groove is a criminally underrated movie and Kronk is goaded? Because I find the image rather disturbing and therefore very funny and kind of distracting. Um, well, that was just bullshit. So, yeah, I don't know, right, I find it... Again. I find it rather funny. That's basically why I picked it. Also, when I picked it, I had like 50 subs or something, and I thought, well, I mean, no one's gonna see it, so it doesn't matter. But I don't think I would change it. Right. Although I was actually going to ask you that question because uh, I remember Rags uh, a long time ago was having a discussion about that with like his old mascot being just like a sheep with a uh, photoshopped like with the sunglasses uh, glasses on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then he did his own little mascot by I can't remember the name of the artist, but uh, he did that. And then he's like, yeah, I thought it was better branding. I was kind of curious on your thoughts on that in terms um, of. Uh... Well, so essentially, because I mean, yeah, chat makes it makes it interesting point is until until Disney comes uh, gives you gives you a call, because <laughs> yeah, I mean, my view on it is essentially that it is transformative because it's especially in the way that I'm using it now is that the fact that it's a face swap and the way that I'm using it, um, it's not encroaching on their IP or whatever. I mean, I could I could be wrong there, and if that ever happens, then. We will see, but it's not like I'm so you know I don't th I don't think that I would be able to sell like a plushie or something <laughs> um, with that on because I I don't own what it's based on. Um, Did you just walk into a uh, into a mine? Yeah, because I was trying to figure out why the hell the turrets keep turning around whenever I try and get around them. <laughs> uh, because they're turrets and they shoot things. No, 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 the anti-air ones though. They were, yeah. I thought they were following my droid. It was shooting <laughs> at the sky a minute ago. Um, oh, okay, no, we're good. And, uh, yeah, so something I've kind of leaned into recently, which- Oh, that's a mine! No, we're okay. Which is entirely thanks to HP Lefty, is sort of doing the different, uh, themed, um, versions of the PNG, or, or PFP, for my different videos. And that started purely because when I was uh, doing the Barbie video, HP posted a, um, Basically, he po he posted the Kronk with the face swap, dressed as Ken, and I thought it was fantastic. So since then, we've kind of ended up doing like the different outfits for different videos, which I really like that idea. Because yeah. wait, did so Lefty did that? Yeah, he just he 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 made it, but he also just kind of made the first one just for shits and gigs, which he does every now and then. Um, but yeah, he does pixel art. That's his thing, and um, he just basically posted it in the Discord. And I was like, "That's amazing. We need to, we need more." <laughs> so yeah. Uh. Um, there's a question in chat I want to answer in a minute. I just have a bot to deal with. Who died? Who died? What? Um, what the fuck? Okay, sure. Um. Okay, no, so in terms of um, editing videos, I do all that myself, but Lefty is the guy that does the, um, the like, pixel art images that I use in my videos now, at least. Um, blah, 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 where's it gone? There was a question I wanted to answer. What game do you think would make a really good movie or series from one normal human? Um, I would need to think, but, um, I mean, I have a couple of answers, but do you guys have any kind of obvious ones that could make a really good film or TV show? Um... Well, they're already doing there. it, but uh, Henry Cavill's doing a Warhammer series, which I hope to Christ he can actually pull off. True. I think they can. Uh... Give a better answer, though. Give me a moment to think about that. Because, like, one that I would go to, which, again, I know that they're doing, is um, God of War, which I believe is going to be an adaptation of 2015... 20, 2018 God of War, sorry. Um, oh, no, there's a, uh, there's a air strike coming in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And it could be, um... I'd be interested to see how they do it. I'd be really interested to see how they cast it. Cause I am terrified for that show. Yeah. I mean, because they can... That is a very... It, I, I think I've said this before, like, it's it's um, similar to The Last of Us. Like they, could, they could go similar direction to The Last of Us in that it is 
Um, it's a very story-focused game that is focused heavily on the relationships between two characters, and you kind of explore the relationship between them through the other characters that they meet. Um, that is a pretty simple... You know, you can do a lot of different things with that formula. The difference that I would say between the games of um, God of War 2018 and The Last of Us is that um, God of War 2018 has a lot more action and, I guess, longer stretches of gameplay that are dedicated entirely to gameplay um, conceits, like like combat, for example. Um, whereas The Last of Us probably has a greater density of storytelling to it, which you would think would make it easier to adapt into a TV show. Um, I don't know what direction they'll go with the, um, with the God of War show, but I think it has the potential to be good. Because it, it like, at, it, at its core, it's a really, really good story. Yeah. Um, 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 a secure anime? Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, honestly, um, hmm. That's a really hard one for me. Oh. I mean, uh, you... to be fair, there are two really obvious ones in Bioshock and System Shock. Mm, okay. Those are like, basically, imagine a TV show that's like the fall of Rapture. Uh, that would God, be awesome. Yeah. The, oh, um, and people oh. slowly deteriorating into fucking superpower oh. crack addicts. Yeah. The thing is with oh, that uh, is uh, I can't speak to System Shock, but on the topic of um, Bioshock, I feel like the reason they haven't done that is possibly because of the amount of money you would need to just create the environment. Um, yes. You, you can CG it, you can use the uh, uh, what's it called, the thing they filmed the Mandalorian with. The volume. Um, you could you could do it with that, but like that shit's expensive. Um, and I feel like you could do some really good set designs with that, though. Like uh, I think you could, but again, I feel like it would be oh shit, I'm going a different way to you guys. Um, I feel like you would kind of have to nail the setting because um, honestly, like the setting and the twist, I guess, are the things that everyone remembers about Bioshock. Yeah, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna distract the turret. Um, Lord Wahoo run said, away, away, um, Pedro Pascal is Kratos, don't hurt me like that. <laughs> <laughs> there, I got the, uh, I got the turret for you. Alright, well, there's a barrage coming in now, so... Yeah. And, um, to, uh, answer another question from chat, have either of you guys seen the, um, first episode of the, the, um, Fallout show that's just come out? I have um, heard about it. Yes. I am very mad about it because uh, they wipe out uh, New Vegas. <laughs> no, they wipe out the NCR. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not. I don't know Fallout. What is the NCR? So the NCR is the New California Republic. It is basically the biggest, most successful uh, attempt at rebuilding. Um, uh, at basically rebuilding, and it's. Base. It's supposed to be based off of the old values. Of, uh, of America, you know, democracy, uh, a functioning republic. So deliberately kind of rebuilding America rather than just kind of hanging on and creating something new? Yeah, to, to a certain point. Like, there's like, um... There's differences, obviously. Like, the, uh, the, uh, like the, um... The president can, uh... Uh, can hold, um, office indefinitely. Uh, they have massive conscription. Um... Yeah. Okay. We got bot drop. Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah, I get... And, um, sorry, you, you said that they've got rid of that. The NCR is yeah, not they... in the show? They, they nuke it. They nuke it. Oh, as in it's there, but they destroy it? Yeah. Okay, that's bold. Um, I mean, I'd have to well, watch the show to see what I think about it, I guess. You're dropping but... shit on me! <laughs> uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, part of it is, uh, I think some people are believing because it was a deliberate snipe at, uh, at, um, Obsidian. Obsidian are the guys that made... Uh, New Vegas. New Vegas, okay. That's, yeah, I've never played New Vegas, that's probably why I'm not familiar with it. New Vegas is great, by the way. I've heard, yeah, I've got it, and I will play it at some point. Um... I, like, some people have suggested that I stream it, but I'm really not sure if that's the kind of game that would benefit from being streamed, because, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like that would benefit from highlights of your playthrough. Like, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll uh, record it, but not stream the whole thing. Yeah, I'd, I'd really love to see your reaction to certain people. Like, uh, there's a DLC character. Uh, Hank, what's his name? The Bandaged Guy. 
Oh, um, Joshua Graham. Yeah, Joshua is great. He's okay. a very interesting person. I will, uh, when I get a chance in the meme, I'll post, uh, meme channel, I'll post him, like, coming to my, a compilation of my favorite codes of him. Um, he's but a, let's just yeah, say in, guy. oh yeah, in the game, he is a hardcore Mormon who, um... Oh, here we go. <laughs> and he, no, he's really interesting. Probably, like, one of the best characters in the game. It's interesting. Like, I've I've heard that that's the case of Fallout. Like in that, like New Vegas almost transcends the Fallout brand because you've got sort of the old guard who are like Fallout One and Two is Fallout, and I don't like anything after that. Um, no. And I've I've never played either of them. I own Fallout One, but I've not played it before. Um, yeah, Gunshot is a is a good way of describing him, except that um, I don't think uh, I don't think Shad is. <laughs> As violent as uh, <laughs> as Joshua. <laughs> well, if I if I ever do play uh, New Vegas and I see this character, then we can just refer to him as Gunshed. Yeah, there's a there's um if you for example when you first meet him, you can actually pull pull out your weapon and aim at him, and he has a uh, his own kind of uh, his own um he has a cutscene for that, or not like a cutscene, but like a. Uh, Special animation kind of thing. To, yeah, a reaction to that. <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, also, I, when you meet yeah, him, he's just at a desk cleaning like 80 weapons behind him. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I have <laughs> a lot of these. Oh, yeah, no, he's great. I fucking love him. So uh, there's a uh, Aya Sauron over there. Okay. I hear a doggo. Yeah. I hear a doggo. Doggo's shouting at wife because she's just got home. I'm just going to shut the door. Right. Um,. As as it should. I mean, like you should be shouting at your wife. Yeah, he 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 pretty much just yells at anyone who knocks on the door. It's old habits and all that. Uh, okay, I got a Hulk over there. And do we want to deal with that before going to the primary? Um, I kind of want to, but at the same time, I would like them to move the fuck on so that we can then blow up the. Uh... I pissed him off. Okay, right. Well, of course I'm, you did. I'm oh, of course I'm, you did. I'm getting some turrets down. We'll fight them here. Um. Yeah, I, I will absolutely watch the Fallout show because I don't have any particular investment in the um, in the source material. Um, oh my god! But uh, they call the not you, not you, not you. No, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, yeah, currently I'm um, watching through Shogun, and I want to wait until I finish Shogun before I start Fallout. Oh, Shogun you are watching? So good. That. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I it's really like that show. it's fantastic, and I, I mean, I can't finish it because it's not all out yet they're releasing it episodes like week on week um and i think i'm um i think i'm currently about halfway through episode six i think but i i can't remember the numbers i think it's episode six yeah. um and yeah i think it's fantastic like it, it really really reminds me of like keep game of thrones um obviously without the fantasy like oh. the the politicking and is, is is brilliant and the the thing that i have not seen pain Right, the thing that I have not seen um, really done as well anywhere else is the way that it uses um, like the natural language barrier between John Blackthorne and basically all of the other characters apart from a select few. It uses that to create drama, and I've not really seen any other um, any other TV show or film do that in that kind of way. I don't know if chat has any examples of that kind of thing being done really well because there, there definitely are some like the idea that you have this one guy who just doesn't know the language of anyone else and then you have the um because in shogun you have different characters who can interpret because they can speak oh. both languages but some of the people are deliberately misinterpreting because they don't like him that kind of thing um and yeah you I'm, want me to give you the the obvious one right away <laughs> uh what for like misinterpretation for like language barriers creating drama kind of thing yeah uh go for it go for it Last Samurai. <laughs> oh, Last Samurai. True. It's been a little while since I've seen Last Samurai, but yeah, that's a that's a good example. Literally the same the same premise, basically. <laughs> yeah. Do you know if um because both both Shogun and um, the Last Samurai, are, my understanding is broadly speaking, they're based on historical events, but with fictional characters. Um, yeah, yes. uh, I have I have things to say about Last Samurai. It, fair enough. As much as I like it. Yeah, I, no, I, I really I, like I it. Really, I really do. Like, it's yeah. probably like my favorite Tom Cruise movie. Um, um, oh, it's up there. It's up there. The one thing I don't like is the uh, Shiro Yama XP. 
because they're like, oh yeah, he doesn't use uh, doesn't use projectile weapons because he views them as or doesn't use guns because he views them as coward cowardly. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> oh, in real life, no, the guy loved guns. He fucking loved them. Which character was, is this in Last Samurai? Sorry. Um, the main samurai. Katsumoto. Ben Watanabe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear his name's Katsumoto. I can't... It's been a while, but I think that's his name. Reloading! Um, yeah, because in okay. real... Uh, yeah, because he's an XB of... I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, Ashiro Yama. Um, who actually never won a, uh, an actual fight, by the way. Okay. But... Uh, yeah, but he was the guy in charge of... The, uh, he, he was the guy that was leading the, um... He was leading the samurai. Uh, the Samurai Rebellion. And, yeah, he fucking loved guns. Okay, interesting. And, oh. There's a, um, what, what is that history channel? Someone turned me on to that history channel. Um, because they did a really, really good video on Master and Commander. It may have been um, you, Tank, that told me about the video. I can't remember. Are you talking about, what's it called, um, history buffs? Possibly. I can't remember. Have I have I turned this satellite dish the right way? Uh, watch it. You gotta. Uh, you'll hear a click when you do. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, wife has brought me. Problem. Wife has brought me cookies, and wife has brought me some uh, some drinks. Thank you, wife. Thank you, wife. Where's Thank my you. cookies? Tank asks where his cookies are. <laughs> uh, they're here, Tank. You gotta come get them. Oh, there we go. Right, done. Okay, I've done this objective. Um, chat says thank you as well. Yeah, I think I think Tank was right on the name of um, on the name of that channel. Are they democracy cookies? Um, right. What was I gonna? If your wife, said, yeah, if your wife said to, for me to come and get them, like, yeah, I will. <laughs> you, well, I mean, you're pretty far away, but yeah. Um, Jangles, sure, you're you're in Canada as well, aren't you? Right. Yes. Yeah, uh, I was doxxed. I was doxxed. <laughs> right. Um, okay, sorry. I had to close the door because the dog is being lippy again. Um, okay, we're actually doing pretty good. Yeah, we, things, are, no. things are going all right. Things are not have not got out of hand yet. Um, yes. I yeah. got supplies over here, by the way. To clarify, I'm in the UK. I wasn't saying that I'm in Canada, but I know that Tank and... Um, jangles are so hence yeah. them being pretty far from me if they want to come get my cookies okay now, as far as I know, they're democratic cookies so you share your cookies <laughs> they're democratic cookies not communist cookies hey well democracy everyone needs a piece <laughs> <laughs> nine reinforcements yeah but most of those reinforcements were because jangle stepped on mines is that was that in this mission because I swear we haven't died that much. We only have nine lives left. No, I yeah. I died a bunch at the beginning because the jump pack guys and then the oh, okay. stuff on mine. Because I'm wearing light armor right now and I do not mean to do that on a bot mission. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. I can hey, hear a bot. Someone protect me. I can hear a bot on my right. Uh, I'm looking for him. I don't see him. I can hear him. He's in my ear. He's telling you to do mean things. He, I think he possibly wants me to do mean things. Are you going to let me pull that lever? Oh, out? I see him. No, it's it's just uh, winding up. You can see the little bar filling uh, up in the uh, top right. That's right. Um, that thing that you're next to, Tank, is that the Eye of Sauron thing? On the, on the that is the Eye of Sauron, yes. So we want to head for that, and then it's just evac, right? There's nothing else? Um, evac, uh, yeah, it's over by evac. We have to launch the ICBM still. Oh, yeah. of course, right. Okay, so we gotta head over there. Okay. Yeah, be a shame oh, if we were here, boys. Be a shame if we were to leave uh, without doing that. <laughs> ah. I'm gonna try and um deal with it. Okay, well we'll head up to I you. Um, probably I probably will die. <laughs> well, okay, in that case, Jangles, why don't we go to the ICBM and if tank fails, then we can just deal with the Eye of Sauron when we do the evac, because it's next to the evac. Sure. It's not gonna. Um, actually, it's not gonna affect us when we do the when we do the missiles. So, at least I don't think it will. There it is, right over there. I have Sar running. So, uh, anyone who doesn't play Hell Divers, of which there probably are some in chat, if that thing sees you, it will basically call a, call a bot drop on you and keep doing that. So, Enemy tactical asset within threat range. yeah. 
Wife, stop lying in chat. I have not promised to get you a ferret once I hit 100,000 subs. I I will fully support that fucking goal if in that fact, is a thing. I seem to remember telling you explicitly that that would not happen. Jeez, don't go over there. Oh my god, I was I wasn't watching. I was I yeah. was about to take a sip of whiskey. <laughs> no, I I literally just did the same thing with oh, my god. coffee. That's bots on you, Tank, right? Yeah, those are bots on me. Okay, that's fine. We'll reinforce you if you die. Map, you lied to me. You didn't tell me about that hole. Right, what was... Uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about Shogun, Fallout... Um, oh, crap. That was it. Video games... Interesting video games that could... Show adaptations. Yeah, video yeah. games that could make a good show adaptation. Because, um, to me, it's either got to be something with an extremely solid story, like, for example, Last of Us or God of War, where you just do that and you just translate it. Um, and again, with God of War, there's going to be a little bit more translation that you're going to have to do, but that's... Uh, that's one type. The other the other type of show that you could do is one that has a really, really cool world, like, from what I've seen. Oh, damn out. it. Okay, we got you. I got him. Oh, and then my super, uh, my super samples are there. Yeah, we can, we can get it when oh, we get back. Oh, oh. Um, oh. or like Bioshock, if they were to do that, then if they nail the world, then, you know, the story can, I guess, be pasted on top. Um, it was, it, I got ran over by one of those god damn, uh, um tanks no the guys with the um hulks hulks no whoops fuck words <laughs> jetpacks oh okay yeah those oh, yeah okay. okay um dishonored is one that's been mentioned a couple of times in chat it's been that... years since i've played the first one but i know now, it has its fans on, the interesting sorry. thing with Dishonored is you do not have to do that about Corvo and Emily. Just yeah. setting it in that world would be interesting. Because yeah. hey, the uh, Outfighter is such a wild card. Yeah. Can you drop a, another um, shield? Yeah. Shield gem? Yeah. Uh, if I can type in the code, right? I can. There we go. Um, yeah, another one that's being mentioned is um, Vampire the Masquerade, which I've heard of but never played. Absolutely. Oh, random. You have to... That has some of the funniest fucking characters I've ever seen in my life. Is it on PC? Yes. What? But you have, to, uh, you have to install a mod to do the fix for it. It, it. Okay. To get it to run. Is it like an old game? Yeah. Yes. Like 2000s. Oh, okay. So is it is it on Steam or is this a case of like abandonware? Um, if you were to get it anywhere, you can get it on Steam, but I'd get it on GOG, because uh, GOG already has the mod installed. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, we got the missile here, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll save my turrets for when we evac, because we hopefully won't need them now. Yeah, that's potentially an option. What what kind of game is it, in terms of, like, genre? An RPG, uh, like, action game kind of thing like that, like, you know, like, shooting mechanics, melee mechanics. The... <laughs> It, it has not aged gracefully, to be fair. Mechanically. But it, like, yeah, mechanically, like, with some of the stuff and everything. But, oh it my god, the, uh, the the story and uh, the characters are hilarious and engaging. Okay. Well, that's your, an option. Your arms, your arms dealer is a Chinese immigrant man who's secretly a member of the uh, Chinese Communist Party. And he's like, yes, I'm a gardener. And then his walls flip over and it's a bunch of guns and shit. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally pro Second Amendment. <laughs> okay. Oh. What's up? What have you got? Ah, uh, we got that. Okay, it. right. Okay. Um. Uh, okay, that's a bot drop. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a bot drop. Yep, that's fine. In that case, I'll get my turrets down because we're going to need them. Don't worry, just deal with it. Uh, me and, um... Okay. Got it. Um, right. Super chat from Zach Winters. Thank you, sir. Um, and I will throw this to you guys, although I think I did ask. Um, hey, RFT, how's it going? Have you seen Fallout yet? So, um, I haven't yet. Um, I've heard... Um, it's not that I've heard mixed things. It's that I've heard some people say it's really good and some people say it's really bad. So, mixed in terms of public opinion, but I haven't heard anyone say, yeah, it's okay, if you know what I mean. Uh, I, I'm gonna go launch, I'm gonna launch it, since we've already, we got that lockdown, that was easy. Yeah, cool. Um, 
But yeah, as that, that's how we got onto the Shogun discussion, is I'm currently watching Shogun, and I don't really like watching two things at once, so I'm going to wait until Shogun is is done and is fully out. Um, and then, yeah, Fallout is, in, in particular, if, if the consensus kind of turns and it's like, yeah, this is okay, this is actually really good, then yeah. Fallout yeah. will be my next... Um, my next show that I watch. Yeah, go deal with those. Uh, let's go deal with those because this is about to launch. Where the the two nests? Yeah, the two nests, and then we'll deal. Then we'll get the. Um... Enemy patrol. There's a patrol yeah. there, by the way. Um, uh, that's fine. We can ignore. Oh, it. There's two patrols. Two patrols. Two patrols. We don't want both. Oh fuck. Okay, let's deal with the one that's aggroed us, and not the one that's over there. Ideally. Oh fuck. But yeah, um, if the Fallout show is good, then good. Um, I kind of hope that it is, and I okay, hope it's launching. Let's... Okay, nice. Yeah, they both aggroed us. This is this this might be a problem. This is not a problem. I have I've seen clips of the Fallout show, but I've heard I watched Open Bar yesterday with uh, with all with like the regulars, kind of thing like that, and. Uh, Mauler and Platoon were talking about it in particular, and they both had very different opinions by the sounds of it. Okay. Platoon was kind of neutral on it, while Mauler outright hated it and he's not watching anymore. Right. Okay, so Platoon liked it, you said? Sorry? Because I, I did watch he Open was, Bar, I think I must have missed that bit. He was moderate. Okay. Near the end. He was, uh, he was moderate on it. Like, he's like, yeah, it could be. Like, I didn't hate it. Because is the whole thing out yet or not? I don't think the whole thing's out. I think they're finally picking up that, yeah, they shouldn't dump all their shit immediately. Okay. Because they want people to stick around. Nowadays. We have another, we have another. So they kind of blow their load early to hook the viewer in, I guess. That's okay. Um, another super chat from Jack. Th uh, Jack, sorry, Zach. Thank you again. Fallout is terrible. Episode two might be the worst episode of media I have ever seen. Every plot is fucked. Characters teleport around the world to interact. Well, that's not promising. Um, well, <laughs> Um, I I probably will still watch it, but uh, yeah, I I don't. I think I kind of wasted my time with Halo, and I don't really want to waste my time with um with Fallout if it is as bad as you say. So I will probably watch the first few episodes, and if I'm just not feeling it, then I just I, I'm not gonna bother finishing it. Um, we're getting close to the ISR, and by the way, if um yeah, we need to be careful. Um. What was the other There's thing? There's a lot around here, so we need to... Yup, yup. Got an EMP going down, and got a gun. Um, Textiel also asks, um, thoughts on the Borderlands, or feelings on the Borderlands movie, because I don't believe it's out yet. Um, have you oh. guys seen the trailer? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so, I, well, I don't have much in the way of thoughts, and then I'll... Uh, let you go for it if you want. Um, I don't really know anything about the plot of Borderlands. I've played the second one pretty extensively, but this was ages ago. Um, it seems like they have horribly miscast basically everyone in the in the. Um... Oh, get back, get back, get back. Okay. There, we got a Hulk there as well. They've horribly miscast basically everyone that's in it. Um, this is purely going by their appearance, not who the characters are, because I don't really remember who the characters are. Um, the style seems to just be trying to rip off James Gunn's Suicide Squad kind of thing. Which might be appropriate for Borderlands, but it very much feels like the the film is pretending... It's like Bargain Bin James Gunn. It's pretending to be something that it isn't, because it's an Eli Roth film. Um, and Eli Roth... Um, well, I mean, calling him hit and miss is probably unfair. He's, a, he's not a... He doesn't make good films. Um... But I do think that he can be a competent director, at least competent, which is a low bar, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Jangles, do you have anything to add on the on the trailer? Uh, not much besides, like, yeah, that it looks horribly miscast, and honestly, um, chat, I, I am curious to hear what their opinions would be on this, but chat, I, I think Borderlands is kind of a thing that flew under the radar in terms of uh, how bad it actually is. The game. Like, I think a lot of it is cringe. And I'm specifically talking, talking about the writing more so. Like, people like to say how great Handsome Jack is. I Shit. largely agree with that, I guess, like, to a point. But I think he's vastly overestimated as how good he actually is. I think he's neutral. 
I mean, like, yeah, I, I, like again, I played I played the game with Handsome Jack in it, and I don't really remember much about him, which kind of tells you everything you need to know, I guess. But the thing I always remember about Borderlands is the setting is really cool, and the visual art style is also really cool. Um, which is why why not make it animated? Um, true. Yeah. Good point. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yep. No, you're good. Tank. One. Yeah. Uh, boys, we have eight minutes left. We, we might need to evacuate here. Okay, okay. Uh, where are we at? We've done the... Yeah, okay, go... If, if you can get to the evac, just call it in and we'll just run to you, because we're not gonna... Yeah. I don't think we can deal with this bot plant that's right in front of us. I am currently dealing with a bunch of body boys myself right now. Okay, I'm heading to you then. Yeah, we're heading. I'm making my way to the evac point, but I got a... Is... Uh, making my way... Uh, uh, is Borderlands 3 worth playing? Because I own it, never played it. No. I've seen so much cringe with that game that I, <laughs> I just, like... Put it, put it this way, Borderlands 2 I had funds with because it was with friends and whatnot, and I liked some of the characters. Some. Okay. Um, but, oh, like, that, say, what, uh... I saw, what I saw from 3, I was cringing out of my skin. Okay. Who was uh, that? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Jangles, you call him in, because I'm not there yet. Okay. Uh, I got a Hulk chasing me, but hopefully... Uh, right, help me, Mortar. No, that's the wrong code. Help me, Mortar. Um, yeah, I didn't play... Um, fuck you. I didn't play uh, Borderlands 3 when it came out, because I just... I object to... Um, I'm not going to install Epic Games on my computer. Um... And then when the when the timed exclusive ran out, I got it on Humble Bundle, and I've just never got around to playing it. Probably will at some point, but yeah. Uh, HP says Borderlands 3 is so bad. Okay, fair enough. Is it because it's I like... The... Go on, Tank. Go on. I got the Hulk coming in. Okay. He's gone. Yeah, is the reason why There's Borderlands 3 is bad, in. is that basically because it's what? totally oh. different to 2? Like, have they kind of forgotten what made 2 good, or is it... Is it for another reason? Uh, cringe adolescent girl saying really cringe things and being like, No, shut up! Like, you gotta do it, like, we gotta be good kind of thing, right? Right, like, okay. So cringe character writing just, rather than mechanics. You know how Borderlands had that style of, like, super meme kind of thing? Like, oh, whoa, can't believe that happened, and aren't we funny? It kind is very kind of, of self-aware, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, they dial that up and, it, and like, they do it awfully and it just makes it cringe, oh, from what okay. I understand. And based off what I saw, I can't disagree. Oh, Jesus. There's a Ooh. lot of berserkers in this game. Yes, there are. How, how long... how long on evac? Because things are getting hairy. A minute. Oh my god, okay. Fucking hell. Ah. Ah, ammo, hey guys, back up, back up, up. Run away from the extraction yep, yep, right yep, now. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Tank, run. Is that eagle or is that something else? That's, that's an eagle, that's an eagle. Okay, okay, yep. Nice. Uh, soften him up a little bit. Uh, yep. No, here they come again. Fuck off. <laughs> 30 seconds. Oh boy, okay, there we go. We're getting some good hits in now. I've got uh, turrets up in 10. I'll see if I can uh, drop them on the evac. No ah, bullets, 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 I'm out of bullets. Fucking hell, secondary. Ooh, that's a nice gun. I've never actually used this one. Anyone's think. got grenades. Ah, ah. Pain, run. Right, go, go, Gadget. I have so many fucking berserkers chasing me. Okay, just get... Oh, my God. Yeah. The only one that matters to get out is Jangles. Wait, do we have... Do, does yeah, Jangles, Jangles have a lot? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Get in, get in, get in. Go! Go! Have a good time. Go, 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 go. Fucking run! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, they were all coming from that uh, one plant that we didn't get. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I need to refill my whiskey. Um, 
So, uh, wife asks, thank you, wife, for the question, because, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, thoughts on the Joker trailer? So, I have only seen a couple of short clips from the, um, it's a teaser trailer, not a theatrical trailer, because I just don't, I don't watch theatrical trailers anymore, because I find that more often than not, they spoil the movie, these days, at least. Um, uh, but yeah, given that it's a teaser trailer, I probably will watch the whole thing at some point. And I don't know, I feel like it, from what I've seen, it definitely, it doesn't make me worried. Let's put it that way. Um, I think there are reasons potentially to be worried about the, the uh, Joker sequel. Um, but the fact that, because Joaquin Phoenix doesn't typically do um, sequels. Todd Phillips, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when Joker came out, he was like, yeah, why would I do a sequel? That's... The, the, the story's done, kind of thing. The fact that he's changed his mind um, could be a warning sign, or it could be a case of, no, okay, we actually have a story to tell here. Um, the fact that it's Lady Gaga, I don't care about, because she can act. Um, I, yeah, if pe people who don't think she can act have not seen A Star Is Born. And um, the fact that it's a musical, I'm also not particularly worried about, because like I really do not like musicals. It has to be a very particular type of musical for me to get anything out of it. Um, typically like a musical comedy um, and the fact to making Welcome making it Hellfire. the sequel to a film like Welcome Joker a musical Hero. is such a bold creative decision that it makes me think okay you guys probably have some like specific idea of what you're going to do here which means that even if the film turns out not to be great or not to be as good as the first one at the very least I don't think it's just a shameless cash grab um, could turn out to be completely wrong, but I feel like you, if if you were going to just do a shameless cash grab, you would not make the decisions that they have made. Um, have, have you guys seen the trailer? Do you have any any other thoughts on it? Um, I have not. I haven't. I am concerned about it being a musical. Yeah. If that's, but again, that's probably. Again, that's probably just my own bias because, like, I do like some musicals. Like, um, like I really do like Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd is a wonderful, wonderful um, that uh, musical. That would be my prime example as like one that I like. <laughs> yeah, same. No. Sweeney Todd is a straight up traditional musical, whereas the other ones I would say that I like are not. Um, and it's yeah. also the only Tim Burton movie apart from 1989 Batman that I like. I, I don't like Tim Burton, but those two I really like. No. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think Tim Burton's actually kind of... Well, no, no, because he did The Nightmare Before Christmas. Which no, I really he, did. he did not, he actually. Didn't? He produced it. He did not, no. Oh, he produced it's it. His okay. name, I, hate, I hate it so much. His name's plastered all over it, but it was not him who directed it, and I fucking oh. hate it. Yeah. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I am perfectly willing to be... Uh, to be um, uh, actually, probably a... I don't know. I mean, down, down, down here is a risk. Alternatively, yeah. we go up there and we fight our way to this one because we can cross there, right? Uh, we yeah. can cross. We can always cross. Like that's okay, the okay. thing. Okay. I just yeah, I have uh, nightmares yeah. of the first time we. I, I think it was on stream last time, and I just kept drowning repeatedly because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, they, it was fix on stream. That. they fix that. Well, uh, that's good. Um, um, sorry, go on. Um, regarding musicals uh, and Joker. Anyway. um... Yeah, so Joker, I, I I do actually agree with you. I don't think is a good uh, example of a or, or shouldn't be uh, like uh, like I don't think the character really works well for a musical. That's just my personal opinion. So um, what, what I'm expecting that they're going to do probably is they're going to have to contextualize why the film is a musical because otherwise the tonal shift is going to be. Oh wait, oh. oh. What's up? What? What happened? What? Oh, I think he's muted his mic. Um, yeah, so with um, with Joker 2, I'm guessing that the film is probably going to be from the perspective of the Lady Gaga character. And she's going to imagine... Um, they're going to contextualize the music as having it being like her imagining, you know, that life is is music or something like that. That's my guess, because I do oh, agree shit. that that isn't oh, something that Arthur would do, or, or the Joker would do. Uh, what's up? Is it the artillery, and or is it something else? That's an artillery! No, there's a, yeah, there's artillery over there, and a gunship right over here. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, first. Yeah, come with uh, someone. Come with me. I'm going to need you to cover me while we take care of these. Uh... Yeah, I'm grabbing my shield. I'll be with you. Um, Lord Wahoo says so. It's Sucker Punch too, and um, no, I would not say that that's the case with Sucker oh. Punch. Um, I think Sucker Punch is bad for, I guess, other reasons because. Sucker Punch and Rebel Moon have a lot of similarities in that a lot of the time the plot will just kind of stop so you can do an action scene that means nothing and then it'll keep going. Um, whereas a good musical, if we're, if we're going to assume that Joker 2 is going to be a good musical, um, should not ever stop the plot so that they can sing and then start There's up again. There's a cannon again. behind us. There is? Where? Well, for basically where we dropped. Okay, okay, okay. Because, yeah, he's, he's shooting us in the back, and that just humbled me. Okay. Is, is this something that we need to hell bomb? I don't know what this is. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's a, uh, it's a bomb. It's a, uh, uh, what you call it? God damn it. Um, factory. Gunship factory. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, oh, you're airstriking it. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, Lucius says, can Lady Gaga even sing without auto-tune? Yes, she can. Um, I can't say I'm a absolutely. fan of her music, but she absolutely can sing without auto-tune. About to say she is unironically, Chad. She's a talented person. Extremely, like, yeah. She writes. I, I believe yeah. she writes all her songs. She's written songs for other pop stars. Um, yeah, she's. She she seems like a gimmick in that like she walks around wearing the most ridiculous costumes so that everyone says how good it is or how bad it right is. Over there. Don't go over there. Don't go okay, over there. Okay, There's okay. another turret. Um, yeah, but, yeah, she's extremely talented. Even though I don't personally care for her music. We need to go, we need to go. Okay, run. Fucking run. Protect the hell bomb. So if they, yeah, if they shoot the hell bomb before it actually detonates, it just doesn't yes, detonate, it, period? It doesn't go off. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, chicken walker. Nope. Yeah. Okay, let's take out the uh, artillery. Fuck you! Me. Okay, I'm just dealing with a chicken walker right now. Hold on. These things are always easy to deal with unless you're right on you. Ooh, the fuck? Get out of here. Oh, They're that right. bounced. That bounced. <laughs> uh, I got your back. The hell bomb didn't work. No, the hell bomb worked. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Right, I'm coming. My artillery strike didn't work. Okay, chat, by the way, I uh, there are things I want to respond to, but I can't because things are hectic right now, so I will, I will have a look at chat in a minute. I just, I don't want to die. We have to survive. The mission comes first. Mission before self. Okay, there's, there's another artillery going in. Uh, get back, get back, get back. Ah, Eagle Airstrike. I think that is a bunker in there. No, it's not. Okay. Okay, now we can deal with it. That turret's still kicking. That's fine. Nice. Uh, okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Research station is uh, Hellbomb fodder again, right? That's how you deal with them? Huh. Right, okay. Um, Evie says, If you're going to musicals where characters sing the songs, that sing, the songs have to move the story in some way. That's why I'm concerned about it. Is the, not, is the songs not doing that? Um, yeah, pretty much. That's basically um, uh. my view of it. So, like, the songs, the fact that it's music, um, I'm not really sure how to phrase help, this. Help me, help me. Help. Where, are, where are you, Tech? Where are you coming? Ah. I'm, coming with the, I'm coming with the heavy support. Okay, I'm coming with a shield for me, and then I can give you a tactical hug. Are we good? <laughs> no, no. What's I got lots of angry on me. Okay. Ow. <laughs> there's a devastator right over there. Oh, and there's yeah. a... There's a bot factory right here. Okay, okay. I'll, um, I'll drop the hell bomb on this, and then we can do the factory. Right. Uh, wait, sorry, what were you... Oh, wait, actually, I know. Um, so, in terms of musical, would we count Disney films, like the old-school Disney films yes. as animated uh, movies? Yes. I, I would absolutely count those. So, well, I mean, the, one go-to would be The Lion King, um, and I was just thinking about that based on what Evie just said, is um, the songs in The Lion King matter. It's not, let's stop and sing a song. Um, you got, like, you I just can't wait to, it, you're exploring the characters, you've got Be Prepared, you've got, um, Just Can't Wait to Be King, um, Circle of Life, um, Can You Feel the Love Tonight is another one, they're all important to the plot. 
Yeah, Hakuna Matata. Yeah, Hakuna Matata, of course, yeah. That's possibly the most important one to the plot. Um, yeah. Uh, you failed, by the way. I failed with the Hell Bomb, are you serious? Yes. But no, it, it went off, it just didn't blow up enough. Oh, things. God damn it. Okay, well... No, you, the, the one that you want to blow up is the big grey building. Right, okay. Rip. Um... Yeah, so it, um... I don't know if you need to reach a certain percentage of, you know, a certain amount of music in a film for it to be considered a musical. It's kind of an arbitrary distinction. Um, because, like, one um, RRR, which I know some people in chat have seen, and I adore that movie. Can you... Can you... Okay, you got him. Yep, yep, got him. Uh, that... You I got could this, call I got this, I got this. Okay, okay, nice. That one you could call a musical, but there's, there's only, like, four or five musical numbers in that film, and again, the music... Um, whether it is in a musical number or not, is extremely important to the storytelling of that movie. So, um, I would cite RRR as probably my favorite musical, but if we're going to disqualify it, I feel like the disqualification would be pretty arbitrary. Um, shit, I'm dead. Oh, well. Um, Polar Express I've never actually seen, so I can't tell you if that's a, um, musical. I don't think that is. Uh, again, it's that arbitrary thing, right, of, like, a, uh, well, if something has one song, does that make it a musical? It's it, it's we're kind of yeah. getting silly here because how many films only have one musical number? That would be a little bit jarring. Um, well, I mean, um, Road to El Dorado. Oh, fucking great movie! I love that That's movie. But movie. Is that a musical? I'm, no, I mean it, it's one of those with only one where they break out into one song. Do they? Yeah. When? It's, um, when? it's been a while. Let's be gods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Th this is when he they're they're convincing the people that they're gods when they're not. Is that? Oh, they were talking about how they should pretend to be gods, yeah. Okay. I'll need to rewatch that film, because that is a really good film from what I remember. I saw it in the it's a great it film. Out. It is yeah. a lovely film. I was just using it as an example of a uh, of a video of a movie with only one uh, one musical number. Okay. Um, oh, another great another good great uh, musical. Um, Love of Treasure Island. Uh, which, sorry, which one? Which Treasure Island? Muppet, Tre Muppet Treasure Island. Ah, okay, yeah. Oh, the that's, Muppets! That's okay, yeah. I, I thought you were referring to the, um, the, um, Treasure Planet for some reason I had stuck in my head, and I was yeah, thinking that is... Yeah, I was, I was on the same boat with that. I was yeah. just like, wait, that's a musical? <laughs> like, yeah. Speaking okay, of... Need to get... Sorry, go on, Tank, go on. We need to start... I was about to say, yeah, we need to start moving. Okay, okay. We um, can't be sitting around fighting, uh, fighting bots all day. Yeah. As much fun as it is, it's not. <laughs> So, um, Lucius the Eternal makes a very good and funny point. <clears throat> Excuse me. He says, Aragorn sings the Baron and Luthien song, Lord of the Rings' greatest musical. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Wait, that science lab is still up for me. Is it still up? Oh, we got it. There we go. We see the mushroom cloud, oh, we know it's gone. The, We're good. I, I would hope so. That's the third goddamn bomb I've dropped on that. It's a bot kept walking around the corner and being like, oh, that's a funny bomb you got there. <laughs> It'd be a shame if someone were to switch it off. Uh, right. We have a bot drop coming in somewhere. Yeah, over there. Okay. Uh... Oh, shit. Shit. There's a tank. There's a tank. There's a tank. Okay, okay. I got it. 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 No, Rail Cannon! Don't shoot the little bot! Shoot the big one! This is what you were made for. I like how this is like, yeah, but I want to see what happens if I hit one of the guys that's just a dude. Oh, okay. No, we're okay. I we got, got more bots coming in. Okay. Ah, oh, shit. Bullets. 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 Come on, bullets. How did that miss? How did that miss? Oh god, oh no, god. bad, I gotta, bad. I, I gotta walk for T-posing at me. <laughs> he's he's T-posing and coming at me. I'm getting oh, there's railed. There's a tank right on me. There's a tank right wait, on me. Wait, Brandon, god. can you see this? They're just like T-posing at hold, me. Hold on, I'm, um, I'm dead. Let me... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that reminds me of oh, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode with the, um, the floating guys. I, what? Uh, I think the name of the episode is Hush, um, and there's like these creepy oh. demons that just kind of, they just float uh, towards you without really moving. It's really uh. creepy. 
Yeah, I remember yeah. that being one of the best episodes of Buffy. I haven't finished Buffy yet, but, um, yeah. Uh, Jangles, you are the only one left alive. I know. I'm trying. Okay. There we are. Oh my. Uh, I forgot how much these, uh, these ones suck. Oh, so I'm leaving combat zone. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Pain. That's a Zerka. Okay, right. Um, where is objective? There is objective. Somewhere in that direction. Yeah, it's over here. Okay. Grinch is the best musical. Thank you, Lindy Lulu. Lou, Lou who? What? I don't know. Cindy Lindy Lou who? Oh, well, that's what he said. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't Cindy actually. S I haven't actually seen the Gr the Jim Carrey Grinch. What? <laughs> I've seen the um, the fucking Illumination animated one, and I hated it. But I don't know why I was expecting anything else. Because well, yeah, you, Benedict Cumberbatch plays or voices the Grinch in that version. Oh, because it um, was, um, it was piggybacking offing, uh, piggyback off of, piggyback off of, of um, Benedict Cumberbatch's. Uh, I got the terminal. Popularity at the time. He, yeah, he okay. was. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I guess uh, Doctor Strange would have come out at a similar time. Obviously, of the Hobbit movies, Sherlock. Imitation game. Very good movie as well. Oh, well, what do you call it? Um, you're telling me you have not seen uh, Jim Carrey be, uh, telling Whoville to kiss his ass while twiddling a mistletoe? No, I don't think I have. Uh, I may have seen the clip, but I've <laughs> not seen the film. Um, and, and also motorboating a chick. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that happens. That unironically happens. I was having a, this discussion uh, with a friend the other day because we watched um, Batman Forever, the one where he plays the Riddler. Um, oh my god! It's hilarious, um, and it's just something about Jim Carrey. Is he he puts everything into the roles that he plays, um, even if the film is not good. Um, well, I I actually really like the Grinch one. Like, it's it's not like a great adaptation, I'd say, but like it's still like a fun film. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he almost, he actually passed out a few times playing the Grinch because of the suit. Yeah, I know that he absolutely hate. Like, he was it was basically driving him insane. Kind of like the stories that you hear about uh, some of the characters, like John Rhys Davies, who played Gimli in the Lord of the Rings, just despised his prosthetics because it was so itchy and the technology available at the time. Um, it means that, like, the, the comfort of the actor was not a primary concern. Um, it had to be affordable, because they made, like, I don't know, like 20,000 Hobbit feet or something stupid for that movie, or for those movies, because they had to replace them every day. So they had to be easily replicable, they had to be cheap, um, and they had to be, you know, durable enough as to, you know, survive someone walking on them for nine hours a day. Um, well, it's the same with the uh, the swords, uh, th which I, if I remember correctly, they actually made with uh, skateboard. Um, yeah, they like uh, they put skateboard um, the stuff that they use for like wheels and that into the uh, into the actual handles to make sure that they. Uh, oh shit! Work. Yeah, I know that they because they will have built like multiple different variants of. Swords. Uh, that's two patrols over there. I don't think we want to aggro them ideally. Yeah, just say, just ignore them. Yeah, We're yeah. Ig Avoid um, the patrols. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Um. Get, if if we get into contact, if we come under contact, just run away. Yep. Yeah. It is better to live and uh, live a coward than die a hero. Nice. What? Well, I say nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll, you call him in. I'll get. I'll get his samples. We need his biomass. <laughs> oh shit! No, no, bad, bad. Goddamn tyrannid players. <laughs> They're not as bad as Necron players. Let's be honest. Oh god, Necrons. Currently, Necrons are just uh, like top of the meta. Sorry, I just I picked up your um 
your thingy. My backpack? Yeah, oh. your backpack. I can drop it because you need it and I don't. Um, there there's also a jammer over there. Fuck. Oof. Well, good thing that's where we're going, so. Uh, where is it that we're going? Um, over, over by me. Okay, okay, cool. I need my shield. I'll call it in 40 seconds. Um, Lord Wahoo says, did you, hear, did you hear the leaks about how Games Workshop was squatting a bunch of their old stuff? I assume you mean, like, them binning it off. Um, and yeah, I mean, they do that every now and then, but, like, the... Because the Old World stuff and the, um... Age of Sigma stuff, and I guess the Lord of the Rings stuff. I don't really follow it anywhere near as closely as I follow 40k, because I just don't play it. Um, and I get that it would suck if suddenly, if you know, if you're collecting an army and then there's a tank right fucking there and we haven't aggroed it. Yeah. Do we want to drop on it or? I'm just gonna drop a bomb on okay, it. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, my, my I bomb. Got it, I got it. Hearing. Good thing it hit the walker. Okay. Nice. Look. See, right, there we go. 500 kilogram coming in. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so like it would suck if you were collecting an army and then suddenly that army doesn't exist anymore. Um, that would absolutely suck. Like I feel for the Harlequins players who um, basically Harlequins yeah. stopped being an army. We've got a Hulk over here. Yeah. Ah, no pain. Yeah, but you know what? They're they're all our players. They so are all our players. That's that's true. Um, but then at the same time, I guess the flip side to that argument is that you can't buy. You know, products have a lifespan, and if they're not going to refresh the range, then, you know, you can't expect them to keep models from 1998 alive forever. It's not... Shit, I died. It's not financially viable for them to do it. Um, and if the popularity isn't there for them to re-sculpt them, then... There's a Hulk right above you there, Jangles. I'll see yep. if I can land on him. Come on, come on! Ow. Fuck. And he's just going to roll me over. <laughs> oh, okay. That was easy. Someone, yeah, someone loosened I, it I for me. Because <laughs> I shot him in the face. Oh, okay. On my screen, it looked like I landed, popped him in the back once, and he died. Right, where's my shield? <laughs> I'm helping. I'm helping. I'm always helping. There's also a quasar if you want it. Um, I. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. Um, no, not really, because it's it's uh, fully rechargeable. Okay. And if you shoot, uh, if you. Sh it can one hit the um, what you call them uh, drop ships. Okay. Drop okay. ships. If you shoot, if you shoot them in the um, what's the word for it? Uh, engine. Okay. Uh, we have just so you know, we have 21 minutes left. Do we want to avoid these two um, nests on the, the right and just go? Uh, true. I guess we do have to deal with the jammer. Um, Lucius the Eternal says, "What legion are you backing?" I assume you're referring to Space Marine legions, and if so, Salamanders. I have a Salamanders army. Are you aware of the best? Vulcan quote of all time? Probably not. Go on. It's um, a hammer, brother. <laughs> That's the one, but uh, the context is, you know, uh, what, you was know the, what was the quote, sorry? What was the quote? It's a hammer, brother, but oh, the okay. context for it is. Um, so in the Horus Heresy thing, uh, Vulcan's got himself trapped in a labyrinth from uh, by Conrad, who's been torturing him for a while. Yeah, Conrad Kurz is the Primark of the Night Lords who kept, like, he tortured him for, like, a stupid amount of time, but Vulcan kept coming back because yeah. he can't die, I think, or something? Yeah, he's a perpetual. Okay. Oh, uh, that's a, that's... Called, but, um, yep. So... Shit. During this time, um, he, uh, he manages to actually get to his hammer, and Conrad's all like, ha-ha, I knew your hammer had a teleport homer in it, and I'm jamming it, idiot. Like, you really think I'd let you get away? And he just goes, well, that may be true, brother. You're forgetting one thing. It's still a hammer and proceeds to beat the shit out of him with it. That is excellent. Like, I'm like, you know what? Fair point, Vulcan, fair point. The hammers in, um, I mean, there's various varieties. Shit, shit, fucking run. Uh, various <laughs> varieties in um, 40K, but the one of the most iconic is the Grey Knight's Thunder Hammer. Um, and when 10th edition came out, they basically binned it completely. You currently, it, you, you have close combat weapon. You, and the fact that you've kitted out some of your guys with hammers and halberds and spears and whatever and swords. They just have close combat weapon. And um, as someone who owns a part of an army of Grey Knights, it's pretty, pretty annoying. Gets rid of a lot of the fluff. Right, how close are we oh, yeah. to dealing with this jammer? 
I there is a shit ton of things at this jammer. I have no idea why. Oh, I just got rocket barraged. Okay, uh, we can't reinforce you. Shall I go back and reinforce him, Tank, or should we try and take it on our own? Uh, take it on our own. Okay. Yeah, and then reinforce him yeah, here. Yeah, just rush it. Okay, okay. You gotta get in there and uh, deactivate it, then you can call me in. Yeah, okay. So if we die now while we're going for the stratagem jammer, it will spawn all of us here? Pretty much, yeah. It spawns you near your uh, death location. Okay, so good. So I can't see how it would get around that. Okay. Well... Oh, if I had the spear. The spe Wait, the spear can destroy jammers? Yes. Uh, no, it can't destroy jammers, but it can destroy... Um... You're since this is attached... How, how do you destroy these things again? Oh, you've got it, you've got it. You're looking. Ah, pain! Call me in, boys. Right, I got you. Uh... Nope. <laughs> Thanks, got me. Okay, well, I don't have my shield generator. Also, we got this thing here. I don't know what that is. That's probably for disabling it. Anyway, we got 18 minutes. We need to head to the primary, I think. That we do. Uh, let's see. Where's my stuff, first and foremost? Nope, my stuff's on the other side. And that, that, is a, that is a patrol. Okay, um... It's towering time. You know what? Uh, I'll probably just forget my auto cannon and stick with the quasar and shield. Scum oh, is... oh, nice, nice, nice. Lovely. Um, Scum right. says, I love the Night Lord's law. A ADB? I I'm not sure who that is. Aaron, 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 Aaron Dansky Brown. Okay. Did a wonderful um, novel trilogy on them, made them into my favorite traitor legion, even when Perturabo outclasses Comrade by a mile. Um, I know those names, I don't know the story. Oh, uh, that. Whoever said Petarabo's better, he is the most inconsistent character in 40k, and I will fight you on that. <laughs> no, he's not inconsistent, he's just, he's always been consistent. He's a little bitch. <laughs> no, he's, he's a, inconsistently a little bitch. Like, oh. he is a different character every book. <laughs> yeah, because they, they can't write, uh, and also, Aaron Densky Brown is... Isn't it Bowden? Gonna, uh, Bowden? Yeah, he, he's a... I fucking hate him. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be just completely honest with you. He's probably um, one of the worst ri uh, worst writers in, uh, in Black I will, Library. I will disagree and agree all at the same time. To give you context random, he is absolutely amazing at writing chaos characters. Yeah. Like, he doesn't make them, like, er, er, yeah, bad run, guy. Run, 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 run. Uh, but he is abysmal at writing loyalists. He is just awful. Yeah, he he writes the, uh, the what you call them. Um, oh, there's a, there's a hole coming at us. Oh, shit, okay. He basically writes, like, the uh, custodies as being, like, mentally retarded. Okay. Unironically. Because I, I know that with the custodies, they kind of, they, the law kind of kept flip-flopping on them. Like, there's references in early lore of the custodies being, like, on par with space marines, whereas now they're, like, you know, the most elite of the elite space marines. Oh, no, they were, they were always supposed to be better than the space marines. Like, they're but like essentially... Barely, I mean, like, the, originally, as far as I was aware, they were, like, you know, a couple of space marines could probably take one out, whereas that's not the case anymore. No, yeah. in the in the original in the original lore, the custodies were supposed to be almost baby, baby um, baby primarchs. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, just quickly. Oh fucking hell! That's a drop. Um, yeah. Grenades, baby grenades. I completely missed this when this came in. So, uh, Zach, sorry. Um, oh, there's so another one. Okay. Zach sent in a third super chat, which I'll read in a minute once we've dealt with this. Yeah. There's a hole. There's there a hole. Shield. Yeah, there I'm we taking go. Care of him. Oh. Okay. Okay. I just got nerfed. Nope. Never mind. I'm not taking care of him. I got an auto cannon dropping. Hopefully that can deal with him. Get him. Get him. Shoot him in the back. 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 Yep. 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 Nice, 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 there nice, nice. Um, ooh. Holy shit. 
Okay, hold on. I'm calling in the big. I'm calling in the big guns. Right. So Zach's other super chat said. Lastly, this is relating to uh, Fallout. Their character assassinated a dog. Character traits are randomly handed out and then forgot. And there was a good plot line that they utterly destroyed. Um, the bit that I'm most curious about there is how do you character assassinate a dog? That is an interesting thing. Uh, and, oh wait, no. What's the name of? Is it meat? Meat something? Dog meat. Dog meat. Yeah. I was about to say like meat pie or meatball or something. I guess it depends on the the era of the Fallout and when exactly, or if they. No, no he's he's always been dog meat. It's it's dog meat in every game. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it's okay. kind of like a running joke, I guess. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Dog meat destroyer of worlds. <laughs> fair enough. Oh no, because the, the meme started, he was one of the best characters in the first game, I think. And he could, like, fight robots to death, and you're like, how? <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. is this thing almost done? Um, doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence regarding Fallout, but again, I've kind of heard mixed things anyway, so I'll check it out and see what I think after I finish watching Shogun. Well, okay, well, here's the, here's the interesting question, though, uh, random. Will it be good disregarding Fallout, like, uh, on its own merits, is the question. That's how I'd be judging it, because I have played Fallout 3, yeah, but it was years ago. Um, yes, hold up, there's a, uh, there's a turret right there. Oh, don't worry. Okay, okay, okay. Don't worry, Fallout 3 shadow over the lore already, apparently. Yeah, Fallout 3, uh, Fallout 3 broke, uh, broke Fallout lore. Also because they have to keep, um, advancing the age. It, it's it's really weird because it's like it's 200 years after for example Fallout 4 happens 200 years after the west coast is a is essentially a relatively thriving uh community now but the east coast is hampered because everyone is incredibly dumb and retarded okay um Let's see. Well, yeah, that that will be an interesting watch then, because my only un knowledge of Fallout is Fallout 3. I've seen bits of Fallout 4, but I wasn't really paying attention. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I have no idea kind of what they're prioritizing in terms of lore accuracy, if they are even doing that. Uh, as for which Fallout games are they kind of, you know, taking their beats from. Um, oh, we got a... I missed. I didn't. Uh, we have 11 minutes. I think we need to go straight to the straight to the primary. You want to just run? Oh, yeah. God, yeah. We really don't have fucking time to fuck Oh, that's a Hulk. Hulky boy, Hulky boy. Well, I hit him, but wasn't enough to take him down. Lucius, Magnus is an anime waifu uwu. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Magnus Magnus is a good boy, but he did everything wrong. No, Magnus, Magnus did nothing wrong. Right. There's, a, there's a patrol yes, over there, avoid him. So yes, because the emperor, told, the emperor told him to do nothing, and he did nothing wrong. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair enough. Ironically, yes. I, I actually like the theory for... Uh, Brandon, we're going the wrong way, by the way. Uh, I'm going, going kind of up and round, because I don't want to go through that base, but yeah. Hopefully we don't aggro yeah. more. We need to do, we need to take out that base. We need to. strategic rolling. It's not it's not next to our objectives though. We can just avoid it, right? It's next to the uh, evac though. That's fine. Well, I mean, we only have ten minutes. Are you sure? All right. Okay. Well, I uh, think call me in and. Okay. Okay. Oh, you got him. Okay. You got five left. All right. How about this? Uh... Just for a big old fuck you to them. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that. Oh, fuck off. How much do we need to do when we acquire the data? Is it just run in, grab a hard drive, and leave? Run in, boot a hard drive, uh, so you have to... a second or Okay. Two, then... If you have to wait, then I think we probably need to go there. I was gonna say one person stay behind at the evac, but probably a bad idea. <laughs> Lucius says, at every turn, the Emperor's raging autism sent Magnus further out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you know the Emperor has a name now, right? He, uh, he does? Yes, yes he does. Yeah. Mm. 
Is this from the, oh, the final book? book? What do you think his name is? Uh, 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 well, see, now I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of meme names, like when Horus Heresy <laughs> finally said, "Like I am now the forty thousand, the Warhammer forty thousand, or whatever it is." Um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. It's uh, Neoth. Neoth. Ne Neoth. N I O F. I don't even like know. Neoth. Sounds like a fucking like noise, like some kind of farm animal would make. Also, the entire Horus Heresy is now a uh, women moment. It is. Yes, it's all his wife's fault. <laughs> Unironically, Wait, Dan's workshop made it all a woman's fault. The emperor had a wife. Yeah, yes, Doctor um, Astartes. No, not what was her name? Nyada. Doctor, yeah, uh, Doctor Astartes, and that's whom the uh, the Astartes pro project is now named after. Okay. So did this um, okay, did this yeah. come out in like the most recent? Because the the end and the death part three came out fairly recently. Did they bring all this out then? No, it's been happening over the past like three four years. Okay. Literally, she had a woman moment, and she's the one that's the fault of sending the Primarchs through the warp because uh, they had a parental dispute. Oh right, okay. So literally everything is her fault. <laughs> And it's just like, well, I was trying to save my kids from a horrible upbringing, and it's like, bitch, you sent an anger on the world. Two hulks, two hulks, two hulks. Uh, it's, I think it's, a, it's amazing. Yeah, it's literally amazing. Use the drill, get the thing. Ah. Oh god, that's a tank, that's a tank! There's a tank dropping on us! I'm dropping a 500 kilogram. I think that's another hulk. Can you, wait, can you destroy the... the the drill, the prospecting drill, or not? Yes! I love the smell of it! Oh, shit, there I go. Oh god, that's three of them. Um, okay, 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 okay. Don't worry, Bleeders is on our way. Bleeders is on his way? Bleeders is on his way. Okay. Uh, no, okay, shit. Well, the drill um, is doing its thing. Wait! I died, I though. Say, Tank, where are you? Tank, can you call us in? Yeah. We'll grab my shit and leave. We need to- I think we need to interact with the thingy and there's three hulks down there. Oh no, yeah, you're right. We need to- Yeah. Hold on, I'll call it- I'll call on a barrage. Yep, 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 yep. Can't get away from there, I'm about to glass that fucking place. There he comes. Is that a bleeders? I think that's a bleeders. That's a bleeders. Oh shit! Oh fucking Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Okay, um, bleeders. When I die, um, if you... Oh my God! Ow! Fucking hell! This is intense. Helping. All right, boys. I'm gonna get down there and clear Do a sample. Go go go! Oh my god. <laughs> my fucking legs! <laughs> oh, do I even try that? I think that's a bad idea. Um, oh yeah, don't. I just tried that and I broke my goddamn face. Lieutenant <laughs> <laughs> Dane, no. Oh wait, the Hulk's harmless. The Hulk's harmless. He's harmless. Oh, okay. Harmless and harmless. Okay, well that's good. I mean, he can still stomp on me. Wait, no, he's got an arm! <laughs> he has an arm? Why would you lie to me like this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Beep, beep, boop. Okay, we've got it. Get to the evac now. Fucking run. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, um, bleeders, if you get a sec, jump in one of the Discord channels, and when I die, I'll add you to the private channel. Fuck you, die. There we go. Oh my run. god. I think bleeders may have saved us there. A little bit. Extra firepower always helps. Also, have you got a, another, um, oh no, you don't. Okay. Oh, you do. Call in another, uh, backpack. Uh, me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him. Got yeah, him. Yeah, got you. Him. Yep. Alright, this is a turret haven right here, actually. If we put them at these uh, points right here. Yeah, um, yep. also call it in right away because uh, back. Uh, we have... It's um, delayed. Fuck. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yes, anyone who didn't know, um, there is a Discord server that we use. Um, anyone who wants to join, feel free. The link is in, if it's not in this video, this stream description, it is in the description of any of my videos, so yeah.
Oh, here they come. And it's only three minutes. That's not too bad, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna help bleeders hold the wall. Is that a, is that a tank? I think that's a tank. There's a there's a tank and a hole. Okay. okay, that's fine. Oh, yeah. A gun's down 50%. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I think we're doing okay. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, there's a lot of them still, but... Well... We're thinning them out. No, I don't have another shield. We only have three lives left. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're fine. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I see Tank go flying backwards. Well, I think after this, unless you want to try the third mission, uh, which I think is point defense, which I'm against bots, fuck that. But we can try it. Yeah. If you want. No, or, I'd or we do rather bugs. just... Ah. On the plus side, though, um, what was it? The personal orders was kill 400 bots? I think we've done that. Yeah, we got one minute. Like one minute, yep. Yeah. I'd be surprised if we haven't done that, at least. Ah! Yeah! Ah. Anything big and neasty? Neasty? Yeah, there's a hole. I got That's a hot. minute on my uh, 500 kilogram. Okay, well, we'll be evap by then. I got another cannon coming up. Okay. We got more. Uh, these guys There's are just... a lot of rocket troopers. There's a bunch of guys down here who just have stopped moving. Nice shot. By the way, blow them up just as they drop their load. Five seconds. Yeah. Lads, time to back up the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go. We have a lot of samples. I mean, if we don't, then it's a bit late now. <laughs> okay, go, go, gadget. Leaders! Leaders, run! I, I assume he can hear us. <laughs> I assume he has the stream open. Although he'll be hearing us oh. a little bit delayed. Right. I'm gonna go to the uh, toilet right. quickly, and then I will um, add leaders to the call. Back in one sec. Sounds good. I'm Black open Marine. up the stream chat. Yeah. Okay. Black Marines, Alpha Legionnaires, Ultramarines. So, okay, um... Uh, the thing about, like, Black Marines, I actually don't really have a problem with, because... The Ultramarines have such a massive pool of recruits, because they are an empire of 500 worlds, so that doesn't bother me as much. The Black Marines thing when it comes to the Salamanders is that they are coal black. They are not black. They are literally like burnt offerings. Well, okay, well, here's the thing is Lucius is right reading the chat right now. The mm. Gene Seed does change the physical appearance of a Space Marine. However, um, there is some, a bit of divulgence in that and like, so we can use it as an example of like Russ is blonde, right? Some of yep. his sons actually do have uh, red hair, though. In some cases, it doesn't completely overwrite it. And back in the old lore, Space Marines would change color depending on the planet they were on because yep. their skin would adapt like almost instantly. Yeah. Some very but, like, yeah. I, I, I agree with the idea that like, yeah, there can be black Space Marines or any ethnicity in any group. Yeah. Um, it depends, kind of thing like that. Like the gene seed can overwrite it. 
Yeah, because like I remember specifically that there was a, um, it was in the White Scar book. Uh, yeah, they, Tor they specifically Tormagen, I I think if uh, I remember correctly, Tormagen, and he was always described as having blonde hair, because he was from uh, the, he was pale and from uh, essentially Era. Scandinavia. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I again, I don't actually have much of a problem with that. Well, like, uh, it, again, it's a whole, like, it just depends on the aspirant. Sometimes it takes, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes your appearance will change, sometimes it won't that much. Like, uh, an example being the, the White Scars gene seed. Uh, white Scars, the... Uh, their uh, their gene seed tends to change a lot, and they tend to hire from like Asian ethnic kind of like areas. They even make a reference to it in the uh, Horus Heresy book about them. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yes, with the Alpha Legion, yes, because they they are specifically uh, <laughs> because they try and look as much as uh, uh, as much as um, Alpharius or Omegron as possible. I do agree with you that yeah, there is a. Uh, a, ver a vast difference. However, I was talking about the Ultramarines, specifically. I can st I can buy it absolutely, just based off what we just said, and the Ultima Segmentum is like, what, 500 planets? Yeah. So, like, yeah, I but can yeah, buy that. Yes, um, Lucius, uh, my mistake there, Lucius, you were specifically talking about the Alpha Legion. So, yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, so guys, do we want to do another... Also, uh, welcome, Bleeders. Your mic is off. Um, entirely up to you if you would like to switch it on. Uh, if you're eating or whatever, then yeah, up to you. But yeah, Bleeders is here, and he helped us. So now we're alive to mission another day. Um, we want to do bugs next, right? We don't want to do another um, area defense against against bots, do we? Yeah, I, 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 I detest the area defense. So I am just on for the ride. Okay, so how much of a ball ache is Ion Storms? Uh, they um, just stop your stratagems. Oh, and your um, and your okay. math. Uh, uh, right. Okay. Well, because right now uh, we've got a we've got uh, Crimsica is being defend is is tagged for defense. So if we go for that, we can, I guess, progress the the global order thing. Yeah. But the planet has Ion Storms. So we can do it. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Um, right. Any? Pro oh, let's just click on this one. What do we got? So we've got eradicate swarm, retrieve personnel, launch ICBM. So those are two short missiles. Two short missiles. Two short missions, and a missile mission that is not short. Does that does that work for you guys? What's a two? Oh, evac. Oh no, no. Ew. You, you don't. You don't. You don't want to do evac. <laughs> I don't. Okay, what's another one? Um, oh, wait, is there, is it, oh, there's defensive thing for this? The uh, bugs do yeah. have a defensive. Evacuate high value assets. Initiate off planet evac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's yeah, it. That's one. Oh, okay, right. So, yeah, I think I think someone earlier in chat mentioned that. So, because this planet is under attack, those mission types exist. So, yes. would well, you want to give that a go, like, now, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. we can do that. Okay. I, I, have you done I really one? Want to scale this Bleeders, have you done one of these before? The the against oh, bugs? Not against bugs, no. Okay, well that's why I'm excited. Yeah, I'm kind of ex excited for this as well because, um, in particular, charges against against that map unless they change the map, it, it might might be pain. Um, someone get the minister of battle music ready. Yep. <laughs> um. Also, welcome Era Tun. Didn't know you streamed recently. Finished part one of your arcane coverage admirable work. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed and. Yeah, I stream every now and then. Um, yeah, if you uh, if you stick around, I hope you enjoy the stream. Uh, we're probably all about to die horribly, but we'll we'll see. It depends on whether they have balanced this mission type for uh, dealing with bugs. Because against they bots, really have them. well, against bots, this mission type is pretty easy. And uh, I, someone said uh, a couple of days ago, I think that if they if they don't up the spawn rate on bugs, it'll just be absurdly easy. So they may have gone the other way and made it absurdly hard. We will have to find out. To answer Lucius in the chat, uh, probably my favorite book of all time for, like, uh, 
Warhammer 40k in general is uh, Storm of Iron, which is a uh, uh, Iron Warriors novel. It's absolutely superb. Couldn't nope. put it down. Um, my favorite would probably be the Caiaphas Kane series. Okay, is it Caiaphas or Caiaphas? Caiaphas. Okay. Anyone that tells you different should be beaten to death with a, uh... <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with the Omnibus. I have, I have two of them sitting beside me. <laughs> Polo t-shirt, welcome. Oh, oh. Um, and yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Thank you. Let's see, what are we, what are we... You, what well, you gotta go, you gotta do what I'm doing and just go all turrets, right? This is... It, 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 mortars... Mortar turrets against... Oh, shit, I have the wrong turret. Uh, we want the mortar turret instead of the missile turret. Because, yeah, mortars against bugs in particular is going to be oppressive. Yep. I'm also running uh, auto cannon. Excellent. What I'm bringing in the MS. Uh, Wes Smith says, what main are you running? Oh. I assume you mean gun um, at the moment, the slugger, just because I don't... I have no idea how good these are. I just go for the one that feels good to me. Um... And I usually go a turret heavy build with a shotgun, because I like it. Because it's accurate enough with the scope to where you can hit people that are reasonably reasonably far away. And you can also, you know, precision the bots in the head kind of thing. Um, it's not just a spray and pray shotgun, even though it kind of also is that. Oh, uh, that funny ass moment when Oh shit! So random. Down. I don't know if you know this, yeah. uh, but my mum watched one of your videos. Oh god! And, okay. Uh, no, it, it, it's funny. She's like, "Oh, I, I think this is really cool. There's there's a lot of little details I didn't notice. This makes me appreciate Bill." I'm like, "Oh, that's cute, mum." And she's like, "Oh, you uh, you're streaming with that guy?" And it's just like, "Oh, go spread democracy." And I'm like, "She has no idea what that means, but that's <laughs> fucking adorable." <laughs> Why are we outside the base? I don't know. We've, we've got to get in. Where, where yeah, is the because entrance? For so, because for some reason... This might go hard. If we can't get in in time, we got 43 seconds. You're oh, fine. Well, You're fine. Well, I, you say that, I don't know where the entrance is. The entrance is right here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We should be alright then, hopefully. This is basically the same map to the uh, bot version, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think they all are. They're just randomly generated for the planet kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so this one just blew up. What? What? What did? <laughs> I closed it and it exploded. Oh, the door <laughs> exploded. Okay. Well then, why don't we? Why don't we go over here? Because if that, if we can't close that door anymore, we can just leave this one open and or keep it closed, I guess. Ah, oh, right. Um, right. Bug breach detected! They're coming. Drums in the dark. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna have a time of my life on this thing. Uh, bleeders, there's a turret dropping on you, so just be careful. Tank, you're outside the perimeter. I can't wait to see how random... I can't wait to see how fucking Random's turret blows my head off in five seconds. I, I would love to see that. Although, hopefully, is the turret alive? Yes, it is. Good, right. Okay. Ongolo Bongolo, thank you for the kind words, and uh, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed my videos. I want to just, uh, just watch my back. Where are you? Yeah, I got you. I got your back. You're it's outside. Right oh, you're over there. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, killing... Well, see, Deimos, you're quite right. Tank does say you're fine, even if you're not, but... Ow! What the fuck happened there? Bleeders! You're fine, you're fine. <laughs> Tank, it tells me that I'm dead on my screen. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Well, I'm fine. I, that that Helldiver wasn't fine. The one that's about to spawn might be fine. I'm not sure how Bleeders just killed me, but... Water sentry, I guess. Uh, there wasn't a bug on Ironic. me, though. The bugs were there. If it was aiming for that bug and it hit me here, then... Your mortar needs to have his eyes oh. tested. See, we're fine. I think, Rand I think Random might be a spy. Possibly. I also, um, question, because when you're playing this mission against bots, 
they can't jump up the wall over here. Are there some bugs that potentially can, such as a Bile Titan? I have no that's idea. Good. Because if they can, Wait, that's, that's gonna... I mean, unless Bile Titans can't spawn on this map, I guess we'll have to find out. Yeah, I think they I, they may not be able to, because then they could probably just step over the... Uh... Yeah, but that'd be the fun of it. it. Well, not if... Because the thing is, if they can jump over that wall, then that puts them right next to the objective. Which means yeah, that that'd you be would, fun, dude. Well, it would mean that you would have no choice but to defend on the objective, which means that all of this out here is kind of pointless. So I would guess that that's not the case, but maybe. You probably just have to have one or two, like one person. Yeah, I need someone to watch my way. back. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know I, got, I got your back. Well, Tank, there are things coming behind you. Um, can't do anything about them, but they're there. <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> There's two breaches uh, behind you, Tank, as well. I got your back, Tank. Just keep shooting those other I'm ones. Having, I'm having the time of my life here. By the way... I've killed so many people. Can we... Um, they're not people, Tank. That's the first problem. You can't think of them like people. Oh, there is a ball thing. Oh my god, okay, right. <laughs> uh, fucking hell. Um, um, good you shall receive... All right, well, here he comes. I okay. really like this more than the bots for this type of mission. Yeah, this is just Starship Troopers incarnate, this mission. Um, do you know if... Is it possible for us to accidentally destroy the gates, like if you drop a, uh, an airstrike yes. on one of them? You can. Yes. Okay. I don't have anything um, to do with that Titan. I think, I think oh, he's... Yeah, I he's, think he's, he's I think we got the special Titan. Oh, good. <laughs> This Titan's on the short bus, boys. <laughs> right. No, Gatling turret. Why are you shooting him? You can't do anything to him. No, close the gate. What are we doing? Yeah, we're turret. fine. We're fine. Turret. Line the sides. Build the ship things. No, tank. Tank is out there um, by choice. We don't have to let him back in. Tank is being a man and actually fighting. <laughs> Um, Mohammed, I do know, um, the Spiffing Brit, and, well, not personally, but I do watch his videos, and uh -oh. Spiffing Brit is fantastic. Um, his, uh, videos in particular on Skyrim are always a winner, and, what's the other one? Civ 6, I think it is? And, uh, you know, things like City Skylines, yeah, Spiffing Brit is fantastic. Um, yeah, I love it. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Right. <laughs> I just got burned. Super chat from KD. Uh, found you through the Arcane Analysis. Keep up the great work. Can't wait for part two, part three, and season two. Thank you so much for the super chat. And yeah, um, I've said before that if Arcane season one was not as good as it is, I would be really worried about season two. Um, whereas I think that given what they did with season one, they could absolutely pull off a season two that's as good as, if not better. Um, and I think that it will be apparent in probably the first 10 minutes of episode one if they've yeah. completely fucked things up. Um, I don't think that's we'll have to wait. That's despair. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, that's kind of a good thing in a way. We don't have to wait until episode five or six to know if they've completely fucked it up. Um, I think it will be apparent very, very quickly because of how season one ends. Um, also, um, Era Tun says, I like Tank. He makes me feel like it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I see. I kind of want to see a meme of that in um, in the Discord meme channel. <laughs> just, it's fine. Just tank tank saying that something's fine when it absolutely is not. <laughs> just like sloppily edit our thing on of just like us getting murdered in the background and tank being like, "It's fine." <laughs> <laughs> You're fine, you're fine. So, uh, Lucius uh, says, Arcane might have been so good because it flew under the radar for a while. Arcane being good might attract corporate attention to cock it up. Usually, I would probably agree with you. Um, the fact that it's Riot means... I, I mean, you could absolutely still be right, but I would guess that you're not. Um, because Riot... Um, they basically have treated Arcane like an advert for League of Legends. That's it's kind of the same reason why they did the heavy metal albums. Uh oh no! Oh no! Oh no! 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 Um, hold on, I got you. You're fine. Well, he's not. He's kind of hanging off the edge. <laughs> I'm not fine. hanging off the edge anymore. Okay. <laughs> the turrets are rushing us. Um. 
Yeah, so like given how successful season one was, I think that uh, Riot are smart enough to, I hope that Riot are smart enough to kind of back off and just let the animators and the writers do their thing. Um, but you could be wrong. Uh, so, sorry, you could be right. It could be that they they want to micromanage it even more and then they end up ruining a good thing. I hope that that's not the case and I would probably bet that that's not the case, but yeah, we'll, I, yeah. Here, random, I have a gift for you. I have a gift for you. Hold on, hold on, let me drop my turrets. <laughs> Who? Oh, uh oh, oh, okay, uh oh. Well, one of them is gonna survive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's annoying, okay. Well, I was gonna thank you, but uh, the thought was there. Yeah, so F uh, Felix makes a good point. Riot and Fortiche have a long-standing relationship. I think they're going to trust them to do their thing. Um, yes. Yeah, that is that is a that is a very good point. Oh. Fortiche uh. has been doing amazing work for them for a long time now. Yes. And they've been adding story to a game that, like, was all story based on text. Yeah. Like, uh, shockingly enough, they're, they're uh, Yasuo... Uh, one, a character I fucking hate, and I was like, hey, this is actually a not bad, like, little thing for introducing Yone and giving Yasuo a bit more meat to his story. Is, did they do that in the form of an animation or something when Yone was released? Yes. Because I didn't see it if they did. Yes, they did. Okay. Uh, five minute, I think it's a five minute animation, and it's also the prologue to uh, Rune King, the uh, RPG game. Okay, I, I don't know that. It's like how it's like how Yasuo and Ari end up in. Uh, how did you die? Again. Yeah, how did you die over there? Or Molotovs? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, they're glitched, aren't they? Well, no. They're glitched under the fucking hill, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Uh, what? What are the, bugs? Are the, the bugs are the bugs are coming through the. the no, 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 like, you know where the automatons were getting stuck before? Yeah, yeah, they were kind of on top of the thing, yeah. Yeah, they're getting stuck down there again. Okay. Yeah, I can hear them all dying. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, they really need to clean up the AI to, like, follow a path through the gates or something. Um, so, yeah, Irritan, you're, you're, you're pretty... I'll avoid spoilers and everyone in chat and on stream, please avoid spoilers for the end of Arcane because I know that there are some people in chat who haven't yet seen the last few episodes. Um, yeah. Irritan says, I expect some plot armor at the beginning of season two, but otherwise expect to maintain quality. And yeah, I won't elaborate on that, but I completely agree. That is how they could very easily fuck things up. You're going to ask a question, chat? Just keep it vague. Yeah, if you want to... Yeah. If you want to if you want to ask a question about the sort of the end of Arcane, then don't specify you know, character names. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll be able to figure it out between the four of us. Yeah. Ow! Pain! <laughs> Damn it. What were you trying to do? Not be over the edge? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go stand over here now. You... You'll be fine. Well, fine. I'll be fine if I stand over here next to Jangles, although saying that, he's he's standing right next to me. No, I wouldn't I do that I will drop a 500 kilogram on you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have no qualms about this. Um, right, where is it? So Textile says, Random, what is your opinion about the thing that happens before the thing, before the thing? I hope I was vague enough. I absolutely love that moment. <laughs> it's my favorite moment in Arcane, like, bar none. Um, and Katie says, who is the best written character in Act 3, if that's something I can ask? So I won't elaborate, but I will give you my opinion, because I'm, I have started my work on, uh, on Act 3, but I'm only about two-thirds of the way through Episode 7, so I haven't properly gone in depth on the, the episode, episodes 8 and 9. From having just watched the show in a non-analytical sense four or five times, I think, um, I would say Silco. Um, whether that will turn out to be the case, I don't know. Um, and I'm not... I'm, yeah, because, I mean, Silco is probably my favorite character, but whether he deserves the honor of being the best written character in Act 3, I... I, I, I'm not sure I want to answer that question until I until I put the video out, but it, it is something that I will answer in the video. I'll, I'll probably stick the characters on an approximate tier list when I do it. Um, Era says... It's a sorry, go on, go on, go on. It's a tough race, honestly. It's a really tough race. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, in, in chat, we've got Victor. Two votes for Victor. 
Um, another one that I would absolutely put up there would be... Um, Oh, that's the thing is it's not really fair to say no I'm not going to say that because that would be a spoiler but there's another character I well, would put up there but I'm not going to uh, a, a certain mother um, again I haven't got to her yet I remember really liking her I'll have to see how she fits in I really like um, yeah. was it Selko? Selko? Yeah, Selko? Sil yeah. Sil Silco is yeah he's fantastic yeah he's probably my favorite um Brandon, why don't you put up a, a poll for chat or something? Because this would be an interesting I, thing to engage on. I, so I can, but the problem with YouTube polls is that you can only have four options. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Where is Arcane streaming, oh. Wes Smith? Arcane is a Netflix property, so you will be able to get it on Netflix. So why don't you put up a, a poll of your four, like, top four favorite characters and then see what they... Well, that's the thing, is that me picking my favorite yeah. character is a lot easier than me picking my favorite four, because... Um... Not strategy, Mr. Jam. Because, um... The, the bar is so high in Arcane oh. that it would be easier to pick the characters that are not top tier. Uh, by the way, we have an Ion Storm and no more, uh... Yeah. Yeah, no turrets. Shit, yeah, you're oh, right, we're out of borders. Okay. Look at look at all that look at all those bug bodies. That gives me a chub. Chubba wubba. Hey, hold on. Ah! That's boost me too. Yay! Oh my god, you stayed up there, okay. Alright, well you can go back over there now. Democracy wins again, boys! <laughs> These yeah. are some really well-designed gates. Okay, well that was... If anything, I think that's probably a bit under-tuned, same, uh, same as the bot mission. Yeah. Well, they keep, they keep getting stuck under the goddamn helipad. Jared says Silco or Jace. So, yeah, that's a fair point. So, I love Jace in Act 2. I think in Act 1 he is almost too simple, but it's it's necessary for what happens to him. It's the contrast um, that makes it so good, essentially. And in Act 3, that basically continues. Now, why are you going to do me like that? <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, so, I wanted to pose this question to, um, I mean, specifically Tank, but I guess chat as well, and Jangles of Leaders, if, you, if you've read Lord of the Rings. Um, is I was uh, I've started writing a little bit on plot armor, and I'm comparing you know examples of blatant plot armor in other properties with things that might appear to be plot armor, but I don't think they are um, because it's a relevant discussion for Arcane because I haven't yet talked about the plot armor in Arcane, which is definitely a problem. I and um, the example that I kind of got to of something that I don't think is plot armor is the um, in the Fellowship of the Ring, Frodo getting stabbed by the cave troll and then he literally reveals that he's essentially wearing plot armor um and the reason for that is because it was set up previously but the question that i would have is does the mithril shirt have any other magical property um that would mean that you could withstand being stabbed by a creature that fucking big no okay so the so mithril is supposed to be very is very very strong very very light um and it, in the book specifically and i'm using the book for uh when frodo is actually stabbed by the sample collection um by the orc chieftain it's actually mentioned that while he uh, he actually has no like actual damage done to, or you know no uh, stab wound he actually is very bruised so he, so he doesn't not... get stabbed by the troll i take it in the in the book then no, in the book, um, in the book, he's stabbed by um, he's stabbed by a uh, a goblin chieftain wielding a spear. Ah, uh, okay, because I can see why they made that change in the film. But if anything, I think I probably would have preferred because I I love the cave troll sequence. I think it's fantastic. But oh, the cave troll sequence is amazing, and actually, one of the things I would actually say is better than the book. The bridge is yours. However. Okay. But, I mean, like, just going from what you just said, because I didn't realize that that was the case, the, the difference. Um, 
I'm just imagining the cave troll sequence now, but where it doesn't at any point focus on Frodo, because Frodo isn't going to be taking part in combat in any meaningful way. And then they finish the cave troll, they 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 win the fight, or whatever, and then they yep. realize that Frodo is 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 down because he's just been stabbed by an orc, and then you have the reveal of the um of the Mithril. Right. That could also work really well, but um yeah, I mean the the it, it's creative license that the filmmakers took because they wanted the Frodo to specifically get stabbed by the troll. When, I mean, essentially, the, the the question becomes: If you wear mithril, could you survive getting run over by an eighteen wheeler? Like, no, um, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> no, it's a uh, it's chain, quote unquote chain or uh, chain because chainmail is actually not a real thing. But chain was actually very good against slashing and piercing weapons. Yeah, um, most armor like most armor was. What most armor was not good at was preventing you from being crushed. Yeah, so a hammer, a <laughs> well, hammer would be really good against that. Well, yeah, I'll I mean, say hence, hence the invention of war hammers and other yeah. piercing weapons, because it yeah. doesn't matter how well armored it is if your skull gets fractured from the impact. Mm. Yeah, because um, then that kind of made me think: um, if you essentially, if you eject the book, which I have to because I haven't read it, and you just take what we know about the Mithril shirt going from um, Fellowship of the Ring. Um, is it reasonable to assume that it has some kind of other magical property that might mean that it's able to deflect damage or prevent Frodo from just being turned into Bolognese? Um, and, I mean, it's it's kind of an open question because we the evidence that supports that is the fact that he did survive getting stabbed by the troll. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the main reason why I don't consider that to be plot armor is because it was set up previously, whereas had it not been set up previously, and then you just straight up have the reveal that, oh, he's fine because Bilbo gave him this thing earlier off screen. That, I think, would absolutely be plot armor. I think that would just be a cheap yeah. reveal, and that would be the writers manipulating the audience. Um, in, yeah, in, in, the, in the world, myth, all Mithril is, is very, is just very light and incredibly strong. Well, see, um, I, I heard that it was made from, like, something that you mined that had, like, bits of Silmaril in it when it was combined with, you know, Balrog's evil and, you know, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Yes, yeah, it's, it's made with Balrog goo. Yeah, Balrog goo, and I forget the name of the elven warrior, if they even name him in Rings of Power, but yeah. Uh, Glorfindel. <laughs> well, I, I, they, don't, they definitely don't name him as Glorfindel in Rings of Power, but it, it yeah. Yeah. It could be that that's who they're referring to. Yeah. Oh, that just makes me so mad. Well, yeah. I would say I would say it's it's easily a uh, a contention of the movie to be like, okay, in the movie's world, it does this thing, considering how rare it is, and Frodo is the only character to have it. I, kind of thing. That's and what then, I figured, yeah. But here's the problem: How does Sheila stab through Frodo? That yeah so, yeah. <laughs> oh, watch it. There's shrieker. There's a shrieker nest. There's a shrieker nest. Okay, we want to do that it, first, then. Oh, you got it. You got it. Nice. Yeah, so in, in the book, um, at that time, um, Frodo gives uh, Sam his uh, Mithril shirt because the ring is actually so heavy, it's making him uncomfortable. Okay. But is... Uh, so it, Because the Mithril is supposed to be really light, though, so is it that okay. it isn't light anymore yeah. because of the ring or something? No, because the ring is so heavy, and he's just trying to get rid of everything that... Uh, I just went flying. Um, he's yeah, trying to get rid of everything. What are you doing, Jake? <laughs> oh, Titan, Titan! Oh, where, 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 where? Okay, is it aggroed? Yep. Yes. That's a yes. Okay. I got him, I got him, I got okay. him. Stop, don't waste it, don't waste it. He's dead now for sure. Oh, uh, no he's not. He lives. Okay, he, he lives. is just ripping through it. There we go. Game lives. Um... Yeah, so this this popped up in a discussion on Discord that I saw a bit of. Um, is to me going off what we get in the film, Frodo getting stabbed through the like by Shelob through the Mithril shirt is an error. Yeah, um, it is, and it's a concession that essentially they made because they wanted to have certain scenes, and there are ways that you can head cannon it and be like, well, maybe because he was kind of like rolling around, the Mithril shirt was kind of bundled up, and Shelob got under it or something. But I think that that's very implausible. We got a penis rock here. Oh, you got the, you got it. Nice. Um, Let's head towards this. Th this one. 
200 meters. Well, the, who's T2? Tank T, or... T, T is tank. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, me and Tank can take care of this uh, main objective right here. Okay, yep. well, me, me and Bleeders are heading to you anyway. Um, yeah, so... Do, the thing is, because uh, from going from what the guys in Discord were saying earlier, um, Frodo getting, like, stabbed and, and, like, paralyzed by Shelob does not happen on screen, quote-unquote, even uh, like, obviously in the book, because that scene is from Sam's perspective, and he finds Frodo after he has already been incapacitated. Is that correct, Tank? Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, if, if I may remember correctly, yeah. Okay. So, um, and again, it's just kind of making me think, if you were going to tweak Return of the King, you can remove the scene where Frodo escapes, and then Shelob kind of climbs over top of him and surprises him by stabbing him, and then you have Sam arrive and find Frodo exactly the same as how you do in the in, in the theatrical and extended cut of Return of the King. Yeah. Um and that is the reveal that, oh, well, Shelob has incapacitated him. Because then you're not asking the question, where did she stab him? And how did she stab him through the mithril? Um, you are presented with a character that has been stabbed by the spider's stinger. And, like, you know, you don't, you're not then presented with something that couldn't have happened. And you can just kind of fill in the blanks. Like, maybe he was stabbed in the leg. Maybe he was stabbed in the neck. Um, there are any number of ways that it could have happened. But because of the way that yeah. they wanted to frame that scene... Um, it doesn't really make sense. Um, well, yeah. Couldn't we fix it by um, doing the same thing we did with the troll, though, and having the force of it just knock him out and then have Sheila web him up as she normally does? Oh, so uh, suggesting that it wasn't Shelob's poison that, that got him, it was the it was the force it, of the blow? It was definitely the poison, because we see him spit it up, like he foams yeah. at the mouth and everything. But what we could do is we could edit it slightly where it wins him again, and by that time, she loves already kind of webbed him up. And then you get the, like, let him go scene kind of thing as well, right? Yeah, so the problem, potentially if you were to re-edit the movie, but I'm not sure I'd want to do it in that way, because the effectiveness, of the, one of my favorite scenes from Return of the King is the scene where Sam is holding Frodo, thinking that he's dead. And, yes. excuse me, if Frodo was no. simply Bile Titan, if Frodo was simply a bile titan. Um, <clears throat> if Frodo was simply unconscious, I don't think it would have the same impact because the audience um, doesn't know, unless they've read the book, that Frodo isn't dead at that point. No. Um, well, in the, in, the, in the book, he does think that, uh, that um, Frodo is dead. Okay. Could we, yeah, could we still pass that off from the perspective of the audience, though, if the poison wasn't a thing. Yeah. Could we still make them believe that he's, uh, he's dead? There's a Titan over there. Oh, he's not. Okay, the okay, okay. Um, it depends, because it, it, given the way that the scene, unless you were to rewrite the scene, um, I think possibly not, because the reason why that happens is because Frodo is... Act, you know, he's there, lifeless, with his eyes open. He's not asleep. He's dead, as which is literally the line of yeah, the film. Um, yeah, and it's not, it's not a case of him just being unconscious or being um, incapacitated for some other reason. It, it's not like he's paralyzed. Well, no, I mean, he is, he is obviously paralyzed. But as far as Sam's aware, he looks exactly like he would look if he was dead. Um, yeah. Sam doesn't know about um, Shelob's. Uh, Stinger. Anatomy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the only way that he learns it, and the way that the audience learns it, is when the orc says um, that Frodo's not dead and that he's been jabbed with the stinger because she likes to eat her prey alive. Um, Makes him stiff as a bone fish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, could you not? <clears throat> Sorry, could you not just suppose that the tip of the stinger is small enough to get through, get through a the chainmail? That's. Possible would, because there are holes in chainmail, but I find that a little bit hard to accept because of how big Shelob is. This isn't like a little spider that's bitten him in the hole. This is a giant monster spider with a big, big stinger that you see. Like maybe the end is is small enough, but it's you know Shelob is huge. Um, I mean, yeah. sure, but if it's too big, then surely if she stabbed someone with it, they'd probably just bleed to death. Um. Yeah, but he's wait. That they would bleed to death. You mean, you mean if she stabbed her? Shit. Yeah, she's right. Go on, go on. Sorry, go on. If the, if the tip of the stinger was, like, particularly huge, then she would just gouge a giant hole in whoever she stung, right? 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so... It would have to be fairly small at some point. The very I'm, end... I'm gonna... I'm gonna assume the tip would be fairly fine. Yeah, the very end of it has got to be small enough to be able to function as a needle. Um, how big it actually is, we don't know. And whether it's small enough to go through chainmail, it's essentially chainmail, we don't know. Um, but that's... Yeah, when you phrase it like that, I do see your point, and I guess that is possible. Um, unless you go down the path of saying, well, Mithril has pain. Mithril has some other property that means that it's irresistant to damage, which is kind of implied by what happens with the cave troll. Oh, uh, I got a uh, charger over here. Okay, yeah, I'm dealing with one now still. Oh, no, no, the, be, uh, me and bleeders. Yeah. For if they were going to be like, oh, it's... She just, like, she just snuck a little tip straight through the chainmail there. Like, I think I'd probably want to see her try it a couple of times and miss. Um, well, yeah, that could work, but then you would have to change the, the way that the scene plays okay, out. Okay, turn to your, uh... <laughs> I'm, I'm, speaking, I'm speaking primarily from a, a viewpoint uh, turn, of... Yeah, you're done, done. We don't get a, uh, we don't get a, like, film a new scene. We just have to edit the movie kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think we want to lose that scene where, like, she's creepily following him and it's super quiet. Like, that is such a good, like... It's a really good scene, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, just this fucking, like, 20-foot spider, like, just super quietly stalking him from above. It's like, <laughs> like you just yeah, you uh, cringe in your skin. I think that they thought that scene was, and that scene is fantastic, but, like, I think that they thought that that scene was so good that it essentially justified the era yeah, of the mithril. And... The it would be interesting to know because I, I I have seen like all the commentaries and I can't remember off the top of my head though were they aware of that because that's an easy thing to miss but then given how detailed they are in like every other area you would think that they would notice something like that because that it that is an error born of changing the source material and in virtually every other instance when they make changes to the source material they're like painfully aware of it. Um, they, they know what the ramifications are of changing... Um, is it Glorfindel, or is it another elf in the book that runs uh, um, Frodo to Rivendell? It's Glorfindel. It is Glorfindel, yeah. So they are very aware of the ramifications of, of getting rid of him and giving his his um, role to Arwen. Um, and their reasoning for doing it, like with, whether you agree with it or not, they had a very clear reason for wanting to do it. Um, oh, absolutely. Whereas I don't think that that necessarily applies to the the um, error, I guess, of having Shelob stab through the mithril vest, which is not present in the book because that occurs, quote unquote, off screen. Um, I think it's a lot more likely that they missed that than that they missed some of the other stuff. But yeah, um, oh. there's, there's there really aren't that many problems in um, in the Lord of the Rings films as a whole, and I would guess that most of them stem from little things like that, where they wanted to make small changes for cinematic purposes, um, which then accidentally or intentionally and justifiably lead to um, small errors and inconsistencies that were not in the book. Yeah. The main issues with Lord of the Rings, I find, is generally combat-related. Like, uh, there, there are a few very questionable action scenes. Yeah. Kind of thing. I think we were talking about it the other day. Yeah. With, uh, like, Aragorn jumping into the spears while they're all upright. Uh, the general elf charge in Helm's Deep. And you could fix that so easily. Imagine they had the shot. Like, you know the shot where uh, the Urukais get hit but the first volley when they go through the breach? Yep, yep. Do that again, but the second time they have a, a shield wall. Like they've gotten to a formation and they're pushing in. Do they and have Aragorn's shields like, though? I, I, as far as I was they, aware, they. Oh no, some of them do have shields. Yeah, you're absolutely do. right. Yeah. So like, have them be prepared and be like, oh, okay, now we go for the breach with the shield formation, because yeah. the Rooks are smart. And then Aragorn be like, fuck, like we have to charge and we have to stem the bleeding yeah, if they if they yeah. get too much of a foothold. Yeah, because I'm will be overwhelmed. I'm trying to remember exactly how it goes down in the film because it is vague-ish in terms of the composition of the Urukai army. Because you, the guys at the front, I think you straight up see that they're pike, that they have pikes. Um, yes. Which um, is actually an interesting detail. I, I hadn't thought about this before. Is why would you take pikes to assault a castle? 
Um, but then at the same time, Rohan are known as, you know, they are the horsemen. They they presumably yeah. would figure that they're going to have to deal with some horses at some point, hence running the pikemen yes. in first. So, so it doesn't end up going down like that, but I think them preparing for that does make sense. Yeah. So in the, in the book, um, specifically, Gandalf actually, uh, so originally they were going to go and fight at the Fords of Aizen. They were going to um, fight the Uruks, not in Helm's Deep, you uh, yeah, and it was actually Gandalf who then advised um, advised Theoden uh, to uh, make his stand at Helm's uh, at Helm's Deep. In Interesting opinion. change. Okay, because that uh, I mean that couldn't happen in the film because Gandalf exactly. isn't there. Exactly. So yeah, that would uh, we got stuff and things right here and no turrets to save me. Tank, I'm running right, to you because I, I, we got no map at the moment. That's fine. Yeah, because um, aside from the pikes, you've also oh. got the um, a, a whole bunch of them have crossbows, which you see towards the front. And then when you actually see them getting into melee when they when they climb the ladders, as far as I'm aware from memory, all of the the guys that you see climb the ladders and fight on the ramparts. I got stalkers over here. I got stalkers over here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. They just have swords. Oh, they don't have shields as well. Nope, they just have swords. And the only ones that have shields in the fight are the ones that go up the uh, the ca uh, the cavalry. Yeah, yeah, they do the because um, they're the ones that the formation. To Testudo? The is that what that is, or is that something else? A Testudo, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but that don't mention those crossbows to me though, because that creates a whole other scenario of plot armor. Uh, what the Uruk crossbows? Yeah. Uh, right, How the fuck what about... isn't Gimli dead? How the fuck isn't Gimli dead? Uh, specifically when? When he's on top of the uh, wall hitting the two ladders in that funny moment. He's a prime target and he's getting in the way of two ladders. Um, I can't remember the exact shot that you're referring to, but could you not say... Are you saying that the guys on the ground 20, should have shot Gimli? 21, 22, and then it goes over to the causeway. Okay, okay. When he's... Hmm. Yeah, the um, and he's standing right on top of the wall, and he's a prime target. I mean, Gimli on the wall is shown to be like shorter than the. I'm trying to remember now. It would have been I, I would have learned this from a shad video. Is it crenellations? Are those the bits that kind of I'm getting gang Crenellations. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. The but um. He's standing on top of them. Oh, if he's standing on top of them, then yeah, fair enough. So the, yeah. the okay so. Kind of in defense of that. I need help, please. Hitting anything with a crossbow is actually incredibly difficult, especially when you got big guys, or, uh, you know, the, um... Fuck, 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 fuck. Oh. Yeah, he is a small target, it's up from an angle, and you also have other guys shooting at you. So... Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so especially, like, if he's getting up jumping down uh, if he's getting up and he just hits like one two you know maybe three or four of them that is i would argue actually completely fine because you're going to be dealing uh because you're going to be trying to deal with other issues <laughs> yeah I think, like not well, being shot by the uh by the elves that moment well, is i think more defensible than uh the bit that we mentioned just now when when um him and aragorn jump onto the um bridge in front of the door and again, I, I actually, love, I love that moment. I love it, but you got to ask, like, why didn't the Uruks, like, how how are they alive? Why didn't the ones stab them when they came up and grabbed them? Yeah, it's, I don't know. I wouldn't it, things like that. I would not hold as like a serious criticism because again, it's it's minutia Ooh. in a larger combat. I, sense. I don't, I don't know. Um, That's a big one where where they're turned around talking to Theoden, and the one comes up and headlocks the both of them. That's a big fuck up. If okay. you ask me. Okay. I'd, I'd have to rewatch the scene. I mean, I, potentially, if I ever do a video on the Lord of the Rings, then that is things that I will that I will mention. Oh, and to speak to the fence of that crossbow thing earlier that you were talking about, tank. The problem is, is that in the in the film, we literally see the Uruks purposely get up as close as they can to the wall, and the crossbowmen are hiding amongst the regulars, yeah. and they shoot up at the elves to kill them. Yeah, the, uh, but again, the problem, the problem is still the same. Yeah. It's, the yeah. it's gonna be the an problem. easy target. They're right underneath them. 
that is not an easy target. That's actually a very difficult target. I'd be standing on top of the wall, so it makes it easy. <laughs> uh, okay, it and, uh, um, to, to put this kind of in perspective, um, go up to a uh, go up to a building and take a rock and try and hit something that's up there. I think it, that's a pretty big misnomer compared to something you point and shoot versus throwing. I mean, the question would surely be whether... I, again, I cannot remember the scene. If he is, excuse me, standing on top of the matriculations or if he is standing behind them on the ramparts. No, he's standing on top of them. He's absolutely standing on top. Okay, because without seeing the scene, um, I would instinctively want to agree with Jangles. Um, That's yeah. I'll but, see if I can get a screenshot after this. Yeah. So like, yeah. I, I do find this conversation interesting, even yeah. if I am wrong. Because oh I, shit, I, sorry. I genuinely... Jangles, you. What the fuck? My no. man killed you. <laughs> <laughs> My cherry you killed you. This is why we don't stand on top of walls. This is why. No, no, there's a charger. Revenge. Oh god. Uh, please tell me that you actually got some use out of the mech, and I didn't just kill it as soon as you spawned it. No, no, it was about like. Oh, oh hello. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have a Titan. There's oh my a, god. There's a friend. There's friend shape. Uh, what, what is our objective anyway? I've been so engrossed in the conversation, uh, we, I totally not we've, we've pretty much done a bunch of it. We've got a secondary nearby, and then we've got to get to the um, evacuation section. Um, how? What is the time limit on the evac? Like, how long does it usually take for getting the citizens out? Two minutes. We have to run them for two minutes. Sorry, I, I'm not talking about us getting out. I'm talking about how long do we have to get the civilians out when we get there, over there. Oh, uh, depends uh, on how long you want to cooperate. Okay, so, well, so I guess the next question is how much time do we want to allocate? Because we've got secondaries down here that we can do. I think all we have left is the uh, skate pod. Because I, I got the stalker nest. Okay, well that makes things easy. And then we've got that there and that there that we can get to pretty easily from the uh, yeah. evac. Not the evac, the primary. Yeah, I'll, I'll do with the stalker, um, not the stalker nest, the uh, escape pod. Cool. Yeah, no, but this is, uh, again, this is one of those things where it's like, uh, Lord of the Rings is a great series, but it is not flawless, everybody. Like, uh, there are issues in Lord of the Rings, oh, for of course. sure. Yeah, there's, there's issues all over the place. Yeah, but they are still like nine out of ten movies. They are oh. they are a great example of how to do things right and just being like uh, even li just because your film has little problems doesn't stop it from being fucking amazing. For me, Lord of the Rings is a ten out of ten because I don't treat um, I don't I know ten out of ten implies perfection, um, but I don't treat a ten out of ten as literally flawless because like that does if, if that's the case nothing's a 10 out of 10 so why reduce the scale by one um and i would compare it to other films that i would also give like a 10 out of 10 versus things like a nine so i mean yeah you know th there are flaws in every movie that i would give a 10 out of 10 um and like would it would it theoretically be possible to fix those flaws yeah which means that theoretically a perfect film does exist uh, you know what? Next time you're uh, with the EFAT boys, uh, talk to Mahler on that one, because I think he does believe there are one or two perfect movies. What, 12 Angry Men? I, I forget if that was brought up in conversation. Prestige, I think, is his. I think. Wow, okay. I That's interesting, because I know that he loves The Prestige, but The Prestige is a complex movie. Um, I'm not sure that I would be confident enough calling something like The Prestige... Perfect. I think that unless is his I, favorite movie, though. I, no, like, I, I, mean, I know that it's. Yeah, I know it's his favorite movie. Um, what I mean is that it's. I think it's a lot harder to be confident that the Prestige is perfect than it is to be confident that something like Twelve Angry Men or Alien is perfect. Um, just because the the ba the bar of complexity is so much higher. Um, but if he does know that movie inside out, and he says it's perfect, then yeah, fair enough. Um, oh, okay, well, there we go. Prestige that's fucking sucks. Why I, <laughs> that's, that's why I kind of think it'd be an interesting conversation to hear between you two in that oh, term. Shit. Because, like, I, I don't know that movie well enough to confidently say that either. Uh, well, but I think yeah. it would be interesting to be like, is it possible? Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I love the prestige, um, and I can't 
think of any problems off the top of my head with it. Um, but again, a, a film, the odds of a film that complex being perfect are, are lower than a film that is simpler being perfect. But then it's kind I, of, it's, sorry, go, go, go on, Tank, go oh, for it. Well, oh, uh, no, 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 I was quoting um, Lucius. He's saying oh. that uh, the prestige uh, sucks. And I need a uh, hand here, I got a double door. Oh, okay, uh, oh, yeah. perfect. Okay. I'm going to call in a resupply as well because I need it. Um, yeah, it's a different... Um, it, it's an interesting conversation because you can go for, like, what is the closest to being perfect? And the closest to being perfect would be something that is very simple, like Alien or um, well, like 12 Angry Men, something like that. Um, but then, in a simple story, you're potentially limiting yourself in terms of how much you might like certain scenes. Um, so, for example, a lot of the scenes in... A lot of the best scenes in um, The Prestige are entirely reliant on the complexity that kind of sets it up. Um, mm. So, I guess part of the way that you would have to grade films like that is, it, it. I think it to some degree is largely subjective because you have to judge how, um, how much it was trying to do and to what degree it succeeded in doing it. So, like, something like The Prestige, something like Memento, um, being as complex as they are and still pulling it off is way more impressive to me than something like 12 Angry Men, for example. Even though... What the fuck noise was that? I'm stuck here. What was that? Uh, <laughs> Has bleeders been taken by the bots? What the fuck was that? Uh, <laughs> He's muted his mic. I'm going to go hit this nest if anybody, if uh, you guys want to go work with the uh, on the civilians. Yeah, yeah, okay. The bleeder, bleeder stopped moving. I think the bugs got him. Has, has he actually stopped moving? Yeah, yeah he, stopped, he moving. stopped moving. Well, there's a bile titan heading his way, so hopefully he starts moving again. Um, oh, God. Uh, oh, Evie says, is what other films do you consider no. 10 out of 10? Um... I I mean, I have a, a list, and these, these aren't films that I think are perfect. Again, these are just my favorite films. you got, obviously, Lord of the Rings, T2, Aliens, and Alien. Um, American History X, Fight Club. Um, Heat, Schindler's List. Usual Suspects. How about uh, Gangs of New York? Gangs of New York, I think, is overrated, but I do like it. Oh, okay. Interesting. I love Gangs of New York. Yeah, there's a lot to like yeah, in Gangs of New York, but I don't think it's anywhere near Scorsese's best movie. I love The Magnificent Seven, the new one. I have not actually seen that. The, the one with Ethan, again, a, Ethan Hawke. Yeah, but then again, I'm a sucker for, um, for westerns. No, to be fair, um, uh, I... I don't really have a 10 out of 10 because I do I do kind of think of it in the way of like, all right, if there is perfection kind of thing like that, I, I am one of those guys that's like, uh, I'm not sure I can accurately say there's a movie that good. Yeah. So I tend to go away from that kind of thing. Just because I feel like the 10 out of 10 moniker too, it just, it's got too much weight behind it kind of thing like that. Like it's too much like, oh, you think it's perfect as soon as you say it kind of thing. Especially when, um, like, well, news outlets reviewers, like, for example, IGN, they give things a 10 out of 10, and it's just like, wow, what are you just devaluing what that means? <laughs> Sorry, that was my Gatling gun! <laughs> bad! That was, that was bad, boy. Yeah, can't wait to see how the civilians handle that turret. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have put him there, but, um, anyway, let's just grab your samples. I had one. Uh, Gladiator is excellent. Um, I wouldn't Absolutely. personally give it a 10 out of 10. I could completely understand someone saying it was their favorite movie of all time. Um, oh, Galaxy shit. Galaxy Quest is also fantastic, but a film like that is never going to be... Um, it's I'm never going to rank it as high as certain other things, because I, I guess just because of the kind of film that it is. But in terms of what it was trying to do... I mean, it's it's essentially a 10 out of 10 in that department. Like, it, it did exactly what it wanted to do, and it's one of the best examples of that kind of movie. Um, Prince of Egypt. Again, I rewatched that fairly recently, having not seen it since I was a kid. Prince of Egypt is one of my favorite animations. Um, fuck! Fuck, fuck, fuck! We're good. We're good. You're We're good. fine. You're We're fine. Good. But, Someone help! <laughs> um, 
yeah, Prince of Egypt is fantastic, but I don't think it's perfect. I think there are um, potential problems with it, and potentially that's a video I might make, because a lot of it has to do with how you consider the adaptation argument when you're dealing with a religious text, and how essentially faith in, in I mean, I'm just going to straight up call it the supernatural, how that is implemented as part of the story, because the perspective of the Prince of Egypt, I'll give you the short version now, the perspective of the Prince of Egypt film is that God is real, and that obviously is the perspective of Moses. Um, the problem is... Um, no, you mean the Prince of you're not the, oh, you're Prince of Egypt, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and... Uh, no, that was just a corpse, we're okay. Oh, you we've only shot got, me. We've, sorry, we've only got three civilians out, we need to get more out. And, um, yeah, no, the, you got four. No, we've only had three of them have got out. So. Yeah, but it says four. What do you mean there's four? It says three out of twenty. Yeah, it, says it says four out of twenty on mine. Oh, mine's telling me three. Yeah. Okay, I must have killed one. Um, <laughs> yeah, and basically one of the problems that I have with Prince of Egypt, which is a minor problem, because it's more of a missed opportunity than anything else, is that they don't really delve into Moses' crisis of faith, because he's been raised to believe in the various um, Egyptian gods, which are... Um, depicted by the film unambiguously as being the wrong ones. Um, and, um, but, but, you also see in the, um, the musical number playing with the big boys now, where he basically out superpowers the, um, the, the priests. They, like, call on the power <laughs> of Ra, and then Moses calls on the power of Christian God and, like, outdoes them. His, his staff turns into a snake and it eats their snake staffs and it's the, the implication like the, what that scene means is very obvious it's my god is better than yours which essentially yes. means that the egyptian gods do exist because the the priests are capable of straight up magic um so, uh, and then um, but then moses is able to outdo them with his magic because his god is more powerful and i don't think that the the bible's version of god would do that because his whole thing was like i'm not going to prove to you my power like there's i swear there's multiple uh, stories in the in in the bible about um you know don't be tempted by satan to like have to prove your faith kind of thing whereas that's exactly so, what happens in that scene so so that so okay so to kind of put a uh, correction on that that is the new testament moses and the hebrews are the old testament and Old Testament God is um, much different. <laughs> yeah, he's um, well. I've, I've seen him referred to as the unholy genocidal sadist. Um, well, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, basically, the movie kind of goes like uh, fucking Tad Christian God versus Virgin Egyptian God. Well, essentially, yeah. which is fine if you want to do that, because obviously that's the perspective that the film has. Um, yeah. The bit that I think was a missed opportunity is that it does not really delve into Moses' crisis of faith in that regard, because he sees the burning bush, the burning bush says, hey, I'm God, in, you know, in a Morgan Freeman voice, um, and then he's just like, okay, you're God. Um, and I think that there's a lot of development that they could have done there, but they decided not to yeah. do. Yeah. Also, um, I will say that one of the other things that the uh the two priests in uh that moses is competing against um they're actually using more trickery and uh Boys, we got lights. Uh, okay, oh, okay and there's a uh well let's not do the last nest then you want to just go for the evac yeah okay they're also using more trickery trickery science um chemicals that's what the film wants you to think but then we straight up see yeah. them turn their staves into snakes if you look at what happens, they actually when they hit their stay, uh, staves, there's blinding flashes of light, and because you see the um, uh, specifically when they're like turning the uh, the river into blood, you yeah. see how they're like adding chemicals and all that. So it's very much uh, it's very much implied that they're using uh, they're using sleight of hand. Okay, I'd need to rewatch the scene because if that's the case, if that's like a plausible reading of the scene, then yeah. I would I would withdraw my criticism of that um yeah because essentially um, that would recontextualize it as being um god is wheel sorry moses is wielding the power of god and he basically uses it to make the priests look like weak idiots because they are not true believers yes in your in uh the ten commandments the original it is um it is very much uh it is very much shown that 
uh, the uh, that the priests can actually use magic, and they they turn their staves into uh, into snakes. And it is a very much, um, and the uh, the plagues are supposed to be a rejection or uh, a way of showing how weak the uh, the Egyptian gods actually are. Yeah, because they can't do anything to stop it. Yes. Um, yeah, which that that brings me to another point, which again I don't really know how I would articulate it if I was going to do a video on the Prince of Egypt, is because. Essentially, God's actions there, if you take the story literally, those actions are evil. Um, which is which is my opinion, and I'd have to be argued down from it. Um, so how acceptable is it that Moses, as the protagonist of, um, of the Prince of Egypt, still continues to worship, believe in, and accept, and wield the power of this God that is a murderous bastard? Because the film is not interested in that level of moral reflection. Um, but I, as, as far as I'm aware, neither is, neither is the Bible when it talks about Moses. So, so yeah, that's where the whole adaptation thing comes in. And I think that it gets particularly complex when you're dealing with religious material. But in, like, in spite of all of that, Prince of Egypt is like an A-tier film. It is incredibly good. Yeah. Totally. I still, I, that was like one of my first Nightmare Fuel yeah. as a kid with the, the scene with the alligators on the wall. Yes, yeah, where it shows that like the Pharaoh like fed all the, the, Jew, the Jewish baby, sorry, the Hebrew babies to the, um, to the yeah. alligators, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, holy fuck! <laughs> yeah, there's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, how to put it? Ow, 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 ow. I'm hey. fine, I'm fine. Okay. We're fine. Yeah, you'll be alright, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. fine. The first fine. commandment from the Book of Tank, you'll be fine. There are no other commandments, you'll be fine. I think that was like the first movie that made Damn me it. go like, Oh my god, I can die? <laughs> like, well, holy shit! Yeah. It, it possibly may have been the same for me, because how old are you, Jangles, if you don't mind me asking? 29. Okay, yeah, you're slightly younger than me then, so because I'm 32. Um, yeah, for uh, me, you're all I, well, for me in that scene, in that film, it was the um, the final plague, the death of the firstborn. That was the how, one. Where how it was did like, you die? I, it was impact. Impact killed me. I don't know. It was it was God. He's angry with what I'm saying. Yeah. Do my knees can pick up your samples? <laughs> right. Well, if we got them, we got we can get in our evac now. Okay. Welcome, yeah. Nick. Hello. And, um, Anton, I have not watched Avatar The Last Airbender. Have you guys? Yes. Yes. Because it's typically referenced as, like, incredibly good. It's just not something that has ever appealed to me, so I've never watched it. Um, I might at some point, but yeah. I highly recommend it. Um. Because it's not very long, is it? Right? Overrated, but still good. Okay. Yeah. And, and um... Oh, there was another question I wanted bleeders, to... Bleeders, are you okay? Yeah, Bleeders, are you alive, or did you get, like, assimilated <laughs> yeah, yeah, or something? Um, I'm good. What? Okay, okay. he's what? good. <laughs> okay, I won't ask, I won't ask what happened. <laughs> and he started speaking in binary. Yeah, he said, hey guys, can we, go into, the now. can we go into a bot mission? He says, bleep bloop. <laughs> bleep bloop. Um, oh, right. oh, that was a good sample run. That was, oh, yes. Yeah. Um... Yeah. The question I was going to ask is from... I'm not going to pronounce your name properly. Balaz Hodossi. Uh, Random, do you have any guilty pleasure movies? Obviously flawed slash bad, but that you clearly like. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to run for the washroom. Yeah, go for it. Um, so... Not really, because I, I... Maybe it's because I don't particularly like the term guilty pleasure. Um, there are plenty of films that I know are bad that I enjoy, if that's... Um, what you mean um i would say well actually no I, th I think i've said this before pacific rim i think is underrated i think pacific rim is not a bad film that is enjoyable i think pacific rim is a good film that has moments of badness um really i, I would say so yeah I, I really like pacific rim yeah um but again there are definitely problems with that film 
Um, Lord Wai, who says that's the definition of guilty pleasure? Uh, if that's the case, then fair enough. I don't know. Because um, to me, a guilty pleasure implies that you feel like you shouldn't like it. Hence, guilty. Um, but yeah. Um, God, well, while we're waiting for Tank, I'll open my IMDb and see if I can give you guys any other names of films. Um, do you have any that you can think of off the top of your head, Jangles? For what? Uh, for like guilty pleasure movies that you really like, but you oh. know that they're not good. Batman and Robin. Oh, <laughs> well, okay, yeah. Easy. I, I know I, that's a Mauler. I know it's a Mauler favorite to say, blah blah blah. But like, he's right. Like, I I love that movie. Like, Mr. Mr. Freeze's Arnold is fucking hilarious, and I'd say Batman Returns is equally in that category. I rewatched both of those about two weeks ago. Um, I, I, oh, I they were so much fun to watch. <laughs> well, actually, no. Hold on. We've got we've got a, we've got a more recent one than that. Madam Web is is very enjoyable, Absolutely. essentially for the same reason. It is terrible. But it is so funny precisely because it's bad. But I I almost feel like that is a different category to um, a guilty pleasure movie. Because I have no desire to watch Madam Web again. Um, I hate sand. Yeah, so the, sp the, the Star Wars prequels, in particular the first one, because two I think is just straight up bad and it's not enjoyable. Um, Revenge of the Sith is an interesting one. I would say, yeah, probably Phantom Menace would be my... I could say that that's probably a guilty pleasure. Because it's obviously not a good film to me, but it, yes. it, it is very sporadically fun. Um, yeah, I, I'm just looking down my IMDb and I don't have any... Because all the films that I've rated really high are films that are really good. Um, I'd have to... Yeah. Lucius, don't you dare bring up the Ultramarines movie. That is hot fucking garbage. <laughs> Ultramarines movie? Sorry, was this an animation? Yes. Okay, I've not seen it. Not even guilty. Yeah, I get why you're called Lucius the Eternal now, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just holding Bleeder's hand. 300 Rise of an Empire I did not enjoy, but it was also ages ago that I saw it. Um, that was one of the most awkward movies ever to watch. Yeah. Um... What else have we got in chat? X-Men Origins Wolverine is a is a good one. I actually enjoyed Origins yep. Wolverine more than the Wolverine. Which is probably a very hot take, but I, I enjoyed it more. Um uh, I can barely remember Wolverine it, is the thing. That's a Japan one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the one they, there's a chase scene on a train, which is pretty cool, and he fights a robot samurai, which was like, alright, cool, but it it was taking itself way too seriously, I thought. Uh, Logan, I think, is fantastic. I rewatched it again like a week ago, and I think it's brilliant. Um, what else have we got? Um, Rescue is down under. Street I've definitely Fighter. seen, but I don't remember it. Street Fighter, I've not seen. Spy oh god, that's such a sad movie in a way. Uh, which one? Sorry. Street Fighter is kind of sad when you like hear the story behind it. The guy, I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy who played M Bison, he he took the role because his kids wanted to see him in it, and he had cancer, and he was just fucking dying on state on set. Oh, shit. And it, he that, gives a fucking hilarious performance, though, and this, it's like, that's adorable. He did that for his kids. This must have been quite a while ago. Street Fighter oh, 1990. Like the, the 80s. The Van Damme yeah, one. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Okay, that was 94. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is like, it? Who played? There's a character called Balrog. What the fuck? You don't know Street Fighter? Yeah. No, no, no. I don't, I don't know Street Fighter at all. Okay. Yeah, Balrog, Vega, and uh, Bison. They had their names actually all mixed up in the English version, and they got the names wrong for which character. Okay. Yeah, so I've just looked up this the guy that plays Bison. So, um, Raul Julia is the guy's name. He died in 1994, which means he died yeah. the, the same year that Street Fighter was released. So that, uh, I mean, yeah. that basically would have been his last role. Um, yeah, that, that is definitely... A bummer. But it's cool that he decided to do that. It kind of almost reminds me of like Chadwick Boseman just kind of doing um, Black Panther. He did like four films knowing that he was like fighting cancer. And didn't he just tell anybody. Basically didn't just tell anyone. Chad it out. Yeah. Um, uh, what was it? Lord Wahoo said a couple that I wanted to mention. Spider-Man 3, Pirates 3, and X-Men 3. So Spider-Man 3 I think is trash. Pirates 3 and X-Men 3, I think there is enough in them that I 
would be happy calling them a guilty pleasure. Um, but obviously to each their own. But yeah, Spider-Man 3, I, I can't handle that movie. <laughs> um, uh. Aragon, I've not seen. Um, Reign of Fire, I have oh. seen, and I remember liking it, but this wasn't for ages. Like, it, I, I saw it maybe, I don't know, 15 years ago. I, I do not remember it at all. Um, Tank, are you back? can take that as a no. Tank is not back. Well, I mean, if I can... Well, I guess he must be back. Uh, Tank, your mic's no, muted. No, yeah, I, there we go. Okay. Yeah, my mic was muted. <laughs> okay. I was, I've been trying oh. to talk for... Okay. It's fine. We're fine. Um, so NS says, Brawl in Cell Block 99. So I would not say that that's a guilty pleasure, but that's because I have a hard-on for S. Craig Zala, who directed that movie and wrote it. Um, I love all three of the movies of his that I've seen. I don't know if he's done another one that I'm unaware of, but... We're all in Soul Block 99, Dragged Across Concrete, and Bone Tomahawk, specifically Bone Tomahawk, I'd be like, this is an incredibly good movie. Um, they are oh, very- Bone Tomahawk, I can't watch. Yeah, it's yeah. it's one that sticks with you. There is a scene in Bone Tomahawk that just is like, okay. Um, yeah, um, don't watch it if you have a weak stomach. But yeah, those three movies I think are fantastic. I think they're very unlike most other movies that come out. Um, stylistically, they're very similar to each other. Uh, they have extremely strong characters, but genre-wise, they are completely different to each other. Um, Bone Tomahawk is basically a Western horror movie. Um, Dragged Across Concrete is... Um, I guess it's a crime... Crime drama, I guess? It's about two cops hunting down the bad guys, essentially. It's that kind of thing. Um, mm. And... Hold on, let me pick my strats. This is a um, civilian evac mission, by the way. Um, so, yep. obviously, we're going double mortar. <laughs> Yep. No, I wouldn't my, do that to you. Oh, my, I would say one of my favorite guilty pleasures is uh, Death Race. Jason Statham. With the Jason, oh, it's a Jason Good Statham call. movie. I've seen Good it, call. and I That's didn't like it, movie. but I don't remember it. Oh, hmm. dude, yeah, Pedro, Apocalypto is not so bad, it's good. Apocalypto is fantastic, I think. What? Uh, I'm trying to think of just other films that seem like that. I'm just trying to... Hacksaw Ridge is a guilty pleasure. Hacksaw Ridge is an amazing movie. Hacksaw Ridge is fantastic, yeah. And, and the fact yeah. that they actually, they, they had to dumb down what yeah. Desmond Daw, uh, Dawes De did because yeah. of like... Go now. Oh. Because there's a scene in the movie where he, well, no, saying that, I got two examples. So there's a scene in the movie where he basically bats a grenade back to the Japanese and it's like what the fuck like a ja like he's one of his buddies is getting grenaded and he kind of flies through the air and almost does like the hot fuzz thing but he like sort yeah. of bats, <laughs> bats the grenade back um, and it's like come on this is a bit of artistic license I figure because um, it's very dramatic but apparently that did happen and there were yeah. other things that he did that uh, they just didn't include in the film because they thought people would just not believe it um, well, but um uh, do you, you know, you were talking about Schindler's List. Yeah. And the the guy that uh, the the SS camp d director, uh, I'm they Harris. actually had to, yeah, they actually had to tone down like how evil he was because everything that he did was actually a hundred times worse. Jesus, because I mean, he's he's yeah. bad in Schindler's List. Yeah. But they actually toned him down. The bit in um. In Hacksaw Ridge, that kind of gets me. It's again, it's 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 a case of like doing things that don't really make a huge amount of sense or aren't possible in the name of escalating drama, which that kind of thing happens a lot in those kinds of movies because it's very effective on screen. Um, no. And it's the scene where the dude picks up a guy's dismembered torso. So, that, yeah, that that was very stupid. Yeah, so it's a it, um, people are not light. Um, and I, I get that this guy didn't have any arms or legs, but this was this was a torso, which is about 50% of someone's weight, which means that if you're talking like, I don't know, average weight of a, of a soldier um, with, I, I don't know what he's wearing or what the torso is wearing at this point, but you're talking, that is, that is weighing sort of 40 kilos. That's where it, weighing a good 40 kilos. Oh, um, easy. And the guy one arms it and basically runs it. You know, he uses it as like a as like a human shield as he runs while towards. Shooting. Yeah, well, so he's one arming his rifle or, or machine gun. I forget what it is, and he's it holding was a bar this rifle. Yeah. Okay, which is already twenty pounds unloaded. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. Could you could you fire that rifle one handed? I, I have no idea. I don't know. 
you could. I've done something like that. Okay, but, but not while holding 45 kilos in your other hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, th uh, it's, yeah, I don't um, know. 40 kilos in uh, freedom weight is about 80 burgers. Hey, wait, what? I don't know what that... Yeah, no, wait, hold on, yeah. what the fuck? Your burgers are a kilo? Or are you saying, like, is this, like, freedom's per minute kind of thing? Because <laughs> yeah. a kilo a kilo burger, like, an eight-ounce burger here is pretty... That, that's like a normal yeah, burger so, size, and that's less than a kilo. <laughs> no, no, so I was... A, pound, uh, um, a kilo is about two point something pounds. Two point two pounds. Okay. So, he's, you know, so 40 kilos equals, you know... That, that's what I was I was joking about. Right, okay, fair enough. God, I'm just wondering, I have eaten American burgers, or, well, sorry, you're not American. I've eaten American burgers, burgers. I haven't eaten Canadian burgers. To be They're completely the same. Yeah. Canadian burger, yeah, it's just like moose, it's just a slab of moose. <laughs> we're basically just a lamer America. Oh, someone oh, shot a, uh... Um, Evie says, have you seen the Speed Racer film from 2008, and would you consider that a guilty pleasure? I have not. Have you guys seen it? No. No. Is that the one with Will Ferrell in it, or am I thinking of something totally different? I have no idea if it's... What the fuck? You dead? My spine just shot out of my ass. Oh, well, I mean, that'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck happened there? That one was Lord Wahoo says the Speed Racer film was done by the Wachowskis. Okay, so that must have been nope. post Matrix and pre Cloud Atlas, I guess. Because Cloud Atlas was like 2010, I think. Unless they did something else in the meantime, I can't remember honestly. Nope. Yes, Band of Brothers is good. Band of Brothers, fantastic. Oh, we're, yep. killing, we're killing a lot of civilians. Shit. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well. What's that old saying about, I should have thought of that before they became peasants? Exactly. No, Band of Brothers is good. I've been really enjoying um, Masters of the Air recently. Still need to watch that, yeah. Um, Generation Kill. Yes, I Generation Kill. Recommend. Someone has finally seen that. What is that? I've never even heard of that. War in Afghan. Okay. Uh, Iraq. T TV show, or? Sure. Yeah. Oh, 2004, I want to say? Okay. There's a guy called Captain America in it. Fucking hilarious. Alright. Why do I have a rocket sentry? Why on earth did I bring the rocket sentry on this mission? Why'd you put the Gatling sentry right in the middle of the path of where they're running to? I didn't realize that was where they were running to, but, um... At the same time... I believe the phrase... I believe the phrase was, I like turrets, guys. Yeah, I do. I love turrets. I love them too. I don't love them when they're killing my civilians. <laughs> and they're costing me money. They're um, killing my taxpayer. Scum says, did any of us see the news True Detective season? I know... Um, I know that Silly Frog did. Silly Frog isn't here at the moment because he's in Japan. Um, on holiday. And he uh, basically explained it to me like it just goes off the deep end after like episode two. Oh, hello. Um, I've only seen season oh, one yeah. of True Detective and I thought it was great, but I also thought, right, that's it, we're done. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess it's an anthology series, which it's, it's kind of good in a way because it means that if season two, three or four shits the bed, it doesn't damage season one, whereas with like Game of Thrones being in continuity, it does. I'm actually, now that I think about it, uh, random, have you seen Blue-Eyed Samurai? No, people have mentioned that to me a few times. Uh, um, I dropped out at episode 5, but the first four episodes were pretty decent. Okay, is, uh, you think episode 5 is bad, or you just stopped watching for some reason? Yes. Okay. I thought episode 5 was awful, and it pissed me off. Okay. <laughs> what is Blue-Eyed Samurai on? Uh, Netflix or, or something else? Or? Netflix, I believe. Okay. Well, I'll add that to the list after I check out, um, after Shogun finishes and after I watch, um, <laughs> bruh, that, that other thing, okay. Fallout, if I, assuming I finish Fallout. Well, what do you call it, um, I'm, uh, more comes up more along the lines because it's a very similar animation style to, like, uh, Arcane and Puss in Boots. That's what I've heard, yes. Yeah, very beautiful show, but holy shit, uh, that, yeah, that fifth episode pissed me off, something fierce. Okay. 
Um, EB asks, uh, what is your opinion of the Matrix films? It's been a while. Um, I mean, the short version is that the first one is like masterpiece level. It's it, it obviously, again, not perfect, but it's fantastic. Second one is a lot of fun. And had the third one been on par with the second one, then I think I would look more kindly on the second one. But the, the, the problem is that the second one sets up a lot of stuff that the third one then completely borks. Which means that there's a lot of stuff in the second one that just doesn't go anywhere. Um, uh, are we extracting or are we just are we, standing around? I thought I thought we did oh. activate it. <laughs> right, no, the, we, we got bugs to kill. Uh, it's um, fine, it's fine. And, um, yeah, Matrix 3, again, has its moments. There are parts in the Matrix 3 that I genuinely really like, but there's a lot in it that I don't like. Um, mm. And maybe I'll do a video series on it at some point. That and Pirates of the Caribbean, I feel like I potentially would do a series on each trilogy, but... The, the amount of time that The Hobbit took me, that's a year of work. So I'd need to know that I was going to do it all the way through to the end before I started. Um, and then The Matrix, the fourth one, I can't even remember what it's called. That is... Resurrection? Hot, yeah, Resurrections or something. That one is hot garbage. It's awful. Don't watch it. <laughs> my buddy took me to that, and then he's just like, you became my therapy doll, basically. <laughs> Because I, had, I I don't know the Matrix at all. I saw the first one like years and years ago. There's but, a god uh, dog there if anyone wants it. You saying that though? Uh, could we say Matrix Two is a guilty pleasure? Um, I don't know because I feel like there are the, Ma the Matrix Two is better than a guilty pleasure. I think if you take it on its own, oh, okay. um, like the car chase in Matrix Two is one of the best car chases that is have ever put the film. I think it's fantastic. Um, some of the action scenes, some of the fight scenes specifically, are really really good. Um, no, bad guard dog. No, bad guard dog. Stop it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot. Basically, all of the plotting stuff in that film is not great, and especially once you have the context of the third film, it just kind of. Oh, hello. There's another. Uh... Uh, Chargey boy. Yes. Um. Best car chases in French Connection. All right, I'm going to throw this out here. Um, off the top of your head, guys, best car chase. Just name name a couple. Because this is an interesting question, I think, because you can have a really good char car chase in a really bad film. Uh, Baby Driver. Oh, that's out uh, there. Baby Driver, yeah. Yeah, that's the first one that comes to mind for me. Because uh, I can't... That's such a peculiar thing to think about. Um, dark... Oh, there's I a double time. Okay, hold on. Am I going to enter hot take territory if I say The Dark Knight isn't that great? I think The Dark Knight is um, great. I think it is very obviously flawed, though. Yeah, um, I think, from what I can remember, it's been a bit. That one had a pretty alright chase sequence in the Batmobile chasing Joker. Um, I'm not sure that I would call that a car chase. I mean, it's, it's definitely in the... Yeah, the, the bit in the tunnel where, where Joker's in the, um, the way he's been, he's in the armored car, that... It, it, that's. I think that whole section is all really good. I'm not sure I'd call that a car chase. Uh, but again, it's kind of how do you get to your definition? Same with the musical thing. Um, yeah, because I kind of think of it like Harvey's in the in the armored car. Joker's trying to kill him in the uh, it, truck. Yeah. Then Batman shows up and he's chasing down Joker in the armored truck. Yeah, um, and then he flips him over. I mean, one that always comes to mind is a Robert De Niro film called Ronin, which. I don't know if anyone here has seen, or if anyone in chat has seen, but that has one of the best car chases that I've ever seen. Oh. I think it has two, Luke actually. Mason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Luke Mason makes a good point. Terminator 2. Terminator 2, yeah. Oh, two, yeah, T2 definitely is up there. Um, Mad Max, I think, counts. They do it in yeah. sections. Mm, Fury Road? Yeah. That movie's shit, but... I really like that, Fury Road. That... Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, 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 I love it. I think it's great, but... Um, I, there are things define, in the film that I definitely will not defend, but I think that... Um, define great, though. Like, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by, like, you enjoy it, or you think it's, like, actually, like, a good, good movie? I think that the... The presentation, the stunt work, the editing, the filming, and, I guess, the choreography is some of the best that you will ever see. Um... We agreed. Yeah, I think mm. that the problems with that film are in the world building and the writing, but I'm not going to be able to give you any specifics because it has been a long time since I've seen it. Mm. Um, 
And the the thing is, I I feel like I give the film a bit more of a pass than some other people do in that regard, because I'm kind of of the view that those elements to the film are nowhere near as important as they are with a, I guess, plot-heavy film. Like, if we just say that the plot makes absolutely no sense, which I think is very, very harsh, I think that it definitely makes an amount of sense, um, that doesn't take away from the other parts of the film. But for me to properly mm -hmm. articulate that, I'd have to rewatch it. Um, We've done actually pretty good for uh, resources. Yep. Hell yeah, we have. News report, yeah. boys. Nice. We're milking the bugs dry. Um, news report. Yeah. Oh, news report. In a shocking development, a massive attack oh. on fleet has invaded Cyberstown and the surrounding systems. Oh, okay. Basically, it's just saying we fucked up. <laughs> oh, okay, that's I fine. Love the, I love the design of the ships. Like... In, in this, those look, yeah, those look actually really awesome. Yeah, it reminds me of the designs in XCOM. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would actually have to say again, this is again why I like Death Race so much. But one of the best car chases is in Death Race, where they're racing off against the uh, the guard's truck. That's like it's a oh, I remember that, armored. Yeah. yeah, it's it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, oh. I actually do have one thing I actually kind of want to address in chat really quick with the uh, Luke Mason. Uh, it's trying to be a uh, an action film and wildly succeeds with that. Yeah, but I, I want to put action films on a higher bar is my only issue. I don't think action films should just completely sacrifice the plot just to make things happen. Like that's mm. the problem with Fury Road is there's a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. Um, in that thing. Like Morton Joe is an absolute retard. So, and it makes no sense why. I think a good comparison would be with the John Wick sequels. Um, and I think I can draw yes. a bit of a distinction, but in the case of the John Wick sequels, as action movies, if you're just kind of watching the action scenes, they're, they're decent enough for the most part. Like, again, there are going to be specific problems in some of the fight scenes, but broadly, they're decent enough. Uh, the plot and the world makes absolutely no sense in, in the John Wick sequels. Um, I, I disagree with the action. Uh, you disagree with what? You think they're bad as action movies? Yes, two, three, and four are awful action movies in terms of their choreography and how they do things. Okay, fair enough. Um, and potentially I need to rewatch them because there are certain scenes that I do remember thinking are good, but it may be a case of the, um, I mean, the, the, the go-to for this is the throne room fight in um, The Last Jedi. Um, you watch it once and you're like, that was like the best scene in the film. You watch it again and it's like, hey, wait a minute. And then you watch it a third time. And it's like, fuck off. Why are you tricking me? Like... <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I uh, I think it's more along the lines of that stupid fucking coat got introduced, oh, and John God, yeah. like he should be he should be dead in so many goddamn scenarios where it's like, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna do my jujitsu thing while like guys approach me one at a time, they won't shoot me from a distance. Like, there are so many people not noticing when they're having an active gunfight in a subway. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh God, that film that that like, scene drove me insane. I love uh, it. Like, I'm that's sorry. What I mean, I'm sorry. Like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> how, like how much leash do we get? I'm, I'm fine with people liking it. That's not the issue. I'm just saying like I. Where is the line? It's kind of like is the is the issue? Yeah, Where is like, the line? I, I want it to be good though. Why can't it be good and also be yeah. fun? Yeah. Um, right. Um, just just quickly. Sorry. Before we continue that discussion, what do we want to do next in terms of missions? And then I have a super chat I need to read. Uh, I'm good for Perfect. more bugs. I'm good for more bugs. I'm good for bots. Uh, any preference, um, jangles and bleeders? Nope, I'm uh, good with anything. Okay. Um, well, in that case, let me let's pick a mission. I'll read a super chat. Then I gotta go for a wee. Um, One mission more. Is it another? Are there two? So oh, yeah. forty minutes. Forty uh, and the other one. Forty uh, minutes. Fifty minutes. 15, God. Uh, yeah. So I need, I need more super samples. We need more super samples. You want to go for a longer mission? Yeah. Okay. What do we got here? So we got uh, 40, 15, and 15. That doesn't work for you, yeah. right? I mean, it's really up to you. I mean, you're well, the need... one uh, piloting this boat. No, I'll, I'll do whatever. Um, yeah, it looks like they're all f f short ones. So if we do this one, because I kind of want to do another defense mission. That's fair. Um, That's and fair. then we can do the other two. So, oh, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. That's oh, not a defense mission. Yeah, this is not a is. defense mission? Oh, no, this, this is, is a defense mission. This is a defense mission. Yeah, this one is, yeah. Um, so right. I'm looking at the stream, so I'm behind. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so, um, super chat from DCR369. Thank you, sir. Wow, Matt Walsh, host of Cinema Sins, is playing Helldivers 2. Amazing. <laughs> Cheers, you bigot. 
Well, cheers to you, sir. Um, I I hope that the stream hasn't been too bigoted. Um, and I don't know what's a what's a what's a famous Matt Walsh quote. I don't even know. I don't. What? Uh, what is a woman? What is a woman? There we go. <laughs> let, let, I don't know. Oh my god! No, let's not let's not do that because um, we don't want we don't want certain people to clip this out of context. Rip in pieces. It's Although been, it, I, it, prob it probably it probably has been. Um, right. Um, also, NS, um, The Raid 2, best action movie. I adore The Raid movies. I think they're fantastic. Yes. Um, they, are, they are what I hold up as, like, the gold standard for action. Yeah. Oh. Right. Um, so this is... This is defend the, the missiles or the evac rockets or whatever it is, so we're obviously going... Yep. yep. Turret, turret, turret. Right. I'll be back in one sec. I'm going to go to the toilet. Sure. Um, yeah. Actually, I just remembered one of my favorite um, car chase scenes is oh. uh, in Goldeneye. Oh, where he's, God, dri it so long. he's driving the T-54-55 <laughs> down the streets of St. Petersburg. <laughs> oh, that was great. Uh, yeah, Pierce Brosnan, best Bond. There, said it. Fight me. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with the Bond movies to really accurately... Oh. Um. Yeah, I, I think I've only seen like Die Another Day, um, Casino Royale, Skyfall. I saw all the new ones, and they yeah. were and uh, they fell off hard. I think I've yeah, seen maybe half of them. Um, Jesus Christ, where are you using like a piss bottle or something? You are lightning fast. Yeah, this is a this 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 became a meme in my earlier streams about a year ago, where apparently I just pee really quickly. Um, and I no, my my office is right next to my bathroom. It's it it takes me like three mm. seconds to get to my toilet. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I was just shocked. I was like, damn. Did I wash my hands? Yes, damn it, I did wash my hands. I'm not gonna use my keyboard and mouse while I like piss fingers. But well, I say piss fingers, it makes oh. it sound like I peed all over my fingers. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. In terms of Bond. The, I think it's an interesting question is because you've got on the one hand, like, who's the best Bond? You've got on the one hand, which are the best movies? Which is the best era of Bond in terms of the quality of movies? Which actor gives the best performance as the character? And which performance as the character is most faithful to the source material? Um, which is a more complex question than um, than it is usually when you're talking about adaptation. Um, yeah. But, like... I'd have to find a list of like all the Bond films that I've seen, but I mean they the, the changes throughout the different eras they they are big changes. You know, Casino oh, Royale yeah, oh, yeah. and Moonraker are not the same at all. Um, but in terms of yeah. uh, I don't know, I I would probably say that like the Sean Connery era. Wait, who who was it that was in Moonraker? Actually, sorry, do, do I can't remember which Bond is which. Uh, Roger Moore. Roger Moore, thank you. Yeah, Roger Moore, Roger Moore is... and um, the Sean Connery and Roger Moore era are probably my favorites in terms of the character of Bond. But I don't think any Bond movie comes close to Casino Royale in terms of how good the movie actually is. Mm. Which might be a hot take. Like, a lot of people say that Casino Royale is the best, but I, I think that I hold it, like, higher than relative to the others. I, I'm disqualified from this. I haven't seen enough Bond. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I do not. I do not like Casino Royale. Are you good to go, Bleeders? Really? By the way, or yeah. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, Bleeders, Jangles. Are you good to go? I meant to say. Oh wait. Oh god damn it. Yeah, we're in the hell pods. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm yeah. generally. Yeah, I don't like it because, like, again, for me, that wasn't Bond. Bond was always this. You know, he was a suave. In, uh, he was a suave, in, very intelligent. The um, the movie, uh, the it was usually about his uh, uh, about the gadgets and everything, and they kind of turned it into a um, Jason Bourne. Kind of into Jason Bourne, yeah. That's yeah, that, that's actually a good, uh, a really good uh, comparison right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I and I like Jason Bourne. Yeah, but I like Jason Bourne as Jason Bourne. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, he's not Bond kind of thing. I completely like, yeah. see what you're saying, which is prop that probably it informs why I like it so much, is because I don't. I'm just taking it as it is. 
Um, yeah. And, I mean, I would also say that Casino Royale is a better film than any of the Bourne films, but... Um, yeah, like, as a, you know, someone who, like, grew up watching, you know, someone who's, like, old and, like, grew up watching, um, well, like, you don't have to be old to do, but you know what I mean. Someone who grew up watching the classic Bond films, maybe when they came out, could probably mm. watch um, Casino Royale and just be like, well, this isn't, they've modernized it and it's shit. Like, I, I understand that, but if you eject that and just take it as is, I think it is by far the best, the best uh, film in terms of its overall quality. No, that's, again, that's, that's fair. Um, Jingles, yeah. if you got that in, I'll go on the other. I, actually, guys, I want to try something really quick here. Try defending this area and see if the game glitches again. Because uh, I think the problem is the AI is dropping right there. And since we're standing over there, it's trying to take the shortest route to us. Right, well, the prop, the prop, we can try that, but if we defend where you're standing, we're going to have bugs coming at us from in front and behind. Yeah, it'll be fun, though. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, I've, I've dumped my turrets. I've got a Gatling sentry, which I'll bring over to you, Tank. That'll be our yeah. That'll be our little fallback position. Okay. Um. Oh shit! Sorry, Tank. I'm sorry. I just dropped a Gatling oh. sentry on you. <laughs> Damn it! It bounced. Sorry. <laughs> it bounced. Why do you stop me from having fun? No terror oh, hello. for you. Oh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> No, close the gate! Close oh, the gate! Why is it open? Well, that didn't last. I think I was right. <laughs> uh, they certainly learned from that quick. Um, Evie says, how about the Fast and Furious films as a guilty pleasure? Um, that's actually a good Absolutely. point. Uh, um, I would say that the first couple are actually not guilty pleasures because they're actually very well done films. Ooh. Now, see, this is... I'm going to completely disagree with you here. <laughs> but then this is... Yeah, so... I think... Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, okay. Uh, this this might be a hot take. Um, possibly. Also, the gate on the right is broken. The gate on the um, east side is broken. Um, so I've seen each of them. Like, I've, I've seen all of them. And I think one is Point Break, but worse. Like, it's a perfectly serviceable movie, but it's basically just Point Break, but worse. Um... Two is bad, three is unwatchably bad. Four, I don't remember anything about. And then you've got the kind of renaissance where they kind of Avengers it and they just started bringing in characters and it almost became like a soap opera. Um, and I think five is the best film out of the lot. But I'm still not sure that I would call five a guilty pleasure because I do think that if you take five as just a movie on its own, five is genuinely a good movie and I would defend it. It is the only one that I would defend. Uh, uh, we got a charger. We got a charger. Okay, inside. Yeah. We got okay. a pile titan. Would you want to head back to where we originally were defending? Because me. Yeah. Sure. All right. Um, and then you've got uh, fast six, seven, eight, and nine are just worse versions of five, and then ten is just bad. Oh, uh, yeah, I can understand your argument with that. Like, I, I pretty much am going off of, like, old memory of being, being like, the first one is okay. Not great, okay. Yeah. Like, the, I understand kind of what you're saying, Tank, because I know a lot of people have this perspective. It's like, the, the newer ones, even the one that I think is really good, well, not really good, the one that I think is decent, number five, is fundamentally a different type of movie to what Fast and Furious was. It has nothing to do with street I'm racing. This fucker. Um... But like to me, if it's a if it's a better movie that has nothing to do with what it was originally about, then I don't particularly care. Which I guess is the same argument as the Bond film uh, thing. Ow! I got killed by nothing apparently. Um, Wait, you can kill you it got now. killed by an angry bile titan. Apparently. Um, Rango the bastard. Rango, I've not actually seen. I don't know if you guys have. Really? Yeah, I've I've heard things about it. I just never watched it. Oh, it's there's fantastic. another bile titan. Oh, for fuck's sake. We didn't have this on the last one, did we? No, no we only had one Bile Titan. Alright. Uh, okay, second gate is breached. Fall back to the Citadel. <laughs> um, Nick Stinger says, Favorite Schwarzenegger movie? Um, the only answer is T2. T2 is the best Schwarzenegger movie. Um, not the only answer. 
Hit, oh, go on, um, go on, then, go on. Another Vile Titan. Batman and Robin exists. No! That jingle all the way exists. Jingle all the way! True! Also true. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but at the same time, it's not T2. We got a breach inside the, uh, in, inside. Yeah, um, I can now go and start breaching here. Shit, okay. Um, I mean, for me, you got T2 as the obvious first place. You've then got the Terminator and Predator. And then after that, you've got a bunch of other things. Um, I mean, those would be my top three, unless I'm forgetting an obvious one. Commando is good, but it's nowhere near as good as the ones that I mentioned, I don't think. Okay, yeah, I think we've lost this. I think you're probably right. We got a Bile Titan right up in our ship. Do you not have rail strikes? No. Ah. Weren't expecting this oh, many Bile Titans. Can we wait, can we close this gate or is it broken? No, well, we I don't want to I don't want to close it because the Bile Titan's right there, right? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Just, I just break it. So do we have anything that can kill a Bile Titan like reliably or no? Oh, uh, there's another one on its way. Oh god! Damn it! Now <laughs> yeah, we got a breach, we got a breach. There's two more, three more on their way! Are you serious? I'm not, I'm not oh. fucking with you. See, now I feel like Michael Ironside in that movie. No, there's four! There's fucking four of them on the way! <laughs> yeah, I oh. think we've lost this one. I think we've lost this. Um, do we want to just go out like Chad's and just call an eagle strike on our heads? Oh, absolutely. We're fucking... Well, we're, I mean, we're, we're fighting this out. The problem with that is it's gonna, it's it's then gonna respawn us. Five bio yeah, titans I mean, is the most of us. We use I've ourselves as uh, as live ammunition to kill the bio titans. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, look at them all. We had we had one in the last time we did this mission, and now we have what six active at once. No, there's a seventh. Okay, of course. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, objective, objective failed. failed. No shit. <laughs> we have no weapons that can kill them. <laughs> Big oh my god! Took a peek. We got two of them. We got two of them. Five more to go. Oh, uh, we're going to freedom camp now. Uh, Evie Schwarzenegger oh. did not appear in any of the other Predator films. No. Unfortunately. He's Thank mentioned, you, <laughs> he's mentioned oh, in Predator 2 and Predator 3. Wait, what happened? <laughs> oh, a couple of us got crushed by Bile Titans as we got in. <laughs> well, that was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> that was great. Possibly the funniest way to lose. <laughs> Me and Jangles got stomped on as we got out. What is this? So that was kind of what I was think, what I was expecting the first time we did that mission. Yeah, yeah. That they would just dial the difficulty up way too high because it's bugs. Um. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Um. Whatever. It's, we lost out on the smallest. Part. Yeah. Brazen is a good boy, Freelancer. Brazen is not a good boy. He should go <laughs> right to fucking hell. <laughs> Brazen's great because he's a reference to the people that collect models as well. There's a bot on the Discord. Right, hold on, I gotta purge it. Fuck's sake, right, okay. We got a, another fucking OnlyFans bot on the Discord. Right, let's ban him. I was, uh, I was raising... The, uh, the infinite and the divine, and it was there's like a section where Trazen is posing his space marines. He's like, no, no, I have to make sure that I'm posing them in a way that's like lore accurate. <laughs> I'm like, I love wait him. a minute, I do that. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, exactly. That's why I love him. He's just such a nice little reference. <laughs> I I like the little meme of him. Um where he's got like his archive of things that he's collected and you've got various like Warhammer things in the background and he's just writing on it through it writing through it on a Segway <laughs> Behold my stuff Yeah, exactly Now, now um uh, Random I, you, Sorry, go ahead, Tank I was gonna say the problem that I have with him is that he's used too much 
in, like a plot device. Like, oh hey, by the way, uh, it's like, oh yeah, I have one of the saints just kicking in in, in my uh, in my collection. Oh, I have this device. Oh, I have that device. I have the clone of Fulgrim. Yeah, it's just um, he's too much of a um, of a plot device now. So, yeah, but that's not his fault. That's GW's fault. Just yeah. quickly, um, Doctor DeSesso, I I'm not sure what the infinite and the divine is. Do you guys know what that is? Is that a Warhammer book or something? I don't know. Book about treason. Oh, okay. That's why we're talking about treason. Um, no, I can't tell you uh, my thoughts on it because I have not read it or listened to it. If you guys have, then by all means, mm. but I have not. I've, I've read it. It's it's a real fun time. Okay. Yeah, it's he's just, a fun character. Because it, it, he's, he's essentially just like every sweaty nerd in a fuck in <laughs> in their basement <laughs> painting their uh, painting their miniatures. Yeah. Like I, I love he's the... also a massive troll. Yeah. yeah, I love the idea of uh, Trazen from what I have seen or like heard in like, you know, lore videos on YouTube that cover the various big events like the Fall of Cadia, for example. And he pops up every now and then and he seems like a really cool character. Um, especially the fact that he's a Necron, I think just makes it even funnier. Um, but no, I haven't read the I haven't read the book or at some point I will I will get a bunch of the Warhammer books on like um, Audible or something that I Form current of iron. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, there are so many that I want to listen to, like, Warhammer-related books, but when I'm just listening to things, it's it's YouTube stuff, and I have, like, a big, yeah. like, backlog of things that I want to listen to, so... Mm. I understand. And if I had a uh, if I had a job where I could just... Because I used to do, like, delivery driving, and I would just listen to podcasts all day, um, but I don't do that anymore, so um, I essentially don't have hours every day where I can just kill time by listening to things. Yeah, yeah. But, I yeah. generally do that when I when I'm at the gym. That's when I'm like listening to uh, to books and that. Okay, I have to listen to music when I'm gymming because it, I, I yeah yes. I need it I need it loud. <laughs> my no, neighbors love fair. me. I have speakers in my garage and my neighbors love me because they, they probably don't share my taste in music. Um yeah oh, no what's the I, name I didn't... Of that song by the way in the in the second Hobbit you the video you did um, um, the fire one. I see fire. Yeah, it, it, I guess it must be that then. The one where I mean, Smog's I... lighting the lighting the forges and you play a song. Oh no no no! That's um, Fire Fry by Ramstein. Thank you. It yeah. was killing me. I was like, why does this sound familiar? No, the one. Uh, what I thought you meant was I see fire. Is the outro? It's the credit song that's actually in the Desolation no, oh, of Smaug. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, that's yeah, the one that's I, sung by Ed Sheeran. Um, no, the the one that I put in the video as a joke was Fire Fry by Ramstein. Damn it, Tank! Not my fault, your not fault. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. I am a torso! <laughs> you're right. fine. Pick, pick him up you're and charge him into the enemy. <laughs> pick me up, throw me at the bugs. I want a rematch. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, it's actually the second Ramstein joke that I've been able to, I guess, shoehorn into my videos because I also had the Deutschland, Deutschland, Uberala um, joke in my Rings of Power. What the fuck? <laughs> How'd you die? How did I you die? I got shot up in the air by the Bile Titan corpse. <laughs> it just shot me into the air. You're fine. You're I think, fine. I think the Bile Titan is on top of my guard dog. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Come on, guard dog. Where are we? That's a shield. I don't want a shield. I want my guard dog. Um. Oh, that oh, was fun. Ooh. Right, best best Ramstein song for anyone chat. If you if you listen to Ramstein, tell me. And you guys, if you, uh, what, what would your favorite Ramstein song be? Um, I'm pretty basic. Um, it's usually Duhas. Okay, yep. But then again, I'm like I'm not a huge Ramstein nerd. Like I don't. Um, yeah. Because I I yeah. yeah the, I I mean, the ones I would go to, I really, really like their self-titled album that came out, um, like, 2020-ish. Um, Auslander and Radio, or Radio, if we're using the German pronunciation. Um, those are the two that stick out to me on that album. Uh, if we're talking classics, it's got to be Firefry, um, Sensucht, and... There's a really weird one, which I think is on Sensucht, the, the album Sensucht, um, called Tikiero Puta which is in Spanish for some reason. I don't know why. 
a bit uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, and it's um, it, it's it's kind of like mariachi metal, and I just really like it when <laughs> when bands do this kind of thing. Because I was listening to the album for the first time uh, maybe five, six years ago, and then this song comes on, and it's like mariachi metal. And the, um, the it, it's basically... The translation of the name of the song is um, I Love You Whore, I think. Um, and it's basically... <laughs> yeah, it, that's what the song is, but it's... It's a very funny song, but it's also a bit of a banger. But it's not one oh, that I, I ever see anyone it, mention. Okay, yep. What? Uh, yep. So chat says, um, Burzum is better than Ramstein. Burzum is not better than Ramstein. Burzum is shit, I'm afraid to say. But also that's partly because of, well, I mean, oh, if we're, even if we're not separating the art from the artist in the case of Burzum, Burzum is, Burzum is bad Metallica riffs that were recorded badly. Um, <laughs> you've got, Spicy. chat has said, Ich will, Sonne, Keiner, Lust, Mein Herz, Brent. Liebe ist für alle da. Those are all fantastic songs. Ram Ramstein is a very, very consistent band. Uh, they don't really have a bad album. Um, I'm gonna be. A, I don't know how spicy this is, but uh, Metallica is just garbage. Uh, that's spicy. Yeah, that's pretty spicy. Yeah. Uh, there are certain eras of Metallica that are spi that are that are spicy, that are garbage. But um, no. Master Puppets, Master Puppets, and Ride the Lightning are two albums that. I just, yeah, not a weak track on them, I don't think. Uh, I got more Salkers. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Yeah, I died. I killed myself. Whoops. I uh, need some help. Hello, Truffle. Hope you're doing all right. And, um, yeah, Lord Hendrickson, you're pretty much correct. All black, all black metal is shit. Um, I don't know. I like Dimu Borgir a lot. Um... And I like some Satyricon. Um, but yeah, the stuff that I really like in terms of black metal is the sort of blackened death metal. Uh, there are a bunch of death metal bands that I listen to that have a black metal tinge to them. Uh, Zoth would be one of them. And, um... Oh, what's the other one called? If I could open my iTunes, I'd be able to tell you. But yeah, there's a, there's a couple of sort of black and death metal bands that I've been listening to recently that I really like. But yeah, straight up black metal is not really my thing. Yeah, kind of hard to get into. I, I get what you mean. It's just, yeah, like if you listen to um, Satyricon's, I think it's Satyricon's first album. It's just the album cover is just, it's a white album cover with something on it. It's like a tree or something. And you listen to that and it just sounds like someone has recorded it through a toaster on the other side of a room and it's just buzzing loud buzzing scratchy noises with grumbly vocals like if you can't really tell what it is that you're listening to then I'm not going to listen to it um yeah oh shit yeah I dropped my uh, I dropped my laser boy let me go back and get him oh you bitch sorry I gotta go get him although that's a lot of bugs that's a lot of bugs Help me, Mortimer. Pantera are awesome. Oh no, that's bad. That's bad. I shouldn't have gone back to try and get my boy. Oh shit, I'm sorry. I'm very dead. Um, Brandon's all alone. Help me, boy. I I'm also brought supplies. I am dead. Oh shit. Okay, right. What's your thoughts on Queens of the Stone Age? I don't really know them. My wife listens to them, so that's the only oh, context wow. in which I would have heard them. Um, they definitely have a couple of songs that I like, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what they're called. No one knows. Stuff like oh, that. no one knows. Yes, that one I really like. Great rift. Yeah. And thoughts on Disturbed. Disturbed I also really like. They're very samey in that a lot of their music sounds like it could have been released on any of their albums. Um, yes. So they know what they do. I, I, I guess the exception to that is probably their first album, Down With The Sickness. Um, they know what they do, oh. they do it well, and they keep doing it. And if you don't like it, you will never like it. It's the same as Five Finger Death Punch. They just do the same thing over and over again. Um, but if it vibes with you, then you'll, you'll like it a lot. 
I mean, I will say they're very talented. Like their um, their cover of um, "Sound of Silence." Yeah. Yeah, David. David shot up in popularity as soon as he did that. My yeah. sister's actually good friends with him. What, David Draymond? Yeah. Uh, we still got this uh, stupid uh, stalker who's still alive. Oh shit. She, okay. She, inter she interviews bands for a living. Oh, nice. I think you mentioned. Yeah. I think we might maybe have another mess somewhere. Uh, if if we do, it's got to be over there because we haven't been over there yet. I don't think. Um, and yeah, to be clear with um, what I just said, I do, I think that Disturbed are leagues above Five Finger Death Punch. Um, I just think that they're comparable Ooh. in that they essentially do the same thing on repeat. Um, I think Five Finger Death Punch have. I think Five Finger Death Punch are underrated. I think that too many people treat them like Nickelback, and it's like Nickelback have a bunch of good songs. Like, then, you know, may maybe Nickelback are overrated, but at the same time, whenever Nickelback pops up in conversation, it's like, oh, Nickelback suck, because it's just, it's popular to say that they suck. Um, but Five Finger Death Punch, again, they have a bunch of really good songs, it's just that they have a lot of shit songs. And their lyrics uh, were written by, like, a five-year-old. So, um... Yeah, it's they, they are kind of the litmus test for do you think that bad lyrics can ruin a song? And I think that they absolutely can. <laughs> the thing I will say about um, about Nickelback is, uh, what's his name? I can never remember his name. Chad, Chad Kruger? That is a, has a great understanding of music theory. Like, the fact that he can just, you know, like, everyone tells it, like, oh, Nickelback sucks, Nickelback you know, is Titan. terrible. And then he comes out and he just, he writes out, you know, uh, number one hits time and time again, I think goes to show that while he's not great, or like, I wouldn't say great, but, um, no. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he knows very much what he's doing. It's the same as what we were saying earlier about Lady Gaga. Like, yeah, she, she's good so, at what she does. She knows what she's doing. And I mean, it, it works. Quick, so. quick question though. Can we compare that in terms of music? Because, like, okay, so it makes money, yeah, but does, does that mean it's good? So, like, kind of no. like a Transformers movies argument. I, I wouldn't make that argument, no, but at um, the same time, I think that there is a difference between something that just makes money and something that actually has talent behind it. Um, and I would say that Lady Gaga oh. and... Like, I don't like Lady Gaga's music, and I don't like most of Nickelback's music, but um, they... They are definitely good at what they do, and I think that the the personal taste argument is a little bit... It's a little bit easier to make that argument, I think, in the case of music than with movies, at least from my perspective, because I can completely understand someone listening to what I usually listen to and just being like, this does absolutely nothing for me. Um, whereas in the case of movies, I find that a lot harder to get my head around, because in the case of movies... Um, at their core, you're telling a story, um, which, and, and, you know, a story can either be good or bad. Um, and there are more objective ways that you can measure the quality of music, um, but it is a lot harder to define that kind of thing than it is with something as broad as a story, I think. Hmm. I gotta say, I'm really liking the airburst uh, stratagem. Uh, what yeah. is that? I, I haven't used it. The one that, the thing that killed us. <laughs> oh. I mean, everything kills you. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're not wrong in large of all quantities. Lucius the Eternal says that Nickelback is my guilty pleasure, as in he's referring to me. Um, yeah, we can call them a guilty pleasure, I guess, but I, uh, no, How You Remind Me and Burn It to the Ground are bangers. Thank and you. You will not be able to convince me otherwise. Burn It to the Ground in particular, I think that's a brilliant song. Um, the fucking rift yeah the riff is brilliant just you know get your guitar oh, down to drop b and mean, just come up with that it's brilliant well it, um, it's, it, it's just so smooth too yeah. da, 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 it just goes right back into itself um, um i would also say photograph i mean photograph is good but that's less my kind of thing but i can understand yeah, no, people like fair. it um, wasn't it wasn't there a meme where it was like the Nickelback mixer where it was like Hero, How You Remind Me, and Photograph were all the same song? Someone showed me that in Discord. I, I can't remember who it was, but it was um, it was How You Remind Me and 
Someday, and it was those two songs playing at the same time, and they're exactly the same in terms of what key they're in, what tempo they're in, and what the structure is. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, that's glorious. 25 kills. Oh, nice. Come on, turret. Oh, I need my auto cannon. I need my boy. Also, uh, Scum, yeah, I was going to mention that. So there's a YouTube channel called Drumio, which does, like, drummer videos. And um, one of the things that they do is they have, like, world-class drummers come on and play along to the drumless track for a song that they've never heard before. And usually it's a song that's very famous, so, like, the viewer will know the song. And the idea is to see how a world-class drummer will interpret a really solid song that they've never heard before. Titan over there, yep. Um... And the two ones that I think are just brilliant is um, you've got Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater, who is probably my favorite drummer. Um, he plays Burn It to the Ground, having never heard the song before. Um, and his interpretation is similar to the original, um, but he obviously metals it up and makes it a little bit more his style. Um, but the other one that I think is probably the best is Mr. Brightside by The Killers. I take it everyone knows that song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the drummer, the guy that did that um, on Drumio is a guy called Dirk Verburen, who um, at the time drummed for Megadeth, and he previously has drummed with Soilwork and Devin Townsend. He's an extremely technically proficient drummer, and you know, you imagine like someone like that playing Mr. Brightside, you just think, well, it's just gonna, it, it's just gonna be a complete mess. Um, but what he does with it is brilliant. He doesn't metal it up, he plays drums that are completely suitable for the song. But the bit that was most interesting to me is that the drums that he plays for that song are completely different to the original drums for the song. Um... Oh, I'm right here, Jangles. Nope, oh, diggity. Okay, cool. Do we need to... I guess, yeah, we got a little nest that we can deal with up there. Um... 25 blah, blah, blah. Favorite Mel Brooks film? It's gotta be Spaceballs, but Robin Hood Men in Tights is also really good. <laughs> Spaceballs. And Lucius say, Lucius, you're lucky that my wife isn't here. Is Placebo guilty pleasure material? Placebo is my wife's favorite band. Um, she's been to see them about six times. Um, I like them, but I definitely prefer their earlier stuff. Um, Black Market Music is the one that I used to listen to a lot in Sleeping With Ghosts, whereas the newer stuff is a lot more... Um, I, I, by the numbers is probably the, not the right way to describe it. Um, it's a lot less punky, it's a lot slower, and it's a lot more, um, I guess, poppy, so it doesn't really do as much for me. What do you think of Black Keys? Um, Black Keys, I have El Camino, I've listened to a few times, the album. But I, it's not really my kind of thing. I couldn't really tell you anything beyond that. And yeah, Lucius, uh, you're, that's, yeah, pre-Meds was the best placebo. Meds is the first one when I listened to, and I was just like, this isn't the same as what it was. Um, yeah, it was it was missing what I liked about placebo. Um, also, Evie says, since you liked Enemy, as in the song from Arcane, did you like what could have been played in the final scene? of season one. Um, yeah, I think by and large the music in Arcane is brilliant and I will I also really like Enemy. I love that song. Um, even though I really don't like Imagine Dragons, which is weird. Um, Question. Yeah, go on. I Actually. find Imagine Dragons is just basic, uh, like... Oh, I found the dick rock. You, you did? Yeah, it's over that way. Um, I had, Yeah, no, the question with that is... Uh, part two of your uh, arcane review what did you think of that scene with uh the imagine dragons cameo because i think that is one of the most like bizarre out of place scenes ever um i think it show. i can completely understand why it didn't stick out to me because i don't really know nor do i really care who imagine dragons are um i could if you if you do know who they are and you know if it was like um i don't know a face that everyone knows it was like um uh, uh, I don't know, Beyonce and Jay-Z or something. Just really blatantly obvious like that. I'd be like, what the? What are we doing here? Like, why are we just advertising Beyonce and Jay-Z? Um, no. But, well, I mean, okay, I say everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I completely understand 
people thinking that that was jarring. I am unfamiliar with Imagine Dragons for the most part, so I didn't... Because having that sequence set up as a, um, essentially a musical montage of, of stuff going on while they're performing the song, I think fundamentally that works. The question as to how well it works, I think, kind of depends on whether you think w whether you think literally seeing them within the world of Arcane, how jarring that actually is. I, so. I would actually say my criticism isn't to do with them, but it's to do what they place in with that scene. Oh, okay. Uh, the Victor moment is completely out of tone and out of touch. Um, you get, you get his prognosis during that song, and I was like, uh, I can't. Well, that's uh, weird. I can't see I had a huge problem with it because they. It, I think the point of that was that it was supposed to be jarring. You go hmm. from the montage of Vi. Um, I, I think the last thing you see before you go to Victor lying in bed is you've got Vi looking at Savika and just being like, "Fuck this bitch! I'm gonna fuck her up." And then it cuts to Victor and the lyrics, oh, the misery, and then it just stops, which isn't what usually happens. Usually the song continues. Um, and it basically breaks from that um, in order to then be like, oh, it, 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 you could, I think, argue that it makes the Victor moment hit harder. Um, but yeah, I'd have to I'd have to look at it again to see exactly how that works. But the, the bit that I really do like about the way that it's used there is after the Vixter stuff, it then goes back into, oh, the misery, as if they're going to go into another verse. And then that's interrupted by Vi putting her knee into Vika's face. <laughs> that is fantastic, because it, 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 it basically uses the music to trick the audience into thinking that something is going to happen, um, in that we're going to, you know, sit back and listen to Imagine Dragons for another minute. But no, we're not. Come it's back, come back, come the, back. the shit's about to hit the fan. Um, and I really like it. I really like the way that that's done. Okay, maybe it's just my bias of the song then, because like... If you I, don't I like the it, song, like, I can see that, yeah. Because like, I, I I, guess in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, this is like a super poppy song and everything like that. And then we just cut to one of the most like sympathetic characters dying in his bed. Like, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <fair enough. laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> like, um. Hold on. <laughs> so, um, Lucius says, being in universe, I hope that the Imagine Dragons gets butchered in season two. <laughs> they get, there's another war scene on the bridge, and they're like the first to die. Oh, yeah, they're just there on the front lines or something, and something goes horribly wrong. <laughs> oh, that, that would be quite funny. Uh, where did my... Oh, I've got a super chat to read, but where did my... I need to find my boy. He's missing. Where's he gone? He's over here. There Did he is. Did you uh, notice the kids were in that song as well from uh, the first fight in the show? Um. Did I notice what? Like Decker's crew was in that song. Oh yeah, I've seen th that. Like that isn't something that I noticed, and it isn't something that I point out in my video. But I have seen the screenshots of that. Yes. Uh, that's a nice little touch. Yeah. I found it was like, oh hey, look at that. Um. Also, anyway, sorry, uh, super chat from Easton. Thank you, sir. Love your content. Have my money. Um, gladly. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy my content, and I hope you do enjoy the stream. Um, yeah. Streaming this kind of thing is quite a lot of fun. Tank, what the hell are you doing? Uh, oh, things. You're, you're dealing what are you with a Okay, cool. No, I'll head to the evac. I think you got that. I think you're good. Yeah, me and Bleeders are fine over here. Um, Dizzle says, here I am waiting for Random to play Cyberpunk, and then he just defends democracy. So I will go back to Cyberpunk. Um, uh, what's my calendar doing? So it probably will not be next week, because something rather important happens next Friday. Um, and I don't want to commit to streaming, because I don't know how much time it's going to take me to do this other thing. So Rebel Moon Part 2 is released on Friday, a week today. Um... <laughs> And I'm essentially going to be go, 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 get this done. And I'm going to watch it at least twice on the day and start taking some notes. And maybe I will do a stream in the evening, but if I do, it won't be for as long as usual. Um, but yeah. Also, Truffle, Coldplay is, for, is music for people who don't like music. <laughs> it's great. I don't know. Cold, Coldplay, I don't like Coldplay, but again, they have a couple of songs that aren't terrible, I guess. Um, also... Hey, how are you doing over there, bud? Yeah, no, Tank's doing alright. Tank, Tank's got that to deal with. Do we have a breach here? Sorry, no. I interrupted you, though. Oh, okay. 
I am not doing so well anymore. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. We're fine. We're fine. Still was. And um, Fine Toxicity says, I have to say your review of Act 1 got me hooked on the Revenge soundtrack from Arcane. There are so many good songs in that. Honestly, the one that I don't like, because there's, there's a lot of music in Arcane that was done by different like artists, and I don't... Imagine Dragons, I think, is the only one that I've heard of, apart from, obviously, Sting. Um, and I think the only one that I really just don't like is the Firelights one at the beginning of Episode 7, and that is purely because I just really do not like that kind of music. Whereas, um, whereas the, like, the, I, I can't remember the name of the song. Sorry, I, I can't remember the name of the artist, but the song in episode one, Welcome to the Playground, is not my kind of thing at all. But I think the moodiness of the song really works with how it is, uh, how it is used in the show. Um, whereas, right, yeah. All dealt with. Oh, oh, shit. Okay, yeah, we got, we got big, big fucking bugs right here. We got charger time. Ping, 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 ping. Give me a clear shot. Yeah. Oh. Got him. Is he dead? That was. He's dead. I okay. His head off. Oh, nice. Thank you. Reloading. Uh, what's your favorite song in Arcane? Then, out of curiosity. I'd need to look at a list of all of them, but in, if we're kind of forgetting how they're used, and we were to just go with the the one I would be the most likely to listen to. Um. Say it. Say it. <laughs> uh, I, no, I, I I would need to have a look at a list. I'd need to have a look at a list of them. Um, because I haven't... Is it Our Love? Wh which one is that? Which episode does that appear in? Uh, plays in episode three when Vander realizes, um, Vi... Or, sorry, episode two when Vi... When he realizes Vi is giving herself up. Oh, that, yeah. That one is lower down on the list again, because it's not my kind of thing. No. Um... Hmm. I don't know. I think I, I would definitely need to see a list before I wanted to commit to that. But, I mean, off the top of my head, it would probably be Enemy. Um... Because, again, What Could Have Been is a fantastic song, but I think most of why that works so well is because of how it's used. Um, it's not the kind of thing that I would just listen to normally, um, but I think the scene that it is used in and the way that it is used is, like, top tier. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a very good point, because that's my second song, but now that you make me think about it... I'm like, yeah, but I don't. I wouldn't really listen to that on like the, just a regular day. What about uh, what about get jinxed? Oh, if we're including get, <laughs> I like get jinxed. If we're including that, that's gonna yeah, be up there. Yeah. yeah. It's in the show. Why not? It, they sneak it in in a nice little way too. Yeah, like it was it. a nice little um, cameo, oh. if you can call it that. Um, what do you? Yeah, go on, sir. What do you think of the Twitch cameo? So I don't think even that that counts as a Twitch cameo. I think that if they turn <laughs> the rat in episode one into Twitch, then that will make complete sense. Um, I don't think that it was a fan servicey. Oh look, guys, it's Twitch moment. Um, because, well, essentially because of how much sense that scene makes. Um, it, it, yeah, our, our timeline has moved up. We need to test this on something, and so. We'll, we'll, would do it on a rat, and then it becomes a big angry rat. And I didn't even notice the first time, oh, well, that could potentially be Twitch. Like, okay. But yeah, it's, it's probably Twitch. It's one of those like, the writing's so good. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I could totally see it. <laughs> well, like, I've seen people speculating, and I, I don't know if I buy into this, I've seen people speculating that Huck is Dr. Mundo. Um, I doubt it. Um, but again, because of how, like, how well used the character of Huck is, it would be a little bit weird for me to see him turn into a character like Dr. Mundo, unless they fundamentally change what Dr. Mundo is, which they could do. I mean, that, who knows? You say these with, names, I have no idea, I have no reference. Yeah, fair enough. My, um, my problem with that theory is he doesn't do medicine, though, he does, well, like, Well, yeah, yeah, exactly, which is why you'd need to change kind of what he is. Um, Dizzle referring to oh, referencing Vander in season two. I'm I am very worried about how they handle it because it has the potential. Sorry, um, yeah, it, it, it has the potential to ruin what happened in season one. Um, I I'm not going to elaborate because I need to work out exactly what I think about it, but I will definitely be talking about that in the final video. Um, but yeah, uh, on on the face of it, just. Doing what I think they're probably going to do 
risks undermining a lot of what happens in season one. Stop hitting me, I'm a good boy. Damn it, bleeders! Ah, you killed me! I'm not gonna oh, be able to evac. Second. No, get my get my you get my samples! <laughs> get my samples! Another victory, but a right. You blocked it and he just decked you right back. <laughs> Why did you're that? fine, you're fine. I'm not, I didn't evac. You're fine. Bleed has shanked me in the dark. You probably deserved it. What are you talking about? He walked up, slapped you, and then slapped you a few more times. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, uh, Truffle, just to, we did talk about it earlier, but referring to Fallout, I have not yet seen it. I've heard some people like it. I've heard some people don't. I'll probably check it out once I finish Shogun, oh. um, which um, I know, I think it was you, Truffle, said that you weren't going to watch Shogun because of how much you like the book. And I can't speak to how good it is or how accurate it is compared to the book, but I mean, it's as a season of TV so far, it's really, really good. I haven't read- I, I didn't know there was a book. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, it's- my understanding is that it's based on a book, um, and that the book is historical fiction, so I think the events happened, but the characters are all fictional, is my return. understanding. Oh. Welcome aboard, Helldiver. The super How did I do? Oh, I look at those. Know. Look at those kills. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ha ha how many did you have? I, I clicked off. 460. Oh my god, okay. Uh, that was from the airburst. <laughs> oh, well then. How many accidentals? Oh, it's only three accidentals, see? <laughs> okay. Well, how many accidentals did yeah, Bleeders have? Off the bat. <laughs> uh, Bleeders had none. Bleeders killed me! Well, I guess that wasn't yeah. an accidental, but yeah, friendly fire counts when you fucking deck your teammate when he's about to weave back. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna say, like, no, because he didn't have one, because he didn't have one, obviously you're not a person, so therefore you you must be a bot. Hmm. Yeah, hold on, I was confirmed. <laughs> right, oh, uh, Oscar Surridge, I love you, RFT. I love you too, Oscar, welcome, and um, enjoy the stream. Um... <laughs> What do we want to, um, what do you want to do next? Eradicate Terminate Swarm or Retrieve Essential Personnel? Or Retrieve Essential. Okay. I like the, uh... So, me and a uh, friend were doing the Eradicate the Swarm, and we were getting overrun. So what I did is I would run out of the combat zone. Okay. You get declared a tra- if you stay out there for more than 10 seconds, you get declared a traitor. Yeah. And to kill you, they start dropping artillery rounds on you. Oh. And so what you do is you then run around. That's amazing. <laughs> so they, so they, okay, that's amazing. I did not know. I, I assumed that, that the way it worked is if you're declared a traitor, you just despawn. That's, no. That is awesome if that's how it works. Bleeders, I heard you talking. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I, I, I like the comment that was made in chat where it's like, it wasn't accidental. It was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Airborne. Uh, right, sorry, what mission is this? I've forgotten, because it affects my loadout here. Uh, evacuate. Evacuate, alright, well then let's go mines and mortars. <laughs> That's a great idea. Nah, we'll go, um... Hmm. We'll go guard doggy. Slowing mines. Yeah, fuck it. And then we'll just be smart or not special with where we put our turrets. Um, Dizzle says, any plans for after the Arcane Rebel Moon videos? Will there be a new is or is not very good series? I mean, yes is the answer, but I have no idea what it will be. Um, I am going to very likely do Arcane Season 2 when it comes out, and I'm definitely doing Rings of Power Season 2 when it comes out. Um... Hmm. Arcane is in November, and we're in, what are we, in April now? So May, June, let's be realistic and probably say July is when I finish um, Arcane. Hopefully it's before then, but it might not be. Um, August, September, October, November. So we've then got four months to kill until Arcane Season 2, which probably gives me time to do maybe two... 
it, like one-off videos. So what I might do is find one-off videos, like one-off films that I want to talk about. Um, which means there probably won't be a series because there's not time to fit a series in there and I don't want to get stuck in delaying videos and doing multiple things at once, really. Um, I, uh, I mean, I could do something about a game, but it, yeah, it would need to be the right game and I'd need to... I'd, I'd need to know that I have things to say about it. But yeah, we'll see. Oh my god! Fucking oh, that's vile boy right in here. <laughs> Who am I in sync with there? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, what? I'm killing the. Oh shit! Goddamn charge! Yeah, calling in the rail strike there. Killed my boy. The boy probably deserved it. <laughs> hmm. Well, he hadn't Every fired a single shot, so... Oh, God. Go on. <laughs> Oscar says, For a while, I thought RFT and Mola were the same person. I genuinely was confused by the difference in tones of the videos, but the voice was quite similar. Um, are, you, are, you, are you saying that a Welshman is the, sa is the same as a uh, as an Englishman? I, I mean, I'm, not, I'm definitely not Welsh, uh, but if, I guess Mola doesn't sound particularly Welsh. He does, does. he does sometimes with certain words, but it, he definitely doesn't sound straight up Welsh. Because I used to live in Wales for like five years, and the accent drives me insane, and I'm... Yeah. Um, yeah. Mauler definitely does not sound like a full-on Welshman, but... <laughs> um, Lucius says, care to do a Mr. Bean breakdown and analysis? Well, never say never. Oh, that'd be awesome. Mr. Bean, uh... Mr. Bean's great. I love Mr. Bean. Titan. Another Titan. Now, Pain! Stop it! Fucking... Bad turret. Oh boy. Okay, we're getting busy now. We're more than halfway on the civilians, though. Beep. No, I don't have any turrets. Ah. Okay, well, let's get these civvies. Um, Truffle, I went to uni in, um, in Cardiff, but it was the University of South Wales, not Cardiff Uni, which are two different things. I don't know why, but they are. Uh, just to confuse people. I mean, I Obviously. guess so. I, I don't know. It's like you've got the... There's another... I think there's another instance of that in Bath. There's two different universities in Bath, and they're both called some variation of Bath University, but I, I don't know why. Oh. What, uh, do you mind if I ask you, like, what did you study? Um, so I studied in... Uh, I have a, a degree in... I'm trying to remember exactly the name of the degree. Music and Sound Technology, I think it was. Uh, okay. Um, and then I have a master's in um, music engineering and production, which I found a lot more applicable and a lot more enjoyable because the sound stuff, like the difference, is the difference between sound and music. Like one of them was related to sound and like how sound works, kind of thing, um, and the other one was specifically applying that kind of thing to music, um, which is what I'm interested in. Um, Oh shit, I just fucking blew off a civilian's head. Whoops. <laughs> Let's just walk away. I'm glad you finished that sentence. Uh, There's two bile titans over here. Two bile titans, okay. Uh, oh god. One bile titan. One bile titan. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh. Ah. Um. Lord Hendrickson says, aren't you in a band? So, yeah, I'm um, in an online. Uh, death metal band called Hellbore, where we basically oh. like I've never met the um, the vocalist, but we know each other online, and we um, put out an EP and an album a couple of years ago. That's really cool. Yeah. Neither. Yeah. A um, lot of fun. If you like death metal, look them up. We're on we're on various streaming sites. 
Oh, uh, yeah, okay, that's interesting. Also, that's a charger on the roof. He really didn't like that turret. Wait, what the fuck? Shit! <laughs> Hold on, I'm getting the extraction. I couldn't find the, uh, the rock. Is, is the rock on this map? I thought it wasn't on the screen. Apparently. Yeah, cause yes, because you, you can go outside, because we still got, uh, two ah. minutes left. What, do we want to have a look for it? I went looking for it. Hmm. I mean, did you look everywhere? Because we can look again. Yeah, we can go and look. Minor place of interest, do we know what that is? Yeah, I went there. Oh, okay. Uh, it'll be under a diamond. Ah, the, uh, okay, right. Well, fuck it, let's go and have a look. Yeah. This will surely backfire. Nah, we'll be fine. Well, as soon as someone finds it, everyone else, I, I guess, just needs to run back to the shuttle. I'll go I'll go straight over and head over there. Oh, someone found it? Um, d wait, someone, someone's got it? I don't no. think, I don't think so, no. Um, Luis, yes, that is a song that I wrote. If you, if you already know the song, that would be weird. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on my end, boys. I see it, I see it. All right, Found cool, it. cool, cool. Wait, where's the... Yeah, that's a decent distance. Yeah, someone hold the uh, ground at the. I got it. I got it. I'm I'm like 50 meters away from it. All right, tank. I'll come to you and cover you a bit. That way we make sure. Um, shuffle. Yes, that was the name of the EP that we did. And um, I play basically everything that isn't vocals. Um, the drums I wrote and programmed, but the drums aren't performed. Bass and guitar I played, um, and the mixing and mastering I did myself. Yeah, I'm coming around. I'm, I'm, I'm running away. I'm running away. Got him. Okay, uh, we got bugs incoming, but I think we're probably okay. I got tanks back. Nice. Just don't get in there. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, so if you if you extract without the person that has all of the all of the um, you don't get them. samples, you just straight up don't get them. Yep. Okay. Teamwork makes the dream uh, work. Protect me. Survive. Oh, Platoon's a great movie. Platoon is a fantastic movie. Yes, I need to watch it again. Mm. I, I watched it loads when I was younger, but I haven't seen it for years. All right, let's go. Yeah. Um, Lord Hendrickson, no, I, I'm, I can't play drums, like, physically at all, um, but a huge amount of what I do, um, in terms of, like, outside of YouTube is working with drums, so composing them, humanizing them for, um, you know, making electronic drums, sorry, program drums sound as realistic as possible, that kind of thing. Um, complete an extreme difficulty or higher mission without anyone dying. Wow, okay. Oh, hurrah. <laughs> saw no friendly fire accidents. Well, no friendly deaths. <laughs> um, Luke, it's not... Yeah, what I do isn't technically um, production. It would be more sort of like the back end, like editing and composition kind of thing. Um, but I have... I, I have mixed songs for other people, yeah. Um... And Evie, we did, I mean, I, in terms of number of songs, I mean, six songs on the EP, eight songs on the album, I think, but the album is like double the length. But yeah. Ugh. So wait, I'm curious then, as a musical guy yourself, what's your favorite soundtrack? And Lord of the Rings is disqualified from this well, conversation. Yeah, um, well, yeah, that makes it a hard a question to answer then. <laughs> Because <laughs> it is Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> so I would pr I would need to look up a list. Um, my sort of initial reaction, without thinking about it too much, would probably be Inception. Um, Ooh, okay. okay. I every single track on that is fantastic, and I think the way the music is used in the film is brilliant. Um, apart from that, 
I'm trying to think. Give me give me one second. I'm just gonna have a look at I'm just gonna have a look at IMDB again to see if I can get some other obvious answers. Um um, I mean, the music in T2 Alien and Aliens is all fantastic, but it's not, I don't think, on the same level as something like Inception. Um, I've got a shout, uh, a shout out RRR, the Indian movie from a couple of years ago. Um, that movie is brilliant, and the music in that movie is fucking fantastic. Um, Pirates is up there. Pirates is brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, in terms of an overall soundtrack, I, the, only, the, the one that I would go to if I'm not allowed to say Lord of the Rings has got to be Inception. The galactic war okay. waits for no one. Are you ready, Helldiver? I'd be cheating because I'd just say Star Wars. <laughs> oh, honestly, the prequel. I'm not even sure what wins prequels Ooh. or original. Well, it's specific tracks in each. Like, if you did, like, a greatest hits, like the top ten in all of them, it would just be banger after banger because there's so many. Um, uh, yeah. But even honestly, uh, even uh, uh, some of the music in the in the Disney stuff is decent. Like Ray's theme and the Kylo Ren theme are good. They're just not as iconic, I think, because of what they accompany. Mm. Um, yeah. Right. I'm this. Disappointed nobody else. No, oh, go on. Wait. Sorry. Go. On. I was just gonna say I'm disappointed nobody else is making happy gas mask noises. <laughs> the only one for gas masks. Um. What else do people say in chat? Let me let me pick what I'm bringing, and then I will be able to look at chat. So this is this is point defense. Yep. All right. Well, turret, turret, and turret. Uh, I'm gonna take auto cannon, motor, and then I'm gonna take. Where's my laser? Where's my laser? Um, Nick, I have There's not I have not seen that video. Rings of Power's cinematography is awful by Eric the Cameraman. I have not seen that, but I, um, if someone wants to post it in Discord, then I'll watch it at some point. Um, in terms of good soundtracks as well, other ones that were mentioned, Lion King is fantastic. Gladiator. Uh, La La Land. Guardians of the Galaxy is... Um, I mean, that still counts, definitely. That would be up there. Um, another one that I would include on sort of the same um, style in that is using pre-existing songs is Inglorious Bastards. I love the soundtrack to that. I have to give that a listen. I can't really remember it. Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Okay. Like, like it's been a while since I've seen it, so I can't really remember the soundtrack. Yeah, there's a bunch of really well-used songs in there. Um, and the thing that I find quite interesting, we're about to get fucking gangbanged here, um, is Ennio Mariah Coney, who wrote a bunch of the songs that Tarantino has used in his movies. Um, he originally did the music for, like, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly and a bunch of other spaghetti westerns. He did not like how Tarantino used his music in, um... Oh my god! In, um, like, Django and Inglorious Bastards and that kind of thing. Um... Brutal. Yeah, yeah, he just he didn't like it because he didn't like the fact that his music was being reappropriated and used in a different context. Um, which is fair enough, that's basically what he said. But then evidently he changed his mind because um, Tarantino hired Mariconi to do the music, to do an original score for The Hateful Eight. Um, and the reason why he was so like adamant that he wanted Mariconi to do it is because... We got a... Uh, Titan? Titan. Okay. Um, it's because Ennio Morricone did the music for The Thing, as in the John Carpenter oh thing, God, and Tarantino was very inspired by The Thing. Um, so in the soundtrack for Hateful Eight, there's three or four pieces of music that were written for The Thing back in 1982 or whatever it was, that were never actually used. They were they were written but, but never made it into the film. Um, and essentially, they managed to make a deal where Tarantino was allowed to use those pre-existing songs in The Hateful Eight, which I think is really cool. No. Uh, this might be a bit of a hot pick, but I, uh, I tend to think uh, Tarantino's a bit overrated. Um... I don't know if That's I agree, cool. because I think that is a hot... We got another Battle Titan. Because the thing is, when you're talking about like the best directors of all time, like he's going to appear on the list. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely, and that, I understand why. I just yeah, 
that's the thing, is any of those directors you could say is overrated, I guess, yeah. like, because, you know, they will have all directed films that are not as good. Um... Uh, Dizzle says, Hateful Eight is his worst film, Django is the best, is that fair to say? I don't agree with that, no, but I can see why you think that. I think Inglorious Bastards... There's a laser coming in, there's okay. a laser coming in, so just be aware. I think Inglorious Bastards or Pulp Fiction are the best, and I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is the worst. I actually think that, uh... I actually think, um, Inglorious Bastards is actually probably one of his worst. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Interesting, okay. Uh, oh, I should caveat this by saying that the, own, the the Tarantino film I have not seen is Death Proof. I've never seen it. I've never seen Death Proof either, but... I liked Pulp Perfection. Um, I really did. Titan but, again? Yeah. Um, also, Fine Toxicity says, Favorite video game soundtrack? Um, I have a very normy answer to this without thinking about it too much. Halo. Skyrim. No, okay. Really? I adore the music to okay. Skyrim. Um, that is, I think, the best part of the game, honestly. Um, That's perfectly, you know, I, I see why, I see why. Yeah, uh, if we're going to throw out just other ones, really, really good music from video games. The soundtrack to Baldur's Gate 3 is incredible. Um, the... That's fucking Battle Titan still alive. Um, the, uh, the Witcher 3 has fantastic music. Um... Halo Combat Evolved, I would specify. Although Halo 2 has the Steve Vai track, so maybe that. Um, yeah, th those would be off the top of my head. Those would be my go-tos. Um, you guys have any others that you would uh, throw in there? Oh, Starcraft. Uh, Sorry, I've got, I've got to say Starcraft as well. That one's amazing. Starcraft, I would yes. say also... Um, I would say... Mass Effect. Uh, Mass Effect's got a pretty unique one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna start showing my weave, I suppose, because I'm gonna say uh, Nier Automata. Uh, yeah, no, I, I get you behind. I can get behind that one. I'm, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has a really good soundtrack. I love that track. I don't know that one. That's fine. Because I, I listen to some Xenoblade, but I haven't heard that one specifically. Uh, 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 Revengeance? Revengeance, yeah. What? What is that? <laughs> Wait, have you not played that? What, what is? What? What is it? Sorry, what's the game? Metal Gear Revengeance. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So this, um, I yeah, basically over Christmas I did an XCOM stream where I had like a quiz, and Zach won the quiz. Uh, I don't think he's in chat now, but he's in the Discord. And because he won the quiz, I said that he could pick any game. Are you going to call me in? Uh, oh, I didn't realize you were dead. I call, I call oh, it's not calling uh, in. I said that Zach could pick any game for me to stream, and no questions asked, I will stream Tank? it. And he picked Metal Gear Revengeance. So, at some point soon, I will stream that, because apparently I can finish it in one stream. I have never played it. I have never played a Metal Gear game. Um, oh my god, I'm so excited. Yeah, I've, uh, the only Kojima that I know is... Fuck off! The only Kojima that I know is Death Stranding. Um, so, yeah. Um. God damn it. <laughs> you're, you're gonna play the meme game. You're gonna play the game literally about memes. Well, apparently, but I know nothing about it, so I might not even know these memes. No, and we're keeping it that way. Yeah, I'm You'll not... understand. I, I'm not gonna look it. anything up about this game. Um, I... I... I don't even think I watched the trailer on Steam. I just clicked onto it and just to make sure that it existed, and yeah, I'll pick it up and I'll stream it um, soon, because it was a... Oh, it's great. It's yeah. great. I'm, I'm actually so excited for this now. That... Oh, <laughs> that's gonna be great. You're gonna laugh your ass off. How, how long is the game? I, I forget. Because Zach said I could probably if finish you, it in one stream, but... It, but this is your first time playing it. I'd probably say it'd be, like, being generous probably eight hours, because like, you have to get used to everything. Okay, yeah. well in that case I can plan ahead and maybe start slightly early and I could probably finish that in one evening. HP yeah, says you, you, you have four to, to six. But, yeah, if you, if you know yeah. what you're doing, you can probably do it a lot quicker, but yeah. Yeah, um, it's a great spectacle fighter. Okay. Which is really also weird because... Kong for uh, soundtracks. 
Donkey Kong Country? I don't know that. No, I may I may know some of the music, but I don't. I've never played it. Oh man, the music! Uh, look up the. Uh, oh, I can't remember what the underwater levels uh, music name is. Fuck. Uh, Super Mario World. That's another one. Like, the only... I mean, just Mario in general. Yeah, the Mario games typically have very good music, but I'm not. I, I do not know Mario games really at all. I've played some of them very casually. I've never owned one. Um. Mm. Yeah. The old um uh the old Pokemon games, the ones where like uh what was it? Lavender Town and whatnot? Like silver and uh, silver and gold where after you finish playing them you just hear them over and over. Like I can still hear that uh that what was it root um Operation complete What is it the root uh Route thirty four theme going on in my head? Just talking about it. <laughs> Um, oh. So here we've got emergency evac, 40 minutes, retrieve valuable data, 40 minutes, and high value assets, which is the defense mission, 20 minutes. Yeah, I can probably do one of those, maybe uh, the one of the 40 and the um, evac high value, and then uh, I'm going to have to uh, no, yeah, no call problem. it a night. I was going to say I'll do like some of these, and then we'll end the stream there. So um, yeah, in that case, if this works for you, uh, Bleeders and Jangles, do you want to do... We'll finish with the uh, high-value assets. So do we want to do emergency evac, or do we want to do retrieve valuable data? Uh, bleeders, what's your opinion? Uh, I, either. Either is fine. Uh, well, if we want, if you guys want samples, I guess emergency evacuation or uh, retrieve valuable yeah. is go-tos. Yeah, what I yeah, mean is I we'll need, do one um, of those and then we'll do the high value assets is what I meant. Yeah, I need the mission. um I need the rare samples. Okay. Well, let's go let's go with this one. Why not? Um Okay, I, I also have to mention this because Lord Hendrickson said this in chat. Uh, Mick Gordon's soundtrack for Doom. Um specifically Ooh. I would I would reference the first the, the twenty sixteen Doom game. Um but there are some good tracks on the other one. Um yeah, well, that's gotta be up there. They they know uh, they know only fear I think for eternal like the first track on it that's a great track yeah yeah so like here we hit there go there yeah up yep. here that works random have you heard his work on Killer Instinct I have not no I I completely unfamiliar with Killer Instinct oh man uh, Mick Gordon did some great tracks for that very diverse. Uh, soundtrack i'd tell you to listen to hisano's theme spinal oh God, there are, a lot of them are good okay. jesus christ uh yeah if, if you're into like a hardcore like metally soundtrack like that's great yeah that kind of thing i really like uh but in the case of a video game it has to fit the game um and in the case of doom it absolutely fits the game it's exactly what it needed to be and I mean, like Killer Instinct's like a, a fighting game that's just all about like fucking people up. So okay, fair enough. And shit, he did a theme for uh, the Arbiter from Halo because the Arbiter was Ooh. a guest character. Uh, okay. His theme on he—that's a great track, actually. He blends the Halo music with metal. Is it's this like, was this cool. for the Master Chief Collection? No, this was for Killer Instinct. Oh, okay, right. His Arbiter was a guest fighter. Right, I see. Okay. I would really suggest that one, just because like it's a very like cool little unique song. Yeah. So I really need a uh, rare and super super rare samples. Okay. Where's the breach? Where's the breach? Uh, it's here. 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 Okay, get out of the way. I'm yep. gonna drop a uh, air burst. Yep. 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 Because I like the airburst. I got the charger. Oh, never mind. He's dead. Yeah, Not effective the, against armor my ass. <laughs> the Doom Eternal soundtrack, from what I've heard of it, is decent. Like, I've heard a couple of the songs from it. Um, I just will not play the game. And I'm not really interested in listening to the whole soundtrack. Because they, the studio just completely fucked over Mick Gordon. Um... They basically had some... They, they ditched him, and they had some other guy come in and basically Frankenstein his songs together. 
and he did it in the really? most amateurish way possible. Uh, he didn't master them correctly. Uh, there's audible clipping in between certain sections uh, where he's like copied and pasted a riff and not faded it. You know, really, really simple shit like that. Um, and essentially, I mean, it's it's quite a long story, but the the short version is Reloading. that. Uh, whoever the publisher is, I, I can't remember, the publisher for Doom Eternal. Bethesda. Well, I don't... In that case, it may not have been Bethesda, because I would have remembered it if it was Bethesda, but whoever made this decision of what was going to be included in, like, the super special edition pre-order bonus thing that you pay, like, $100 for, it was it was going to include um, Mick Gordon's soundtrack for Doom Eternal. And a date was set on that pre-order bonus, and he was not told about that date until after the pre-order went live. Sorry, I think I might be mixing this up now that I think about it. Is it id Software or oh, is it Bethesda? it may have been id Software, yeah. That that name rings a bell. Yeah, I, can't I, I was just thinking about that. id Software is owned by Bethesda, who at the time was owned by Zenimax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think that's where I'm getting my stuff mixed oh, up. Oh, Titan, fucking sneaky Titan. Fucking hell. Right, well, I'll have to shove a cannon up its ass. But yeah, there's a um, really good video before everything went south. With, the, with Mick Gordon on Doom Eternal, where um, I think it's on the the Doom YouTube channel, I think, um, where he basically had like a behind the scenes video of him, some of the soundscape stuff that he was doing for um, for Doom Eternal. And like the idea, he basically came up with this idea of like a metal choir, um, because like the idea of a choir, you get a bunch of singers, you have them sing things multiple times, you layer it up and you end up with something that sounds like a hundred people singing the same thing. And he thought, why not do the same thing, but with, like, heavy metal vocals? Um, so he basically put out, like, an open call for, like, metal vocalists. Uh, regardless I need of a uh, second guy over here. Yep, I'm coming. And um, on the video, there's a bunch of people that I'd never heard of, but there's a, a couple in there that I had heard of. One of them is the vocalist from a band, a death metal band called Aborted is on there. Um, and they basically do this, um, their various death metal stylings... Um, where Mick Gordon is kind of conducting them and treating it like a choir, but what they're doing is like harsh metal vocals. And it just sounds amazing. <laughs> so, is this for the song Gladiator? I don't know. I know that it appeared in the Doom Eternal soundtrack. I'm not sure exactly where. Because I, I think I know what song you're talking about. It's like the, It sounds like a battle chant, almost. Yeah, yeah that was that, the bit, that's yeah, the bit that's in the Gladiator. clip. Yeah, it's Gladiator. Uh... Uh, button, button person. Button person? Button person. I require another. Um, hello Ian, welcome, and, um, thank you for the kind words. And then there's a radar station right over there. Okay, yep. Also, the, um, uh, the stocks of the, uh, Spore Spears usually have a bunch of shit. Alright, well, we know where to head next. Okay. Skadoosh. And, uh, Dizzle, see you later. I hope you've enjoyed. Mick says, do you like the band Nightwish? Um, not really my kind of music, but Floor Jansen is incredible. So, yeah, I do really like Nightwish, although I like a particular era of Nightwish. Um, Which one's Nightwish? Nightwish is the female-fronted, symphonic, operatic, power metal band. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so... <sighs> Dark Passion Play, I think, is probably their best album. Um, I think... I, I haven't really listened to anything after Imaginarium. Um, the one that I've listened to the most is sort of the... Ah, oh, fuck, what's it called? The Century's Child, I think, is the name of the album. But yeah, they basically had three different vocalists throughout their time, and all three vocalists have a very distinct style. Um, and where that gets interesting is when you hear the different vocalists try and sing each other's style. <laughs> it doesn't work too well? It, it, well, it works better than you might expect for some songs, but on other songs it just doesn't work, and they very likely chose their set list based on that. Because... Um, Changing vocalists, in particular in a band like that, that is kind of defined by the vocals. I need to call in a resupply. Um, yeah. It's not the same as changing drummer or changing guitarist, where you can just kind of play the same song. Um, 
you will fundamentally sound completely different as a vocalist. And like there are some styles of music where that is less important. Whoops. Um, but something like Nightwish, you you can't hide the fact that the vocalist is different. Oh crap. I think I got him. I got him. Fuck yeah. Uh, help, help, help. Uh, oh, the fucking... I hate that in games. Fuck. Okay, personal running, thing, running, running. Mind. In video games, you should not just suddenly catch fire as soon as you make contact with fire. <laughs> uh, depends on the fuel. I mean, okay, so I'm talking I step in a campfire and I suddenly combust. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh... Oh, uh, see you later, Truffle. Have a good one. Wait, as we get on the angle? It's still booting up. Oh, okay. Oh, I survived. Okay, well, let's take care of those. Someone dropped some supplies there. Oh god damn it! Yeah. Iron Storm, right? Um, yeah, I'm completely out of ammo. Okay, uh, there's some supplies here. I'll ping them for you. Supplies. Yeah, there you go. Let's see. Aha. There's my right. Oh, them some bugs. No, no, we get the. Uh... Oh, yeah, I need to. Where are the supplies? I completely out. <laughs> we're fine, we're fine. Um, They are up there. Um, Hold on. They're approximately there, yeah. Oh, okay, there's some. Um, Luke says, opinion on Starship Troopers since you're playing Helldivers. Excuse me. I really like Starship Troopers. I rewatched it recently. Um, I don't think it's quite as good as I remember it being. Um, but I do really like it. Um, I like how it satirizes what it satirizes. And I like the fact that you can just eject all of that from your brain and enjoy it as a cheesy, schlocky... Yeehaw, trucks and guns kill the bugs type movie. Like, it, it, as a brain dead action movie, it is still very good. Um, but then there's that additional layer that you can. Watch out, I'm dig throwing into. a uh, airburst right there. Okay, nice. I assume that we'd all be in agreement that uh, Diz is best girl and Carmen is not. Uh, well, it depends on what we're Carmen. grading them on. Yeah, Carmen's hotter, but Diz is best girl in terms of like personality and shit. I mean, yeah, that basically. Oh, I'll accept. I'll accept that. Damn it! I'm I'm dropping in oh, another guard dog. If anyone wants another guard dog, I've just dropped one. I will. I would like it. Okay, where are you? Yeah, right next to you. We got a uh, we got a breach okay. over here. Okay. But yeah, I've never seen any of the Starship Troopers sequels, um, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised that they haven't remade it. Because they've remade the other two big Paul Verhoeven science fiction movies, being Total Recall and um, Robocop. And I'm kind of surprised that, because as far as I was aware, Starship Troopers was the most financially successful of the three of them. Um, it's, really? It's possible, well, it definitely was more successful than Robocop. Um, Total Recall was extremely successful when it came out, though. Um, so it could be that Total Recall made more money. Um, I'm just kind of basing it off the fact that Total Recall didn't get a sequel. Also, I just got splatted. Um, yeah, I'm very surprised that they haven't remade it. And Luis says, don't you dare wish that evil upon us. Well, what evil? the evil of, of a modern day inter iteration of Starship Troopers. Oh, that would be... No, uh, don't... They'd reimagine it for a modern audience, and they'd make the bugs sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I just like to imagine when they, like, the meteorite, like, 
Oh god, there's just so many things. It's like, no, we just wanted to see if there was other life out there. We yeah, this was this friends. was a, this was a scouting meteorite. <laughs> We're sorry it landed where it did. We're not very good at this yet. <laughs> I do like how in that, the beginning of that movie, they're cutting open one of the little worker bugs. Oh, yeah. It's like they are fully aware of the bugs at this point. Yeah. I mean, they're not... Because then they're, they're aware of the fact that the bugs exist. They're not aware of the different types of bugs that there are, though. Because they, they kind of learn that and explore that throughout the film. Oh yeah, like uh, I'm saying, like uh, that they that they are aware they they exist and that they are somewhatly dangerous because isn't the whole beginning of that movie is that those those uh, Mormons or whatever? Oh, like, there's uh, another. Um, there's Mormons. There's another. Yeah. So, yeah so like, I, think, I think. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say yeah. So what it is is um. Oh, uh, the what kicks it kicks it off is that the uh, there's a um. A group of uh, of Mormon extremists who want to go and colonize a um, so an area within Bug Space. Is this the in the Federation? Book or is this no? This is no, in I the. Think... Oh, get back! Get back! There's a uh, Airbus coming in. Like I, they make us. They make a like quick gesture of it kind of thing. They just say the group, and I think they go to Clendathu, and uh, those are the people. That end up dying first. Get some, get some. Titan. Okay, gonna start a cannon wind up. What the fuck? There we go. Oh shit. Oh, it went down eventually. Um, also, yeah. HP says, um, I was having a nightmare when someone mentioned a Back to the Future remake. So, unless something has changed, that will never happen. Um, because I distinctly remember that Robert Zemeckis, and I, I can't remember who it was that wrote it, but Robert Zemeckis directed the Back to the Future films. Um, he basically said that for as long as I live, there will not be a Back to the Future remake, because we've done it, and that's what it is. There is no way to redo, and I completely agree with him, there is no way to retell the story of Back to the Future without just doing the same thing again. So, yeah, I, what is the point? Uh, I need someone over here. Yeah, I'm with you. Be I'm right with you. back. And, uh, so what you're, sorry, go on, believers. So what you're saying is that they'll remake it, but they'll cast all female characters? I mean, they could do that, potentially, but this is the thing, is Lord Hendrickson, you point out, as long as he lives, like, that. those are the words that he used, as far as I'm aware. Um, the question is, who owns the rights? Because if he owns the rights, then that means that it can never happen. Like, if he never sells them, then, yeah. If they're owned by the studio then you would think that they would already have tried to make a Back to the Future remake. Um, so it could have been some kind of deal that they made when it came out or something. I, I have no idea. Maybe they made a deal to retain the rights and get paid less, because that kind of thing can absolutely happen. I need a button, boy. Yeah, I'm dealing with uh, assholes. Okay. Uh, I've got is it bad that I think Button Boy sounds like something a Catholic priest would say? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Just... I got flamers. That's about it. So, uh, Lord Wahoo says, Robert Zemeckis found dead in home. J.J. Abrams says, not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> no, J.J., stay away. Uh, we've... We're at 24 minutes and we haven't even done, like... We've cleared it. We've killed a lot of bugs. We've killed a damn lot. Of we haven't found the penis rock yet, though, have we? Yeah, I think we found it. We have? Oh, yeah, we have. We have. Someone's got the samples. Okay. Yeah, I got them. Um. Yeah, so, um. I guess a question, though, that I would throw out is what franchise that is ripe for the picking in terms of remakes has not been remade? Because Starship Troopers would be one, I think. Back to the Future would be another. Apart from I that, like the, they've all, they've kind of done it all. Like they're remaking remakes at this point. Uh, I live in fear of the day that they come for Stargate. Firefly. Oh God, Firefly! We got a Titan over here. Oh okay. shit! Um, Stargate, I'm not familiar with, so I can't, I can't say. 
Yeah, I'm trying to think of what else they could possibly fucking take at this point. Because we already were talking about Back to the Future. Um... Treasure Planet. Ooh. Well, the thing is, Treasure Planet is already essentially a remake. Like, it's a, it's it's completely different to, the, like, Treasure Island. Oh, but... there's its second Titan. Okay. I'm on it. It's been 20 years since Lord of the Rings, which could be remade, which I think nobody wants to happen. That is true. Um, I mean, apparently that is happening, but I don't know if that's got past the first hurdle yet. I have no idea. Um... Ugh. Pirates, as far as I'm aware, what, what is happening with Pirates is not a remake. It's a, I guess, soft reboot, soft reboot. So totally different characters, technically in continuity and in the same world. Um, it's not going to be a retelling of The Curse of the Black Pearl, is my understanding. Um, yeah. Because, again, like Pirates, I think that you could absolutely do another Pirates film and have it not be a carbon copy of one of the ones that has already existed. No. Whereas I don't think that's the case for Back to the Future, because Back to the Future is Back to the Future, and that's all it can be, really. Like, it's... Friendship door. Disney, Disney's Atlantis The Lost Empire. I would... I mean, again, that's that's kind of based on... I guess vaguely it's based on the story of Atlantis, which Disney doesn't own. We, um, but if you were to take that and remake it, if we knew that it was going to be good, I'd watch that. What do you and think of the original one? I really like it. It's been years since I've seen it, but I really like it. Mm. Um, Nick, Just watched it last month. Nice. Um, yeah, Nick says, as a franchise, we've got Harry Potter and Indiana Jones. So Harry Potter is being remade. Um, they are doing a HBO series about it. Um, Indiana Jones has not, as far as I'm aware, but given that Harrison Ford is very likely not doing another Indiana Jones, it's only a matter of time. Jurassic World is a soft reboot rather than a remake, but I would say that, yeah, that counts. Tremors? They could do Tremors. True. I still need to watch Tremors. Really? Yeah, yeah, I've oh, never shit. seen it. Uh, yeah, it got mentioned on um, BSUP the other day, and I was told that I need to watch it, and that I would enjoy it. So yeah, I, I, I will definitely watch it. I just haven't. Oh crap! I got a uh, I got a uh, bio titan. Okay, weird. You're kind of on your own up there. Oh uh, yep, I can see that. Okay, <laughs> running away. Oh boy. Because I mean, it would be I it would be fine. interesting to look at what the most successful movies were each year, from like the seventies through the nineties and look at what hasn't been serialized and what hasn't been remade. We've got two Bile Titans on Jangles. Oh, no. You're dropping a bomb on me. Uh -oh. Don't come close. I'm going to die to a fucking puddle here. Oh, God damn it! I died to a puddle. <laughs> really? In it's as deep as a puddle and I fucking died in it. Um, National Treasure... Uh, Possibly, yeah. I don't really know anything about it. I've never seen it. Um, really? Yeah, the Tom Cruise... The National Treasure is a national treasure. Uh, yeah, I've heard that I should probably watch it. Um, Die Hard and The Terminator have not been rebooted, but they've also dragged those franchises out way longer than they needed to, so I think that it's been basically Didn't... run into the ground. Wasn't Terminator technically rebooted? Uh, I was gonna say. Uh, uh, yeah, after Shh. murdering John Connor. <laughs> I have a load of samples Hello. in there that I can't get. Yeah, so, um, the, with Dark Fate, they decanonized T3 Salvation in Genesis. Um, but it is, at the end of the day, it's the sixth Terminator film in the franchise, I guess. So, like, either way, it, it, it's, it's a case of the franchise being run into the ground. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it, it's not really a reboot, but had Dark Fate been really successful, they absolutely would have continued the story with the new continuity. Um, the Tom Cruise Mummy movie is is definitely a remake, um, although it is it is fundamentally different to the Brendan Fraser one, which is different to the um, 
forties one. I can't remember when that the original one came out. Forties one. Well, there was there was the, uh, sort of the classic mummy movie, but I can't remember when that came out. It was it was you know decades oh. ago. I can't remember. Um. Yeah, ter um, yeah. Terminator was retconned rather than remade. Is HP is correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting question with that, actually. Say we uh, we remade Terminator One and Two, right? No. Who would you get to replace Arnold and whatnot? Are we well, saying let's say it was just as good? We're saying like, it's the same film, you... and we're doing like a shot-for-shot -shot remake, but with modern visual effects. Yeah, but and different actors. Different actors. Okay. You get to pick actors from this era. Well, it has to be someone with that kind of physique, which limits your options. They don't oh, have to be yes. a good actor, because Arnie is not a good actor. But his casting in the Terminator is one of the best pieces of casting that has ever been cast. <laughs> so I mean, you, you in, immediately you've got to go for someone like The Rock or um, uh, John Cena or fuck's sake or. Um, Dave Batista or what's the guy that does Reacher? I can't. Alan Richardson, someone who is just absolutely shredded like that. Um, you you have to go for someone like that. But like the Terminator is such an iconic character that it's very difficult to even imagine that character being played by someone other than Arnie. Right. Probably end up being. Pedro Pascal again, or something. <laughs> uh, I still love that they uh, that they had Tom Cruise play Reacher. Yes, I've oh seen that movie. God, yeah, yeah. My dad fucking hates that. He's a big Reacher book fan. He's like, what the fuck? Who has a hard drive? God damn it. There we go. Guard dog. My guard dog. Also, I missed this. See you later, Toxicity. Um, have a good one. Right, I've got my boy back. Next thing I says Timo Twink Chalamet is the Terminator. <laughs> Who is the guy that plays uh, Apollo... Um that plays, uh, what's his name, Paul uh, Atreides? Uh, Paul Atreides in Dune is, is Timothy Chalamet, yeah. who Nick was referring to. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Him as a Terminator. That would that would have to be, like, the worst casting imaginable. Um, oh, yeah. Tom Holland. Um, okay, <laughs> so... Um, ah, fuck. Yeah, actually, I think you might be right, because I was going to say that... Um, Timothy Chalamet is definitely, I think, more effeminate than Tom Holland, and that doesn't work for a Terminator, I don't think. Um, but Timothy Chalamet can definitely pull off a more morally ambiguous slash villainous role, from what I've seen, than Tom Holland. Like, Tom Holland's face is just nice guy. Like, it, it's very... It's kind of like Tom Hanks. Like, I can't imagine Tom Hanks in a straight-up villainous role, because he just looks so nice, you know? Although Tom, Tom Hanks Holland looks like he's still in elementary school, he does, yeah. But uh, yeah, um, I don't know him. We're comparing him with Timothy Chalamet, who is—he's he, very pretty. Um, yeah, but now the thing is, now my brain is thinking like Tom Hanks in a Terminator movie playing a Terminator. That would just be—that would have the potential oh. to be creepy as fuck because he would just be so <laughs> Tom Hanksy and just nice and friendly, and then he just like pulls someone's eyes out. Like, Oh, you missed it. You missed it. Uh, I killed this Bile Titan, and it literally, like, ping-ponged back and forth. <laughs> yeah, they've been known to do that nowadays. I don't know why. Look out. Look out. Look out. Right here. So, um, Luis is saying Tom Holland is John Connor and Brie Larson is Sarah Connor. On. Okay, here's hot take. Well, Brie Larson can act. Brie Larson is excellent so, in the right movie. Yeah. I could I see her doing wonder, Sarah Connor, yeah. Yeah, like that's kind of what I mean. Because she, like, she's actually going to act like I'm like Captain Marvel. Two charges here, by the way. Oh no, one. Say hello to democracy. 
Who would play the T-1000? That is an interesting oh, question. Ironically, Chris Pratt. <laughs> oh. This, that could actually be really funny. It could be, but then... Uh, well, I don't know, because the T T-1000 is... Um, harder to define because the T-1000 can, like, assume in anyone's appearance. But if we're going with, mm. like, the Robert Patrick style T-1000, like, the appearance that he takes for the majority of the film, the only reason why he looks like that is because it, it's he looks like a cop. Uh, like, it's, yeah. it's practical for him to look like that. So if he were to find a cop that looks like Chris Pratt, then fair enough, I guess. But Chris Pratt, in particular, with his current physique, I think he looks too much like an action movie star to be... Mm. Uh, the of, pot, man. Yeah, to be of the kind of physique that you would think the T-1000 would want to go for. Uh, um, actually, uh, uh, okay, here's a question. How about um, Chris Evans as a uh, as a Terminator? I could see that, potentially. And then he just hits you with his Australian accent and you just can't take him seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he disarms you, you just start laughing. You're <laughs> just like, fuck. <laughs> Oh, uh, Joshua actually makes a really good point. So Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Mikkelsen is one of my favorite actors, um, and I could... But it, like, thing is, I'm just kind of thinking of him as Hannibal in the Hannibal TV show. Um, completely different interpretation of the character to um, Anthony Hopkins, but it's so fucking good, and he's really good in that show. And that kind of performance as a Terminator-type character could absolutely work. No. Um, I'm gonna wait. Has someone called in supplies recently? Do we have a ping, pingy ling on them? Yeah, the, I pinged them a little bit ago. I think they're. Yeah, I see them from here. They're right there. Yeah, there they are. Oh, yeah, cool. Thank you. There's also some right here. Oh, okay. I'll come to yours because they're closer. Well, this is peaceful. Yeah, because yeah, we kill everything. Have we actually have we actually wiped out every nest? You can you can just see right there. That's the puddle that I died in, and my samples are just sat there waiting. Uh, oh damn it! What, what the? Fuck? I told you. As soon as I heard tank chuckling, I'm like, someone's dead. I was looking for the supplies. <laughs> Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Well, I am now. Now that your fucking airstrike is on cooldown, <laughs> fighting over there. Oh, where? Oh yeah. Now we're fine. We can run away. Let's remember when you're running from um, when you're running from a bear in the woods. Just bring someone slower than you. Yeah, pretty much. Why did I bring this up? <laughs> oh, hey. Hmm. Might be able to take a crack shot at that. Ooh, oh, Joshua actually makes a really good point. Henry Cavill. Oh, oh about what? As the Terminator. The Terminator? Yeah, he'd be a good replacement for Arnold. Like a slightly different... I mean, it would... If, if it's if it's canonical and in continuity, then it would have to be a different model because the T-800 looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and sounds like him, so he'd have to play a different model, but you could have him as that kind of character, essentially, and serve the same purpose narratively. Because um, he's proven that he can play, you know, cold, villainous characters. Um, and he has the physique for it, and yeah. Honestly, I think the T-1000 question is potentially a more interesting question, though, because the fact mm. that he's essentially a shapeshifter opens it up to so many more potential actors, because you could... You could theoretically justify virtually any actor. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, mm. I, I would disagree. I think you would have to get somebody who is very unassuming. Yeah. That would probably be the best because, like, that's how he, you know, he works. Yeah. Um, that's what's it, creepy about him. Yeah, it would, it would yeah. depend on whether you're going for, like a, again, like a shot-for-shot -shot remake of T2, in which case he has to be a cop, because that's what happens. Um, or if you were going for a reimagining, like, because the, the, the T-1000 appears, I think, in Genesis, and it's played by a different actor. Um, I don't think it appears in Dark Fate, but honestly, I can't remember those movies well enough. God damn it, Tank! I have a torso now! <laughs> Oh, I think. 
<laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, that wasn't my fault. <laughs> you shouldn't have did that. There was a bunch of enemies right there. <laughs> ah. Right, well, I'm just dropping every turret under the sun, and I'm not going to tell them that you're friendly. <laughs> Oh, we got an ion storm now. Oh, shit. Well, it's a good thing I called in all my stratagems, then. Uh, so HP says, <laughs> For the T-1000, you need to get as many of the biggest actors in Hollywood and make it the most expensive film of all time. So you could have it where the T-1000 infiltrates the Oscars or something, and you just have every famous actor there. But the T-1000 is shape-shifting in between. <laughs> that should that be a be Team America funny. 2 plot. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, I wish they'd make a Team America 2, but they said that they won't. Because it was too goddamn hard the first yeah, time around? Yeah, they completely, because the, 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 the humor coming from the puppets, it's such a good idea, but it's also... Um, it's also basically one, one big long joke, and the amount of effort that they had to put into making that joke funny, rather than creepy, it, it was insane. Um, because the, the what they were parodying, like the, the puppet stuff, like Thunderbirds, the technology to make, in t this was back in 2004 or five, I think, the technology to make much better and more realistic puppets, like in terms of like the motors that are driving their face, that all existed. They could make them really realistic to the point where it kind of became creepy. So they had to deliberately dial back the um, the number of like moving parts in the, in the faces to make it look more crappy. Um, Nick Stinger says, James Corden, T-1000, Nightmare Fuel. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> I know what you were trying to do. Victory was never oh, jeez. I'm trying to think of that now. Just like... Team America do, what even would you do? I think the quote was that I remember from them not wanting to do a second one was, I'm not untangling another goddamn puppet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a good mission. Oh, it was. <laughs> it went very well. So It went very well for me. So we're going to do one more, and it's going to be... Um, or oh, do you need to I jump? I got to get going. Ah, you yeah, gotta go. I need to jump. Okay, no problem. I'm I very much appreciate it, though. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, no problem. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll do this again oh, at that some was point. A good that, was, that was a great sample run. Yes. Oh, um, I think about it. Bleeders and Jangles, are you about for one more, or do you guys need to hop off as well? I'm perfectly fine. Okay, cool. In that no. case, um, I'm happy to do one more, if, um, we'll, and we'll do it as a three-man. Because it'll, it'll be point defense anyway, so... Oh, fair enough. We should be okay unless we get seven Bile Titans, in which case we'll lose in five minutes, which is fine. Oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So how much friendly fire damage we got here? Uh, death. Well, Tank, yeah, Tank, uh, you had the only two accidentals, and they were both me. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> They're your own fault. You ran into, you ran into my stratagem. That's not true. Thanks to you. Um, <laughs> Anton, thank you, and good night. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, cheers. <laughs> okay, see you later, Tank. Oh. So, remember what we were talking about earlier with the Gimli thing? Because I don't know why, but yes. Tank just reminded me of it. Um, Here, actually, where should I put this? I'll put this in uh, Certified General. So, like, that's an image of Gimli standing on the things, and he's in clear view of everybody. That's what I mean by the crossbow problem. Okay. Because we see in the film specifically, they come up to the wall to hide and then shoot the elves from underneath. Okay. Yeah, going from that shot, it does look like he potentially probably should have got shot. But yeah, I, I, I'd need to watch the film again to have a think because yeah, that may well be something that I would point out if I ever did a video on Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, geez, because in all honesty, I think that's the main problems with the movies in terms of flaws if you're picking apart. Yeah. Would be like action scenes. Cause like do I need even need to point out like the Mooma kill is I think everyone said that's a bit ridiculous. Oh, the different ways that they kill them. 
Well, like, the different ways they kill them and just Legolas. <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with Legolas doing that. Um, really? That's the first time I've heard... I think that might be the first YouTuber I've heard say that. The one that I find a little bit hard to accept, who is... I, I think it's... It's either Eowyn or Eomer, and I can't remember which one, where they kind of ride under its legs and just kind of bonk it in the on the feet, and then it falls over with their sword. Yeah, oh yeah, like it's, that, it's why the would lady, it? so... A Eowyn, yeah. Eomer? No, a Eowyn. Eowyn. Um, yeah, that one I find a little bit much, but yeah. Because, um, I mean, either the sword can pierce it... Even if the sword can, like, go through it, like, you're not getting very deep with a slash like that, but anyway. Yeah. Um, like slashing a tree trunk. It, pretty much, yeah. Um, ah, what do we want? We want double mortar, auto cannon, and Gatling gun. Oh yeah, let's just have a mortar parade. It pretty much, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Given that this is one of the defense missions against bugs, we we need a way of dealing with um bile titans. Um, do we have one? I'm, I'm bringing it. Okay. Right, let's do it. Last, last huzzah. I have no idea how this is going to go. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, is they're going to spawn eight Bile Titans again? Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, just while we're loading in, um, I will give a quick, I guess, update on what's coming next from me. Um, I've started work on the next Arcane video. Um, the next actual video to come out, though, is going to be Rubble Moon Part 2, which is being released a week today. Um, where are we? Where are we defending? Oh, it's down here. Um, yeah, so I'm going to basically get that done as quick as I can, but I'm not going to, like, rush the video out and not talk about things I want to talk about, so essentially it will take as long as it takes. But I am just going to go full-time on, on that video. I'm not going to... I'm going to put everything else on hold while I do it. Um, when it will be out, I don't know. Um, apart from that, I might live stream next week. It depends on where I'm at with Rebel Moon, because Rebel Moon releases on Friday, a week today. I have no idea what time it releases, though, which means if it's not out by the time I want to stream, then I'll probably just stream something. Um, but if it's out, I'm going to be watching it. Um... The following week I'm away, which means that then it's going to be a case of the week after that, which means it might be two or three weeks before I stream again. But yeah. Gonna continue Cyberpunk? Um I probably will. I want to I want to stream um the last autumn DLC for Frostpunk 2 before sorry, for Frostpunk 1 before Frostpunk 2 comes out. Um, oh shit, yeah, that's around the corner. Yeah, it's next couple of months, so I definitely want to do The Last Autumn before Frostpunk 2 comes out. Apart from that, I would like to continue with Cyberpunk. I just don't know when. Um, and I definitely want to stream more Helldivers, because I think it's a lot of fun streaming it. And people seem to like watching it. So, yeah. Um, oh, and I obviously need to do the Metal Gear um, game at some point, so maybe I'll do that next. I, I don't know, I'll decide. Oh, it, please tell me when, because holy yeah. <laughs> Christ, I have to see that. It, it depends on, um, yeah, it depends on when it is, um, and it depends on how much time I have. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing you got more there. There we go. Yeah, Firelash <laughs> Rebel Moon Part 2 comes out a week today. Um, both Part 1 and Part 2 were filmed back-to-back. -back. Uh, Netflix decided to release them five months apart for some reason. I don't know why you would choose that number, but that's what they've done. Um... Yeah. So, but yeah, the, the, the film was finished. I, I believe it was, it definitely was finished filming. And I'm guessing it was ready for release when part one came out. And uh, Nick, I'm as you. far as I'm aware, Alan, Aaron Taylor Johnson is confirmed as the new Bond. Um, I, I know he was offered the role. I'm assuming he accepted it, but yeah, I don't think that's a bad choice. He's very good in... Um, Ah, uh, what's the movie called? Bullet Train. Which, if people have not seen, is the rare, very entertaining action movie from the last few years. Bile Titan. Right now. Oh, he's gone. Indeed.
That's interesting. My auto cannon stayed alive. Now it's gone. Okay. Yeah, I thought that when you uh, when you spawn a new auto cannon, the first one dies. That was the way it worked with turrets, but my one so too. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. HP says, I can't wait to find out how woke Rebel Moon Part 2 is, fellow woke bros. I'm going to go watch m more Matt Wilson cinema scenes to get ready for Zack Snyder's Rebel Woke. <laughs> well, you can rest assured that I will absolutely tell you how woke Rebel Moon Part 2 is. Um, first one was pretty woke, and I'm not going to elaborate further. <laughs> As any good YouTuber does. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, that was bad. Um, bad Gatling gun. Also, uh, yeah, I'm off the top of my head, I can't think. Um, Joshua is asking, have there been any good recent shows or movies from Netflix? Uh, because he hasn't watched Arcane yet, but he doesn't want to subscribe just for Arcane. Um, the, I mean, there definitely are, I just can't think what there is. You've got the Hill House, uh, Hill House and um, Bly Manor are both very good. Um, but yeah, recent ones, I can't think. Blue Eye Samurai, I haven't watched yet, but that's apparently on Netflix and is apparently quite good. Yeah, no, don't take my word for it. My my problems with it were very, like, specific. Okay, fair enough. And yeah. I, I, I kind of want to test it against someone else's argument, because I'm like, ah, uh, is this justified? I believe that you can watch Frere and Beyond Journey's End on Netflix. There you go. What is that? I haven't heard of that. Yeah, I, I have no idea. It's the anime that I'm trying to get people to watch via a PSYOP. Okay. Via PSYOP? What's it about? <laughs> um... It's about... Okay, how do I summarize it? Um... Uh, it's about, so it's about a, a character called Freren, who is an elf. She was part of a an adventuring party that saved the world. And it's basically set like 50 plus years after that, just kind of seeing the effect that it had on the world, as well as doing some personal stuff that I don't want to don't want to spoil. Auto cannon. It's no, neat. it wasn't. Um, you, wait, did I time that perfectly? <laughs> poss just... Possibly. Um, is sorry, believers, you said that that is on Netflix. I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, I may have to watch it at some point because I'm not an anime person, but maybe I just haven't watched the right one. There's there's aspects to it that I think might annoy you because they annoyed me, and I suspect they'll it, bug you in the same way. But it, it's possibly, like... yeah. There are certain anime-isms that I really do not like, but again, maybe I haven't watched the right anime. It's not, it's not really that, it's more like, um... They'll, they'll often have flashbacks to things that happened minutes prior, just to remind you that the character said a thing. Oh god, like, yeah, yeah, that will drive me insane. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know, I was there, I was there, show, I watched it, you don't have to remind me. Um... Yeah, uh, well, Joshua, yeah, you mentioned Dark. Dark is fantastic. I know you say you've already seen it, but yeah, Dark is a Netflix uh, show. It's three seasons long, and Dark is brilliant. Um, it's, I would say, I would I would kind of describe what it is, but it's, all, it's the kind of thing that I think is best if you know nothing about it. Watch the first couple of episodes, and if you're not hooked, then there's something wrong with you. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good. Um... Castlevania is another one that Chats mentioned, uh, which I've not seen. That That is an anime, right? I know it's based on a video game. But... It's Western, uh, like, well, Western Company did it. Oh, uh, but it has that visual style. It's Yes. Okay. I, I still consider that anime, quote-unquote, since it's aping the style, right? Like, yeah, fair enough. I am curious, because, like, I think that show kind of violently shits itself after season two. But, like, uh, holy Christ, are there some amazing character moments. Okay. Reloading. And I think chat will pick up on it as soon as I say Watch my boy. It's holy Christ, that moment.
How are we doing? Three out of eight? Yeah, see, we've only had one Bile Titan on this mission, and the one when we had fucking seven was the same difficulty. I mean... Yeah. It's uh, there's one. Wait, oh, there's one? Hello. Can it walk over yeah. the wall over there or not? It's currently doing that, so... I'm gonna... Okay, well, I'm gonna... No, it's, it's, it's stuck. Okay. Yeah, check it out, it's stuck. Um, Evie says, did you see the Cruella film Disney made where they try to make you feel sympathy for the lady who wants to kill puppies? Yes, I did, and I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> um, because... <laughs> spoilers for Cruella, if anyone cares. So, I have a uh, dog, which incidentally is a Dalmatian. And um, in, in um, Cruella, they essentially... <laughs> Well, so, in 101 Dalmatians, Cruella wants to skin puppies to turn them into a jacket. Um, that's, that's her thing. She's completely reprehensible, and that's kind of the point. She's an over-the-top, ridiculous villain who wants to do the most evil thing imaginable because it will make her look good. Um, so, naturally, they explain things that didn't need to be explained in the Cruella film. Um, and they explain that, well, you see, she actually has a grudge against not only dogs. Cleaners are a hero. But against Dalmatians. Um, because her mum gets killed by Dalmatians. Um, but they don't, like, you know, attack her or something. They they basically jump up at her and knock her off a cliff or something stupid like that. Um, so, naturally, she, she just doesn't like Dalmatians, which explains why she wants to skin them, I guess. Like, wh who on earth thought that was a good plot point? Um... And the bit that I find very funny is the, um, you have the live action early, or late 90s, early 2000s, 101, 102 Dalmatians movies, which they're not great movies, but they use actual dogs, um, including, because of the nature of the story, lots of puppies. Dalmatian puppies, speaking from experience, are difficult to, it's difficult to get them to do what you want them to do. Um, it is very, very impressive that they managed to get some of what they got on camera. Um, and for the Cruella film, I am not convinced that a single real dog appears in any scene. Every single animal in that film is computer generated. Didn't she have like a little Shih Tzu or something like that that was uh, in, in, the, in the Cruella film? Yeah, I, I, I vaguely remember there was like a little Shih Tzu or something like that. I honestly can't remember. It's possible that that's the case. Like, that, that's the only dog I can think of that might be real. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think I just basically pieced out of that movie when it was like... It, when it tried to explain to me that the reason why Cruella doesn't like Dalmatians is because Dalmatians killed her mum. <laughs> it's just the most cookie-cutter baseline bullshit, and the way that it happens is hilarious. Oh, don't forget making Jasper and, uh, I can't remember the other guy's name, Horace. sympathetic characters, but she's an outright bitch. I don't even remember that, but I believe you. Yeah. Oh, they're so nice to her, and she's just a fucking bitch? Well, because I like, like, those those characters, are, they're not nice people in the original, but they're very fun characters because they don't try to hide the fact that they're evil. Whereas the, the Cruella film, I mean, that's basically what it does to Cruella. It obfuscates what she is doing and what she wants to do and paints her as, if not if not a nice person, then an admirable person that you want to root for. Um, yeah. And I think that that movie was just dead at the first hurdle because there is no way to take a character who just wants to skin puppies and turn her into a sympathetic character. You can't do it. Yeah, I'm all for that. <laughs> Doesn't really seem like a possible thing. Um, also, HP says, My mother was in the Amazon studying Dalmatians when she died. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well played, sir. Yes, well played. Uh, also, uh, Aria Lynn says, Whatever happened to Rebel Moon Child of Fire Part 1 Super Special Extended Edition Director's Cut? So, um, it's funny you ask that, because I have no idea, and I'm also not going to check. But someone commented on my Rebel Moon video basically telling me that I shouldn't have covered Rebel Moon because um, it's Zack Snyder and I should have known better that the extended version is the one I should be covering. No, that, that's not how that works. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I have no idea when that's coming out. I am 
almost certain that I am not going to watch it. There is no way that it can fix the main problems with the film. And I think that the fact that it's... Um, the fact that it is going to exist at all is a complete joke, given that the film... The original version of the film, there is no reason why it could not have been Zack Snyder's true vision. Um, he doesn't have to aim for a particular age rating, because it's a Netflix film. He doesn't have to aim for a particular um, length, because it is a Netflix film. Um, and the only reason why it's happening is because it's a cheap gra cash grab to get people to watch the same shitty film twice. Uh, which will look good for Netflix. That's... that's it. Calling down a sentry. What the fuck? Where did that go? You're here. Oh, it didn't go. Okay, there we go. Requesting sentry. Well, I think we can just, Sorry, go on. I think we definitely say, without a doubt, now, the AI is borked on these types of missions. Uh, it seems to be, yes. Um, Nick says, Snyder just double dips with his director's cut BS. So, I'm not sure that I would say that broadly, but I would definitely say that in the case of Rebel Moon. Because mm. the, the Snyder cut, like, say what you want about the films, I think the fact that the Snyder cut exists is a good thing. Um because it is it, it is fundamentally a different movie um, and the circumstances that meant that Snyder was unable to actually finish the Justice League um, essentially means that it got turned into something that he didn't want um, as for neither of them are good and if anything the Whedon cut is better but the, yeah, the, the fact that the Snyder Cut exists and that basically an online petition can get a director to essentially recut a film and have that much push behind it, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll largely agree with that. Um, and like, generally speaking, like outside of Snyder, I think the director's cuts are a good thing, but again, the, the whole Rebel Moon thing just throws a spanner in the works because the way he's doing it with Rebel Moon is is insane. It's it's exploiting it and it's double dipping, as as you said, uh, which is not the same, for example, as like the Lord of the Rings extended cuts because those were never going to be released theatrically. Um, the um, like director's cut of Alien and the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven, things like that, where you know studio interference or whatever. If if something got in the way of your film, and it means that you could not release the film that you actually wanted to release, like for example, in the case of Ju the Justice League. Then having a director's cut, I think, is a completely valid thing to have. The, the issue with the um, with the Rebel Moon stuff is that nothing got in the way. He had complete freedom. Yeah, and if you want to say, well, maybe Netflix were looking over his shoulder and they were calling the shots, well, no, because they're still going to be looking over his shoulder for the for the extended cut. Like. I don't know, Snyder. I have sympathy for him in terms of the Justice League thing, but holy Christ, I don't understand how he gets the jobs he does. Yeah, pretty much. It, it's my, my main example is uh, him for whenever I see people be like, "Yeah, but movies are fun," and I'm just like, "They don't need to be good." I'm like, "Yeah, but due to that, we don't get like other directors to have their shot." Yeah, like we have Zack Snyder's eating up a bunch of money in room. Yeah, like they could have this spent, money. they could have spent a fraction of the hundred and seventy million dollars that they gave Snyder to do uh, Rebel Moon Part One and Two. They could have spent a fraction of that, given it to someone who doesn't have a name, um, who has a potentially a really good idea. And let's be honest, it doesn't need to be a really good idea to be better than Rebel Moon. Um, <laughs> But then, I, I guess the flip side to that is that a lot of people are going to watch Rebel Moon because it is Zack Snyder. Um, w which is the, you know, it, it's, I guess, the guarantee of financial success numerically for um, for Netflix. Uh, because they, they measure success based on views. Um, I don't know if they measure it based on watch time, because you've got to think, like, a lot of people who started Rebel Moon will have stopped watching Rebel Moon and won't have finished it because it's terrible. Um... But, Mission. yeah, overall, Sample as far as I'm aware, Hello. they consider Rebel Moon to be a success. So, yeah. Is it, though? Every, I, I haven't heard a single good thing about it. No, it's terrible. But um, it doesn't have to be good to... Well, okay. So, um, it... Uh, what, what was the fucking movie he did before then? Army of the... Army of the Dead? 
Yes. Yeah, Army of the Dead. There's so many of the dead movies, I forget which one's which. Um, Army of the Dead is shit. Army of the Dead was evidently successful enough for Netflix to give Zack Snyder $170 million to make Rebel Moon. It doesn't have to be uh, it doesn't have to be good for it to succeed, at least on streaming. Uh, because a lot of people like the barrier to someone watching something like Rebel Moon or Army of the Dead is I'm bored, what do I watch? Oh, it's a film with a with a flashy poster and it's being pushed by Netflix on their front page. I'll put that on because it's got a laser gun in it or a zombie in it. And then they start watching it and they fall asleep after ten minutes and Netflix racks up the, the viewing figures. If those films were released theatrically, people would be a lot more careful with how they dedicate their time and they would look for reviews, um, both in terms of like IMDb and Metacritic. They would also look for people that they trust online, like on YouTube, telling them, should I watch this movie or should I not? Um, and in the case of Rebel Moon and Army of the Dead, the answer would be, do not waste your money. So the, the Snyder fans may well go to the cinema on day one and they may well watch it and be like, well, you know, I'll like it kind of regardless because it's Zack Snyder, or at least I want to support it and see if it's good because Zack Snyder has made a couple of good films in his life. But after that, the drop-off would be massive because it would have unbelievably negative word of mouth. Um, which basically means that, like, people are not going to go to the cinema to, you know, spend their money because, you know, going to the cinema is a lot more effort than just turning on Netflix. All of that is super depressing to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, I mean, partly it's, I think, because of, like, the downturn generally in terms of the quality of films, and partly I think it's, like, a an unfortunate side effect from the whole COVID situation, because cinemas have suffered massively as a result of that. Um, and, like, even in, even in my case, like, I do like to go to the cinema if there is something that I want to watch. Um, like, I went to see Dune, I went to see Oppenheimer, I went to see Barbie... Um, I think those were the last three films that I saw in the cinema, I think. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the fact is, if there's something that's coming out where it's like, I would really like to watch this, if it's coming out in the cinema, I will get, I will spend the money and I will go and watch it. I think that most people are not like that, at least anymore, because, um, I mean, COVID essentially has, has meant that streaming platforms have had to kind of, like, put their toe in the ring and, like, make it easier, even for films that were released, like, simultaneously on, like, streaming, um, for people to watch them at home, because you get th things like, again, Rebel Moon, doesn't get released theatrically, um, but then you get things like the first Dune movie, which was released simultaneously, so you could pay-per-view, to or, or whatever it's called, pay to watch it at home on, like, HBO+, Plus, or you go to the cinema. So, like, gradually various streaming services are I mean killing cinema might be too strong of a term but it's on a long enough timeline you gotta wonder if if that's what's gonna happen yeah it's I my, the last movie I went to see was Godzilla minus one but the one before that was Mario okay yep and uh I'm more of a video game guy than I ever was a movie guy but um I remember it was one of the most awkward things ever me and my buddy are sitting there and suddenly some of the theater staff comes in and starts thanking us for coming to watch the movie. <laughs> and, everyone in the, and everyone in the theater is looking at each other like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, no, thanks so much. Like, it's nice to see business again. And we're like, this is, this is a real bummer <laughs> for watching Mario. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, the last time I went to the cinema and I remember the cinema being absolutely packed was when I went to see The Last Jedi on opening night, um, which uh, was an experience. But yeah, I mean, like before I saw the film, um, it was it was really it was a really cool experience because like all the people in the cinema were essentially dressed up as stormtroopers. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a it was a bit of an experience um, similar to when I saw The Force Awakens on opening night. Um, needless to say that was the last Star Wars film that I saw on opening night um, but yeah that's that's the last time that I even when I even when I saw Barbie and Oppenheimer which were both massively successful movies um, I the, the cinema you know it was half empty it was more than half empty so yeah and Dune Dune Part 2 has been massively successful but there was barely anyone in the cinema so yeah it's a shame yeah, yeah, June Part 2 has been extremely successful. It's I, I don't know okay. if it will hit a billion dollars, but it has it, it, it has already made substantially more than the first one made, as far as I'm aware. 
Oh, that's good. Um, so, uh, Evie has a question for you, Jangles, and then I will probably end the stream. So, oh. um, quick question to Jangles. Would he recommend Godzilla Minus One? He's heard good things about it, but haven't seen yet, and I have also heard good things about it, but I know virtually nothing about it. Uh, absolutely. I did not expect a Godzilla movie as someone who's watched those mo types of movies since I was a child with my auntie. I used to rent blockbuster films with her and watch all the crappy Godzilla films. Uh, I never expected a Godzilla film to almost make me tear up. That was a shock. Wow, okay. So, like, the, the, the actual uh, story with the characters is actually not just an excuse for monsters punching each other then <laughs> no it is it is shockingly like it, it it's more about the drama of uh post world war ii japan is that when it's and, like, i mean obviously it's set post world war but like is it set like immediately post world war right or? after right after right after world war ii wow okay i did not know that uh the main character is a kamikaze pilot fucking hell okay i need to watch this movie um it's really good it's uh it's surprisingly deep and like meaningful in a lot of ways like kind of similar to the surprise i got from arcane in terms okay. of like wow i didn't expect to go there so uh yeah the only other things that i know about it is that it was made for a tiny budget relatively because it's not a western movie um and it won the oscar for best visual effects uh 13 million according 13. to the director okay 13 million is nothing um uh People thought it was 15 million, but then he stated, I wish I had 15 million. Um, yeah, I just need to look this up now, quickly. Um, so, Oscars 2024, Godzilla. Okay, so, Godzilla minus one, with 13 million dollars, uh, a budget, beat out, for best visual effects, the creator, which I don't know what that is, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, that's a 200 to 250 million dollar movie. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, same thing. That will have cost at least 200 million dollars, I would have thought. Um, and Napoleon, I I don't think that would have been as much, but I would imagine that the visual effects in Napoleon are very good. Um, this kind of reminds me of 2015 when Ex Machina won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects, and that cost like 15 million to make, and it beat out The Force Awakens, which cost like 250 million or something stupid. Um, which basically just goes to show you that if you have the right people working on it, and you know what you're doing, then you can absolutely make a movie like that for, well, for not a huge amount of money. You just have to not film it in Hollywood, I guess. Um, yeah, the, you see the creator, I saw that movie, that movie's dog shit. Um, but it's, I would actually give that, if I were to be fair, I give the visual effect towards to that because it's an insanely good looking movie. It's just shit everywhere else. Okay. Oh, it's the Gareth Edwards one. Right. Okay. I know which film this is now. Yeah. I've never seen it. To, to be fair, I'm like, for what Godzilla Minus One did on a budget is insane. Yeah. Especially, you'll, you'll understand what I mean once you see it. But, like, I, I have to be fair and give it to creator. Okay. Like, it, it, it's, it's not fair. Fair enough. Well, uh, with that, I'm going to end the stream here. So um, I hope everyone has enjoyed. And Bleeders, thank you for joining. Give me a cuddle. If you're there, Bleeders. Yay! <laughs> punch him. Punch him. No, you can't punch when you're on the ship. And Jangles, give me a cuddle. There we go. Wait. That was weird. Me? No, it's not working. Hold on. What the fuck? Yeah, you hugged on, you, you hugged on my screen. Uh, well, yeah, I hugged, but it didn't do the animation. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll assume that I hugged. Anyway, I will uh, I will endeavor to watch Minus One, and um, I'll report back when I do. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Allied Destroyer.